Get ready to match the stars. Bill Daly, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Raver. Thank you, Johnny Olson and friends. Got a grand bunch out there. You got a grand bunch out here, too. <laughs> yeah. Bill Daly. Oh, how are you? Nice seeing you. What the heck are you doing here? Just passing by, I thought I'd drop in and sit down here. The bus made a stop, and yeah. you figured you'd do it. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm with the group tonight. I'll now, so, so listen, since you've been here before, you've got to join in the tradition we celebrities give the new kid on the block a brief round of applause. <laughs> You must mind. No, you've been well, here you before. Her. I oh, kissed I her, I but you've been here before. Okay. I kissed you the first time. <laughs> remember that? Okay. You get to kiss. You forgot Nicole. my kiss. I remembered your kiss. I was hurt because you didn't kiss me again. Oh. oh. How Listen, are you? I saw you do that thing with that Boston critic reminiscing about Cole Porter. Oh. And it was marvelous. Oh yeah, with Elliot Norton. Yeah, well, I didn't want to mention his name because yeah. he gets swell headed. Well, maybe it's, people don't know who the Boston critic is. Yes, well, he's a marvelous critic in Boston. I, I'm so glad to be yeah. here with you. You're terrific. It's great to see you. Before you go, did you kiss Miss Murray? Yes, yes he did. I kissed her. Yes, we just exchanged lipstick. Have you lipsticks. had any of the diseases on this list? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did everybody see your front, Fanny? Yes. Oh. I mean, could you ever miss it? <laughs> Did she mean me or gasoline? <laughs> Does she mean you or gasoline? She's off to a good start, isn't she? Yeah. Let's say hello to our two players, Sonny Hodges and Cheryl Page. Okay. Hello, Joe. <laughs> Uh, Sonny's our current champ with $6,200, and she's being challenged, challenged by Cheryl, who's had her first round question, right? Right. Right. And your first round question is about to come up. Are you both ready, ladies? Yes. We'll begin in one minute. Now you pay attention to this, if you would, please. <laughs> oh, we missed you. But I'm glad you're back, because we're ready to begin with the middle of round one. Sonny, this is yours. Everybody plays, because this is her first round question. The movie producer said... For 50 bucks, any stuntman will dive into a swimming pool filled with water. But for this picture, we're using stupid Stanley. For the same price, Stanley will dive into a swimming pool filled with blank. <laughs> oh, I got it. See, for 50 bucks, any stuntman will dive into a swimming pool filled with water. But for this movie, we're using stupid Stanley. And for the same price, Stanley will dive into a swimming pool filled with... Blank. He's doing it again. He isn't. Uh, now that he's back, I must tell America that he copies my answers. No, well, no he, he doesn't. Does. He really doesn't. You put that in the slot there, Ethel. You you, very well. Just yes. leave her alone. Yeah, I, I put it in the slot. Okay. Gene. You have to see, push the, it all the, the way light forward. doesn't come on until you push it all the way in the slot. Oh, I see. You got it? Thank you. Okay, my dear. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I don't know who he is either. He just... <laughs> Just comes in and speaks to us occasionally. I think I he's with. Light, Hold on, when you pushed it into the yeah. slot. Charles, with, with a voice like Ethel's, you don't need any lights at all. Oh, all right. okay. You got a push, though. Now we come to Sonny Hodges. The movie producer said, for 50 bucks, any stuntman will dive into a swimming pool filled with water. But for this picture, we're using stupid Stanley. For the same price, Stanley will dive into a swimming pool filled with. Ta-da-da, you're on. Tinkle. No one heard what she said, right? I did. No, no, wait a minute. I did. No, I you didn't hear what she said. I I'm just gonna. Said. Yeah. Well then what'd you ask me for hearing what she said? <laughs> I'll tell you what she said, America. She said tinkle. <laughs> 
All right, Bill, you're up first. Well, listen, I happen to have a lot of little children, and our pool really is full of tinkles, so that's <laughs> where you go. How about that? It saves on water, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and it's heated all the time. No, that... <laughs> Brett, what do you say? Isn't it nice to have Bill back? <laughs> well, honey, you know me. I've always been a class act. Haven't yeah. I, Ethel? Right. Yes. Right. I said sand. Sand. Moon <laughs> pool filled with sand. Oh, yeah. Now, don't sand. you like that. Sand. No. Oh, that's a good answer. That's a good answer because it's stupid Stanley we're talking about, it's right, Charles? Charles? on a beach. We're not right. talking about bright Brett. We're right. talking about stupid, stupid Stanley. Stan. I, I, I'm close, but I wish I had put kitty litter. Sand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right, Ethel. Uh, for this picture, we're using stupid Stanley. For the same price, Stanley will dive into a swimming pool filled with... Oh, well, I, you see, I thought that maybe stupid Stanley wasn't even thinking about swimming or anything, and I thought maybe he wanted to have a real uh, round, and I put gals. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold it right up there, because sometimes when you give a good answer later on, you're going to want to get a tight shot of it. So if you just hold it up well, there what, for a what's second. What's wrong with a swimming pool full of gowns? Nothing. Let's go. With no water? Have we got time? <laughs> All, right. All right. Really very good. That's yeah. very good. <laughs> Okay, swimming pool filled with girls, I think is good. What do you say? notice with Brett and Charles, yes. we get one answer for the price of two. <laughs> That's because that. Charles cheats all the time. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. Yeah. I said that stupid Stanley it's dived a swimming into pool a filled pool with ice. Ice! Oh, yeah. El yeah. Preco. Yeah. Well, for $50. Yes, yeah, right. All right. And now... Fanny, nice to have you back. Thank you. I'd like Our to front, take this opportunity to ask my doctor if he's watching to call me because I'm sure he's not feeling well. Uh, <laughs> I said that he would uh, dive into a pool full of cement or nothing. Cement or nothing. So we'll pick up as we go along, Pat. Now we go to round two. Shall we do that? Okay, Cheryl. A again, please. A again, here we go. Oh, Oops. Whoops. Whoops. Everybody plays because she didn't match anybody in the first round, and this is it. Dumb Dora was so dumb. <laughs> you've been watching this show, no, haven't no, you? No, I'm the dumb Dora. Oh, I'm no, the you're dumb Dora. Oh, right. please. Don't argue. Dumb Dora was so dumb, she thought blank aid was something to drink. <laughs> what? Dumb Dora was so dumb, she thought blank aid. Oh. Blank aid. A I D was something to drink. That's an easy one. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Dumb Dora so dumb she thought blank aid was something to drink. Okay, Charles, ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Now, Cheryl. Dumb Dora was so dumb. How dumb was she? I'll tell you, darling. She thought blank aid was something to drink. Band aid? Band aid. <laughs> something else good. What do you say, Bill? I was going to say Band-Aid, but I didn't know how to spell it. What a drag, man. I only can spell seven words, and you have to go with those seven oh, words. Oh, all right. Is this one of them? Kool-Aid was wrong. Kool-Aid, yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Well, you're right. It isn't right. anything to drink. Kool-Aid is something drink to drink, it. Bill. Oh, yes. It is? See, there's nothing funny about that, Bill. <laughs> she said, Kool-Aid is not a bad drink at all. But I didn't know how to spell that other way. Yeah. That's why I blew that. Kool-Aid doesn't I only know how to spell, I know how to spell Kool-Aid and girl. Those are my two oh, words that I'm going to go with today. So okay. look for those two words, okay? Yeah. All right, Brett. Does that mean we're going to have to change all the questions? No, we're going to plow ahead. <laughs> bill or no bill? Okay. I said first day. First day! <laughs> Ah, Bill, do you understand a little yeah, touch of humor now. there? You I got, got the idea now? Yeah, that's okay. Right. Now. All right, Bill. Now, Charles. I was going to copy again because, as you said, it's the popular favorite, your answer. <laughs> yeah. I thought it stunk, so I went with the right one. Band-Aid. <laughs> Band-Aid. <laughs> that's one for Cheryl. So she's got one Band-Aid, yes. and she's got this terrible injury. Yes. <laughs> if she doesn't get more Band-Aid, she's going to lose the game. What do you offer her? Well, this won't be as bad as gals. No. I was, I was going to say nurse's aid, but I also <laughs> said Band-Aid. Band-Aid. Yeah. Okay. That's two for you, Cheryl. 
Now, you're certainly going to help her along, aren't you, Richard? Of course I am. Oh. You meet me about 7 o'clock. No. I said first day. First day, yeah. Oh, all right. You Man made got a standing went. ovation when Brett said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me try again. Sec second day. <laughs> okay. Hello there. I have a rather political answer. I said foreign aid. <laughs> foreign aid. Yeah. You know why I said that? Yeah, I know. Good. No, I said that because why? I was asked if I believed in foreign aid, and I said yes. And when are we getting some? Yes. <laughs> We're sending it all over there, and ain't sending none back. Here's a little message for you. Pay attention now, and then come back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Now, here's the way it is, Sonny. She's got two and you've got one. You need one to tie, two to win. Ready? Listen carefully. The little old woman who lived in the shoe called the doctor and said, you got to come over here real quick. My whole family has blank. Oh! Oh, I love my answer and I haven't even written it yet. The little woman who lived in the shoe called the said, you got to come over here real quick. My whole family has blank. Boy, oh boy, I'm sharp today. Oh, yeah, quick. <laughs> Mindless mod to my left <laughs> Now, here. don't disturb him because it's going to take him another 20 minutes to answer if you break his He's train of thought. He's going to get, dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, All right, put it right in the slot there. from me. You're going to take another shot at it, Charles. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now we're ready. For Sonny Hodges, the little old woman who lived in a shoe called the doctor and said, you got to come over here real quick. My whole family has... Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. See the touch of humor she got in there? Now, let's see, you don't play, do you? Oh, no, you matched her last time, didn't you? Tinkle City. Oh, I that's write. right, that's right. <laughs> I was okay. going for Kool-Aid again anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Brett, what do you got? What did she say? She said athlete's she feet said athlete's or foot? foot. My whole family has athlete's foot. Charles is going to be so mad he didn't copy from me this time. <laughs> athlete's foot. All right. Now, that ties the score. Charles, you can win the game for the little lady if you say athlete's foot. Well, uh, I put red tongues or a very rare disease, German laces. <laughs> Uh -huh. Now, my whole family has athlete's foot, according to Sonny Hodges. What do you say? Well, I figured the old lady lived in the shoe. She had, had so many children, she didn't know what to do. So they were all pretty squeezed in there. So I said they all had corns. My whole family has corns. <laughs> I get the picture, Wonderful. Ethel. I mean, there's all over their body. Corns here. And no. There. Oh, I see. No, right. restricted yes. to their feet. All right, Richard. She needs one more case of athlete's foot to win a game here. That is such a great answer. Only someone who's witty and brilliant would come up with that. Congratulations. Too. Now, Cheryl, it was a pleasure meeting you, my dear. Thank you. It was and fun being here. Good luck to you and a gift for you backstage, together with our thanks for being with us on Match Game 75. Thank you. Cheryl, thank you. Goodbye. You now have $6,300, Sonny. Are you ready to go on? Yes. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience, Sonny. We got their best response to this. Blank Mills. Now, the answer they gave most often will give you $500 if you match it. If you match that next one, you get $250. If you hook up with the bottom one, you get $100. Whom do you call on? Fanny. <laughs> Fanny, what do you say? Juliet Mills! Yeah! Juliet Mills. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> okay. Um, mm, Brett. Well, I'm torn between two brilliant answers. Mm. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, what about steel mills? Steel mills, okay. Richard. <laughs> Old title, 
bass and bombshell. <laughs> Wilbur Mills. Wilbur Mills. <laughs> so you got Wilbur Mills, Juliet Mills, and Steel Mills. Do you want one of those, Sonny, or do you want to create one of your own? I don't have one, but I'm going to go with um, Wilbur. You're going to go with Wilbur? You'll have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> been done before. She's going to go, right. Jean, she's going with Wilbur, so did Fanny Fox. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> now, Wilbur Mills, are you there? Shall we begin by revealing the bottom one, the $100 response? Windmills. Windmills. I didn't think of that either. You know, it really never crossed my mind. Never crossed the windmills of my mind there. <laughs> All right, Wilbur Mills, you old rascal, are you under the $250 response? Haley Mills. Oh, Juliet. Oh, well, that's Juliet's sister. Yeah, we're getting close, aren't we? <laughs> Last chance for Wilbur Mills. Here's the $500 response. General Mills. I really thought they were going to say Wilbur Mills. Didn't you think Wilbur Mills? Oh, Was he ever? Oh, all kidding aside, all of you who said General Mills, raise your hands. You're lying to me, all of was he got a bunch of general. Was no, Wilbur he was never a general? Oh. Where's General Mills? General Mills is name of a big company that makes tell breakfast cereal. What I said. All right. What did you say? I said, turned to Charles and I said, "Well, who in heaven's name is General Mills?" <laughs> He ain't nobody. I tell you, Sonny, you're going to play another game in a moment or so, but right now we've got to do a little business, and it's a commercial from General Mills. All right, here we are. We're just talking away here, waiting for you to come back, and now you're back, and we will introduce a new player and carry on. Shall we do that? Let's welcome Maggie Moore. Hello there, Maggie. How are you? Fine, thank you. You're a pretty lady. Well, thank you very much. Where are you from, Maggie? I'm from Ohio originally, from New Jersey, but I'm living in Ohio now, and yep. uh, I'm a flight attendant, yep. and I'm here to do the show. You really are? You came here to play? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so did Follow I. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you, Maggie. We'll begin by asking you to make a selection. A, please. A is what she wants, all right? <laughs> a is what she's going to get. This is it. It says here, Fanny Flagg is such a rotten housekeeper. How rotten? Ah! Test to that. <laughs> I'll tell you how rotten she is, Richard. When a dove flew into her kitchen, it blanked. <laughs> Fanny Flagg is such a rotten housekeeper that when a dove flew into her kitchen, it blanked. She leaves all her drawers open. Now don't, uh, no clothes, please. Oh, that's not a clue, that's the yeah. truth. We lived together in New York for a week. I had to get up and shut every drawer every morning. Pick up her pajamas. My life wasn't easy. <laughs> What's then she pay? wanted me to buy a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to pay. And when I didn't work hard enough, she used to play old Ethel Merman records. She said, that'll perk you up, honey. <laughs> you didn't come to see me. What'd you say? Get uh, where, she where didn't she come to they, see me? Oh, uh, didn't she? Uh, they didn't she even, the only thing, you know, she, she said she didn't know where I lived. And she said she was passing by 52nd Street one day. And she went into my hotel because she had to go to the ladies' room. And she didn't even know I lived there. <laughs> and she only used the ladies' room. She didn't even call me on the house phone. She wouldn't even use your ladies' room? Oh. And she, did, she said she didn't know I lived there. It's she liked true. the ladies' room. It's a really high-class hotel. They let feeling, anybody in it. You got a feeling Rod Sterling wrote it. <laughs> Have I lost control of this whole <laughs> show? <laughs> All right, Maggie Moore. Fanny Flagg is such a rotten housekeeper that when a dove flew into her kitchen, it blanked. Died. It died! Yeah. What do you say, Bill? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been in her kitchen before, and uh, I'd say it bird-dropped. It bird-dropped. <laughs> is that the right tense? And if you ever dropped your bird before, yeah, you that's know, right. Okay. <laughs> what do you say, Brent? Hi, hon. Hi. Oh, but I'm crazy about your baby. I never asked you to be a good little housekeeper. She dropped his or her feathers. Yeah, all right. Well, no all match right. there. She says it died, Charles. You can't Charles. be brilliant every minute. <laughs> yes, you can, my child. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, one for you, Maggie. What do you say, Evel? Well... She says the bird died. Yes, well, I thought maybe he became asphyxiated or something, but then I thought twice, so I said it died. That's yeah. two for you. <laughs> Fanny Flagg is such a rotten housekeeper. Maggie Moore says her bird died. Right. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Ethel. That's my heart. <laughs> you must control this. Ethel, you only laugh when the audience laughs, you see. <laughs> 
laughing. She wishes. <laughs> as, uh, as Fanny would say, died, she would say, it did it. It did it. That's it for you. Okay, Fanny, you're up. Yes. My character is being assailed. Oh, it is? Yes, I want to say, do you see this flower? It was so beautiful, and I came in, Brett breathed on it, and it died. That's right. <laughs> said the bird flew in and it got dirty. It got dirty. <laughs> but I lied. So it's middle of round one, three for you, Maggie, and your first round question is yet to come, but right now this is coming your way. Hello there, friends. <laughs> and goodbye there, friends. we got to say goodbye to Sonny and to Maggie, and we'll see you next time. Okay, middle of round one, score is three for you, and your question is yet to come. You were all splendid. This is your first time out, yes. and you were splendid, my dear. Thank you very much. Splendid. Thank you. And you may come back tomorrow. Oh, I, thank you. I'd love to. Oh, I, I just you, love you to. watch this show, don't oh, you? all the time. I've been, I've been hearing about you. you There's you, something you, you've got to watch. A man that? going... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Join us next time. Gene Raven, Best in 75. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Max Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the stars. Bill Daly, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rivers. Are you all ready? No, no. For yeah, what? Bob Newhart never sing to you. Won't you come home, Bill Daly? Won't oh, you come home? No, oh, no, 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 no. It's Bill uh, Daly. Now, that's okay. the reason he doesn't. You never get a laugh when you do it. Did <laughs> <laughs> okay. you get a laugh? Bob I Newhart would do that. <laughs> All right. How is old Bob Newhart? He's great. Your Super show's a big guy. hit? Well, we're going into the fourth year. And, Isn't that uh, marvelous? Yeah, it's really yeah. nice to be working. Yeah, very good. Yeah. 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 Yes. Good morning, yeah. Now let's say hello to Ron Valenti and Linda Cohn over here. How are you, Ron? <laughs> Linda. Uh, Ron's our current champ. He has $11,200. Hello, dear. And his wife is uh, in, in the audience, and she's very happy about that. Have you talked to her? Or have you figured out what you're going to do with all that money? That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. She I hasn't spoken to him since he started carrying on with Fanny, I'll tell oh, you I that. Oh, I see that, <laughs> yes. And now, where are we? In the middle of round one, you had your first round question. Mm -hmm. well, you we did... never learned anything about Linda. Oh, that's right, <laughs> that's Linda. Okay. Well, no. it is not okay. No, no Linda, you got to tell us about yourself, please. I was please. born and raised in California. Yeah, and... you are a Californian. Right. And I married my childhood sweetheart. Really? And we have 50... Oh, well, if you're married, we don't want to hear about <laughs> it. Yeah. You're single. Yeah. And I have a 15-month-old daughter named Trisha. You have a 15-month-old daughter named Trisha. Right. I just told you that. Right. <laughs> I thought I heard it somewhere. I wasn't sure where I heard it, though. What else? Well, his wife is sitting next to my husband. <laughs> his wife is sitting next to your husband. Yeah, to be. <laughs> That's just a coincidence. Yeah. yeah, your husband is the one down there who looks like Peter Sellers. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people tell me. A lot of people tell you that. And a younger version of Groucho Marx. And a younger version of Groucho Marx. <laughs> his cup overfloweth. <laughs> The secret work, and the doctor will give you $100. Uh. Okay, we'll go on with this game, give you your first round question in a minute or so, but right now, please watch this if you would. And I thank you. Now we're ready to carry on, and let's do that. Here we go. This is yours, Ron. Your first round question. Pay attention. Everybody, here we go. Lady Guinevere said, King Arthur is very romantic. How romantic is he? I'll tell you how romantic he is. I'm glad thou asked. Before he comes into the royal bedroom, he always blanks his suit of armor. <laughs> That's how romantic he is. Lady oh, Guinevere there's said so that. So many wonderful choices. So many lovely things. Yes. Oh, I've got it. King Arthur is oh, very I have romantic, she oh. said. Lady Guinevere said that. I love my answer. All right. 
Everyone okay. Wow, I love an answer. Oh, all right. They're ready up there. Let's see if they're ready down here. Yes, they're all set. Put it in the slot. They come over here to Ron Valenti. Lady Guinevere said, you know who Lady. What? what? Ethel's finished. Bill wasn't finished. I was writing something home to my wife. No, I was finishing along. I was writing yeah, a letter. Yeah, he was finished. Well, I saw him finish when I was up there. I'll run the show, Ira. You just sit there and be the judge. And shut up! Yes. Okay, are you ready, Ron? All right. Lady Guinevere said King Arthur is very romantic. Before he comes into the royal bedroom, he always blanks his suit of armor. He shines. Shines. Is that a romantic idea? No. Must polish my armor before I go in to see my wife. What do you say, Bill? Could have That's not what little... you said in Encino. <laughs> <laughs> put a little deodorant on it, I think. Yeah. I, mean, I would say that's pretty close. I would say cleans up. Cleans up and is polish. Is that a match? Can you yes go with that? No. Shines. Yeah. Okay. All right, Brett. What do you say? Oh, golly. I said he went in in his jockey shorts because he took off. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's a little more romantic, isn't it? <laughs> Hopefully. Charles. Wear them when he removes. Steve, he, he only just changes the wording. Uh, all right. Now, before he comes into the royal bedroom, he always blanks his suit of armor, and Ron said, shines. And I said he gets a large can opener and takes off his suit of armor. <laughs> He just slices it, it. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. with a can opener That's and right. gets it right off. And how else you, no, That's no buttons the way to on it. it. No, they didn't have buttons. What do you say, Richard? You are a, you're an English fellow. You I know happen about to it. know a great deal about the knights. And they, were, <laughs> <laughs> they were very gentle people. They were and very meticulous. Oh. Yes. And, uh, you always perfume your suit of arms. Perfume your suit. Of <laughs> Little Chanel number no. nine. I see. Twenty-one. Wouldn't the alcohol there. make it rust? <laughs> He always shines his suit of armor, according to Ron Valenti. What do you say, Miss Rhinestone Shirt? I say he always oils his suit of armor. Oil. Okay. So it's three to one at the end of round one. We go to round two and ask Linda to make her selection. B. B. Only three people participate now. Which three Only are those? three. <laughs> All right. Stop, <laughs> baby. Are you listening? George Washington. <laughs> George Washington said to Betsy Ross, Oh my goodness, that red, white, and blue thing was a flag? I just used it as a blank. You don't and you don't. No. Who does? You do. Who do? He do, do and she do. He do do. We do not. All right. He finished. Brett, are you thinking? Yes, I'm thinking. I'm just looking to make sure. George Washington said to Betsy Ross, Oh, my goodness, that red, white, and blue thing was a flag. I just used it as a blank. Go. Oh, okay. All eyes are on you, Brett. Oh, thank heavens. It's since about time at my age. <laughs> I've been waiting a lifetime for all eyes to be on me. Okay, here we go, Linda Cohn. George Washington said to Betsy Ross, he says, Betsy, oh my goodness, that red, white, and blue thing was a flag? I just used it as a... Rag? As a rag. No. Maybe they want it, I don't know, maybe they'll be more specific. Well, we'll find out right now. Brett, what did you say? I say over and out. Over and out? <laughs> I said a pair of jockey shorts. <laughs> don't say, boo, they come in red, white, and blue. <laughs> Some of them do, yes. All right, Richard, it's up to you. I said handkerchief. Handkerchief. Oh. A hanky. Oh. All right, and you? I said um. towel. A towel. No One lousy there. person all out there said, ah. Right. Okay. 
So it remains three to one in the middle of round two, and uh, you'll have your second round question. You'll have to match two to tie, three to win, but right now you're a winner with this message. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> now we're in our second and final round, and this is Ron's question, and he matched one celebrity in the first round. That was Bill Daly, and that means he's got to match two now to stay in the game. Three, however, will win another game for him. Fred said this. Fred said, for my birthday, my girlfriend knitted me a pair of socks out of her own hair. They're wonderful. The only problem is my new socks have blank. That's what Fred said. My girlfriend. My, gr my girlfriend knitted me a pair of socks out of her own hair, you see. Out of her own hair. Had long hair. She kept yeah. cutting it every yeah. once in a while. Saved yeah, all so her hair and in a big yeah. plastic yeah. Oh, bag. Yeah. Then she knitted socks yeah. out of it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only problem is my new socks have blank. All right. Now we're ready. Here we go. Ron Valenti. For my birthday, my girlfriend knitted me a pair of socks out of her own hair. They're absolutely wonderful. The only problem is my new socks have... Dandruff. Dandruff. Now, Brett, you're up first here. What do you say to that? Do you know who gave me those socks? Who? Fanny. Fanny? Really? She's always been very nice to me. Particularly since, well, I can't go into it. Argyle Dandruff. Argyle Dandruff. That's one for you. Charles, what say you? Number two. Dandruff. That's a tie score, Ron. One more case of dandruff, and you win the game here. You offer him a little dandruff? Dandruff wins the game. Okay. Congratulations once again. Okay. Linda, we're really delighted to meet you, my dear girl. Oh, I had fun. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and playing Match Game 75. We've got a gift for you backstage. Thank you. Thank you, Linda Cole. Goodbye. Okay. Here we are again. There it is. You ready? Yeah. Okay. He's up to 11,300 now, and he's going to try for over 5,000. We polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Blank ration. All right. The answer that audience gave most often is worth 500. You have to match it, though. If you match the next one, you get 250. And if you are lucky enough to match a bottom one, you get 100. Who do you want a little help from here? You gotta stay with my luck, Fanny. Fanny. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing I can think that's happened lately, gas ration? Gas ration, there's one. Richard? Richard? Uh, something Gene serves when I have dinner with him, kennel ration. <laughs> uh -huh. Kennel ration? Charles? Food ration. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you have food, kennel, and gas. Would you like to choose one of those or think up one of your own? Gas ration. You want gas. All right. That was Fanny's answer, right? Okay. We're looking for gas. <laughs> May we see the $100 response? Kennel. That's up there. That's the one that Richard gave you, right? Okay. Now, let's see if we find a little gas under the $250 response. K-ration. Last chance for gas, folks. Here's the $500 response. Gas! Hell tongues! Hell tongues! Enough, right? You want to take her home? No, you can't take her home. Well, you come wait a back minute. He's me. got a lot of money. How much are you prepared to pay? <laughs> well, money will go to charity. Ron is now up to $11,800, and he's going to try for $5,000 now. Which one person would you like to try to match on this $5,000 question? <laughs> Fanny. Okay, Fanny. All right, you face me. Is it all right? 
I mean, I just want to look and see if your wife is still smiling. Yeah, okay. She's still smiling, yeah. There she is. See that big smile on her face there? Smile there. Okay. Now, the guy next to her is not too happy. His wife just lost him. No, he's a good sport. He's smiling. He's a good guy. All right, here we go. Ready. Blank holiday. H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, blank holiday. <laughs> Fanny's finished. Now, Ron, what answer would you like to give us which you think will match hers for $5,000? Blank holiday. I drew an absolute blank, but uh, how about spring holiday? <laughs> well, now, uh, a school teacher would think of that. Spring holiday is uh, something that they're very familiar with. Uh, we'll find out right now if Fanny thought of that. May we see your answer, please, for $5,000? He says spring holiday yeah, will match it. I know what he said. I was thinking the same thing because he's a school teacher. And you know what I said? And I could kill myself. I said summer holiday. Summer I... holiday. It's so close. Yeah. Summer can't, and spring. Can't we push no, the No, got to be an exact match uh, when you go for the big money here. Well, that was kind of a hard one. You win some and you lose some, as you found out up here, Ron. But you're up to 11800 You're going to play another game after we hear this message. We are ready to play another game, and let's welcome Janice Long. Would you welcome Janice, Charles? Thank you. Hi, Janice. Fine, thank you. Where are you from? Uh, well, I live in California, North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Were you born in this area? Yeah, beautiful downtown Burbank. I see. <laughs> are you married? No, single. You mess around. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All of a sudden, I become a middleman here. <laughs> but not Get your long, show. honey. I know yeah. your habits. <laughs> what do you say, Janice? Uh, what, what, what do you do for a living? Your place well, or mine? <laughs> yours. It's probably better. Well, I'm an interning as a medical assistant. What? The You're hell interning? with this game. Let me That's get this straightened out. <laughs> Is this the first winner we've had in a long time? Uh, you are training to be a no, what? I'm, I'm interning as a medical assistant. Really? What does that mean? Well, I take blood pressure and EKGs and... Oh, did yeah. 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 Are you yeah. really? Yes. I'll take care of you. <laughs> Here we go. Janice, please make a selection. A, please. A, it is... This is a new game. Good. She's already won three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with this. I'm right. gonna be my nurse. You will do the best you can for her. <laughs> this is so exciting. Yeah. Ethel? Yeah. Forget it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna work out. There's enough of that. No, Hurry on. No, but he gave me. You gave me. The millionaire the said. Yes. I just had, the millionaire said, I just had a huge custom limousine built. It doesn't use any gasoline because instead of an engine, it has a dozen blanks under the hood. Oh. Instead of an engine, it has a dozen blanks under the hood. That's oh, what this I, millionaire oh, said. took a minute, and I He's have very that. rich, you see. Wait a minute. This millionaire's had. I just had a huge custom limousine built. It doesn't use... <laughs> gasoline at all because instead of an engine it has a dozen blanks under the hood you understand now i don't want to lead charles astray no he has been down that path before that's why i had to move over because sometimes charles mistakes my answer for his all right here we well, go i didn't spit no don't say it janice long will now give us her response the millionaire said, I just had a huge, a huge custom limousine <laughs> built. It doesn't use any gasoline because instead of an engine, it has a dozen blanks under the hood. Servants. 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 Well, what do you think is a better answer to Yeah, a bunch of weirdos. Here, in the end. What do you say there, Bill? 
I don't know. What do you say? Hello. Uh, I don't know what happens to all those beautiful girls that just go around there and just disappear, but I like dibs on a couple of them, man. <laughs> if you lose, I'll see you later. Really, are, they, they just go away and disappear somewhere. I said the uh, dozen horses. A dozen horses. 12 horsepower, right? 12 horsepower under the hood. Under the hood. Okay. All right, Brett, may we see your answer? I was so crazy about my answer a minute ago. And I now? just thought it was the best answer I've ever given. I've kind of backed away a little bit, but not a lot. Greyhounds. Greyhounds. They're racing. Don't yeah. say bull. They're no, racing dogs. You, you, you. I. Uh, they're. <laughs> Roll that out. <laughs> <laughs> they are a rotten bunch, aren't they? Oh. Charles, what do you say? Horses for me, too. Horses. All right. You got a lot of horses in Greyhounds. What from you say? <laughs> I said a dozen batteries. Batteries. Maybe be electric. I an know. electric car. Okay. Yeah, they are. A dozen. What? Instead of an engine, it has a dozen blanks under the hood, and she said servants. I hope this won't affect our relationship. I said horses. Horses. And you, Fanny, what do you say? I say Richard's taking a turn for the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we've got a little message for you, and you're going to hurry right back. Will you do that, please? Thank you. Sorry to say, in the midst of all of this laughter and hilarity and gaiety, we got to stop right here in the middle of round one. But you'll save some for next time, right? Okay, and you will be hilarious and gay and full of it. Listen, you are marvelous, Do I have and you're going to come back, one right? Thing. Thank you, darling. I'd okay. love it. Yes. What? Quickly. I must say, isn't it thrilling to have somebody as terrific as Ethel Merman on A our show? A living legend. Oh. A living. You're marvelous. Thank you. Yes, you're I consider us blessed. Okay. Well, look, now, the next time we get together, these are the people you will see on this here now stage. Jack Cassidy, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Tony Randolph, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. Team Raider Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. Stay tuned for musical chairs next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Avery Schreiber, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Wright, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Beulafon as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 76. And now here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Rader! Thank you, Johnny Olson, and dear friends and gentle hearts, we welcome you one and all. Now, let's get all the plugs out of the way. Okay. What do you want to plug? Newberries. New, what do you want to plug? <laughs> oh, anything. Oh, really? Yes, yes. right now, yes. Poor lady, then you? <laughs> you barber. <laughs> Jimmy LaFord, what do you want to plug? Uh, the swashbuckler. The swashbuckler. Oh, yes. yeah, that's right. You I did a movie. About... I smoke a pipe now. You that's right. He's a swashbuckler. His hair look, do look better, don't it? That's right. He, he looks like a fat Johnny Mop. <laughs> Positively handsome. Anything yes. going in your life? Nothing but you, sweetheart. Oh, all right. Then. <laughs> and Charles. I'll plug Ethel Merman. All right. Oh, oh. Good. The question is when. Touche. Touche. Anytime, Charles. Anytime, my lovable darling. lady. Now let's say hello to Russ Watson and Sandy Deepman. Yes, oh. All right, Russ. Very good, thank you. How much money have you won? $5,600. $5,600? Yes. Now, you've had a little time since our last meeting to think this over. What are you going to do with that? I'm afraid to say, but I think I'm going to apply it towards a mobile home. A mobile home? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yes, you're one of those, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? 
<laughs> no, I don't know what that means. I just said uh, that's, that's. You can be so, you know. <laughs> that lady is. <laughs> she's growing feathers out there. Well, <laughs> you're gonna need a little more money because they've gone up in price, Russ. So we wish you the best of luck. And he's being challenged here by Sandy Deepman, who's had her first round question and didn't match uh, any of our person. As, as a matter of fact, neither one of them have matched anybody in either question there. We'll see how this game ends in a moment or so when round two comes up. Oh, let's push this button, reveal our second and final round questions, and ask Sandy to make her decision. I'd like B again for Brown again. B again for Brown again. <laughs> okay. Life alive. Wasn't, I think Brown, wasn't that your boyfriend? Yes. And oh, that's, that's right. That's why I was so crushed, I remember it. So yes. Yeah. You're so not right. available. We will do our best. He is available, Sandy. Here we go. <laughs> old Lady Perkins said to the hairdresser, mm -hmm. That's old man Perry <laughs> You said if I let you cut my hair, I wouldn't look like an old lady. You were right, but now I look like a blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, I, I like this. I like old lady. Uh, 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 you said if I, Perkin, you, if, I, if I let you cut my hair, I wouldn't look like an old lady. You were right, but now I look like a blank. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> There's one terrific answer. Oh, Joe, I'm just going to oh, 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 Terrific answer. Does anybody have a thinking cap in the audience? That's it. Oh, that's... <laughs> like a blank? Like a blank. Okay. I wouldn't... You, you said if I let you cut my hair, it wouldn't look like an old lady. You were right, but now I look like a blank. I don't think this is the definitive <laughs> answer. I got one in there. Is that the definitive answer? I can't read you, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all you can think of. Put it in a slot and away we go. Oh, yeah. I know. Sandy. <clears throat> Old Lady Perkins said to the hairdresser, You said if I let you cut my hair, I wouldn't look like an old lady. You were right, but now I look like a blank. An old man. Certainly she came up with a definitive answer. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's so hard with you people here, and you're supposed to be sophisticated in show business. And that sweet little girl came up, bing, just like that. She said, old man. What'd you say, Avery? Well, I wish I was so sophisticated. I said, old man. Old man, you know, very good. There's one for her. All right. <laughs> Hello, darling. Listen, it's not my fault if you have a lot of people on your staff who write those questions only went to the third grade. It would not be a old man. It would be it. an old man. Yeah, but we so, use the indefinite the a, article. Yeah, because never it applies mind the to... indefinite article. My mother whirls in her grave every time I say say he don't like him. Uh. So I said she looked like a paper sack. Not terrific, but no, no. <laughs> Wait a one now, that is, she, she said, and she, you know, she, she's just too logical. She said, she wouldn't say, but now I look like an old man, because I it's said, it says here, correct. but now I look like a blank. And she took us literally when we really didn't mean to have her take us literally. Do I have a hair in my eye? Because I, my whole thing is all falling apart. Be careful, yeah. what she cut unravel. <laughs> <laughs> Now listen, we've got to use that question sometime. Jean pulled the wrong string and Brett's blank fell off. What do you say there? We know the answer to that, don't we, Howard? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll let Charles have his brief moment of glory. Well, it's an old... Well, I just said... An old hooker. <laughs> well... Dear me... I really didn't expect that. Did you expect that? No. What did you say? I'm maybe a young one, but not If I let you cut my hair, it wouldn't look like an old lady. You were right, but now I look like a... I said an old man. Old man. Yeah, Let me just hold it up there for a second. The camera took a shot of it, you see. All right. Thank you very much, my dear. Life is just a ball of cherry. Oh, isn't it true? 
Don't talk to her. <laughs> you're, I have you're to. A she winner. keeps talking to me. She never shuts up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Poor devil. Yeah. Show and tell. Old man. Old man. I love you for I love you hey. Hey. Now, speaking of old men. <laughs> Oh, Let's see your <laughs> Thank you, pardon. Well, I don't know, but I once had my hair cut by one of those fancy guys. Yeah. And Doesn't Beverly look Hills. like it. <laughs> Hi, <Hon. laughs> And I look like an old goat. An old goat. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't think of old man. Didn't think of old man. I thought of an old goat. So what do we got? We got three for Sandy, and when we get back from this commercial, Russ, that means you got to match three to stay in the game, four to win. Come right back, dear friend. Now, here we go. <laughs> Ready, Russ? Yes. Three to tie, four to win. <laughs> Everybody plays. You all ready here now? Yeah, Let's sure, this all right. Poor Norman. Oh. 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 He took a short. Oh. He... <laughs> I wish a lady would lay it so we could all, you know, <laughs> catch it for her. Okay. Poor Norman, he took a shortcut across the golf course and now he has a golf ball embedded in his blank. Oh. Poor Norman took a walk. He took a shortcut across the golf course. Now he has a golf ball embedded in his blank. This is pretty long for a song title, but the melody is very catchy if you've ever heard it. I think maybe this is a better Very answer. Very good. More definitive. Right. As long as it's Excellent. Like yeah. Like All right. Everybody ready here? Well, have you been many places since our yeah. past cross? Yeah. Where? Yeah. I've been all over doing concerts. I just got back from Honolulu. No we, did, we did a telethon there. Yeah. And raised two hundred thousand dollars for the Easter Seals. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Now. Everybody's ready over there, Russ. Here it is. Poor Norman. He took a shortcut across the golf course. Now he has a golf ball embedded in his blank. Head. Head. Right there. Right there. Okay, the audience is groaning, Russ. I don't know what that means, but we'll find out. What do you say, Avery? Well, I know what it means. It means that the, I also like to go out with my camper. I go to Sam's Family Spa. I have a wonderful time. Now, I said head. Head. There's for Russ. That's funny. How do you like them? It surprises me, Russ. I thought it was a rotten answer, but you're starting off great here. <laughs> Nothing personal, Lavery. Oh yes. I, I know, I know. I just can't seem to get nowhere today. <laughs> you got another loser, huh? You know what? what? I got rhythm navel. Navel. <laughs> I'm doing a medley about the song. I see that. <laughs> sailor, yes. What do you say, huh? Charles? Why don't we let Ethel do a medley of Ethel? <laughs> I said maybe it's a match. I hope if you think about it, X-rays would say it is mouth. Mouth. No, no, not really. Okay, okay, here we go, Ethel. Poor Norman, you know the shortcut of the golf course. Now he has a golf ball embedded in his head. Mm, well, I got something here that you're not going to believe. <laughs> oh, maybe I, maybe I don't want to I thought it, it was a magnetic ball. Magnetic ball. <laughs> yes. So I said embedded in his pants. Embedded in his pants. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I shall well, not pursue it any further. Well, it was a lucky shot. I see. Now, you got a match. The two remaining ones, Russ, to stay in the game. We're looking for a head from Richard. You know when they uh, hit the ball, they yell out, Four! Yes. I, of course, took the exact opposite approach and said, Derriere. Derriere! So, Sammy, what you have? What you have? Yeah, yeah. What if you have? Okay, congratulations. There you are. Okay, hang around here now. Now, Dr. Oh, Russ Watson oh, here, oh, who's going to oh, take his $5,600 winnings oh, and put it uh, to help buy a new camper. And we wish him many, many happy, happy hours in that vehicle. It's been a screen. Thanks very much, Russ Watson. Goodbye, Bye. Okay. Nice, see, here it is. All for you, Sandy. Here's your chance to earn over $5,000. You ready? All right. Uh, 
Would you throw the box of Kleenex over, please? Thank you. Listen, while uh, he's doing that, Sandy, I'll just point out to you that we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Body blank. Thank you. Body blank. Now, the answer that bunch gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the answer they gave second most frequently, uh, you'll cry a lot. No, you get uh, $250, and then the third one will get you $100. That's all there is to it. Now, three of our celebrities uh, of the six are permitted to suggest answers in case you draw a blank, and you call on them one at a time now. Richard. You're crying, and we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Ah, or what you have, body beautiful. Body beautiful, that's a sweet thought, Richard. <laughs> now, another one. Brett, I have two. Uh, I'm going to go for body shop. Body shop, okay. Charles, please. Charles, what do you say? Body and soul. Body and soul. Body you may be too young to remember this. Do you know the song, Body and Soul? Well, it was a, a very popular song in my Sing youth. Sing it, Ethel. Da-da-da-da-da-da. da 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 Yeah, it's a marvelous song. I'm all for you, body and soul. Right, excellent. Okay, so there's one. Body Beautiful and Body Shop are the other two. Do you want one of those? You may have another idea. I'm going to try Body Shop. Body Shop is what she wants. Well, we all hope it's up there, and we hope it's in a relatively high position. But let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Bodyguard. Hey, that's not a bad idea, isn't it? Yeah, bodyguard. Okay, we're looking for body shop. May we see the $250 response? Body language. Did anybody think of that? No. No. I mean, that was a book, remember? Yeah, there was a book, a whole book written about body language. Oh, yeah. Now, heck last it. chance for body heck shot. It, heck it, body oh, heck no. it. Shazam! Oh! Body and soul. Who gave you that? Charles gave you that one. Body and soul. Audience, I guess that was their favorite, right, Johnny? Yeah. Body and soul. Body snatcher. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. That's too young. Body body and soul. Well, no, there must have been an old bunch here who were looking for body and soul that day. Well, Sandy, you've got your hundred dollars. You're still a champ. You're gonna meet another player, but first we've got to do a little business with America. Hello there. Now let's welcome Ellen Bell. Hello there, Ellen Bell. Now, we want to find out about you. Go. Um, I'm a student at uh, UCLA, working yeah. on my master's degree. Yeah, hey, UCLA. What's your field, Ellen? I'm in the political science department. The what? Political science. Yeah, I didn't department. hear too well there for a second. I, was in, I thought you said I'm in the pickle science department. No. <laughs> what the heck kind of field it of endeavor? It feels like it sometimes. No, political, political science. Political science, yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else you want to tell us about you? No. Where are you from? Um, California. Oh, you're from California. All right, here we go. Good luck to Ellen. We ask her to make a selection, A or B. I'll take A. A it is, and a new game. Hey, did you hear that Sir Lancelot sat on his lance? Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. You hum a few bars. Sir, La <laughs> Sir Lancelot sat on his lance. Now, Sir Lancelot blanks a lot. <laughs> Oh, I think I, I think I've got. He sat on his Lance. 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 In the theater we say Lance, Lance. You see, in the theater we say Lance. Lance. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that? Sir, Sir Lancelot sat on his Lance. Sat on his Lance. 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 Now Sir Lancelot blanks a lot. It's not a poem, dear. It doesn't have to rhyme, Charles. Gee, right? handsome. Thank you, my dear. Pretty as <laughs> a picture. I love your tie. Sir Lancelot, thank you. I love your body. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. Okay. Everybody ready, Ellen? Who are you talking to? You know who Sir Lancelot was, right? Yes. Did you ever read that book as a child? No. You didn't? Never read about King Arthur? Sir Lancelot and no, Guinevere and Galahad and all those weirdos who sat around this big table? And, anyway, Sir Lancelot sat on his lance, or lance, and now Sir Lancelot blanks a lot. Uh, limps a lot. He limps a lot. Okay. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Avery. Are you Give her an answer that will throw the audience into absolute paroxysms of frenzy. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Sir Lancelot sat on his lance. Right. That's why Sir Lancelot stands a lot. Yeah! <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> okay. Sir Lancelot stands a lot. There's something else that happens when you sit on a little lance. What? Oh. It also smarts a lot. Oh, it smarts. <laughs> Another good response, Charles. That's what I thought. <coughs> smart salon. Smart salon. Yeah. No, not now, I Ellen, I think you're getting the hang of it now as we reveal these answers, right? So you'll be okay in round two. First ones are kind of tough, Ethel. Yeah. Well, I thought that was a pretty pointed statement. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I said that salon <laughs> cries a lot. He cries a lot. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> if it smarts a lot, you cries a lot. You bet. What do you say? Uh, I said he stands a lot. He stands a lot. <laughs> hurts him. That's a yeah, Do you understand the humor in that, Ellen? Oh, You're beginning to. Yeah. One more stand, and then she'll really get the joke there. You're not going to say stand? <laughs> no. I went through his armor, right? Yeah. And so now he, he leaks a lot. Oh, and it rains. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Okay, now. Sandy, are you ready for yours? Sure. This is it. Henrietta said, My first husband threw himself into his work. Unfortunately, he was a blank. <laughs> My first husband threw himself into his work. Unfortunately, he was a blank. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. All right, quickly. Put it in there. Let's go. Oh, okay. All right. Now. Already over there. Yeah, no, not ready. No, 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 oh. No, 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 no. Okay, you got it. Put it right in a slot. Wait, 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 and there I we go. It. You're changing. No, I was sort of. I'm clarifying. Oh, Brett. It's okay, hon. Everything's oh, fine. It's all cool. Oh, Sandy. Henrietta said my first husband threw himself into his work. Unfortunately, he was a blank. Window washer. Window washer's very good, Sandy. <laughs> Window washer. Keep up with a great answer. What do you got? I got a sewer man. A sewer man is funny. What do you say? <laughs> Going along with my whole thing about grammar, I said he was a worker in cement. A worker in cement. <laughs> He drowned. He was a plumber. A plumber! <laughs> All right, yeah. Ethel, show and tell, if you please. Oh, uh, he became rich and he discovered a gold mine, so he was a gold digger. He threw himself in the ring. He was a gold digger. Yeah. Richard. I said he was a grave digger. <laughs> a grave digger! <laughs> Joyce? This is for you and Mr. Brown, whoever he is, a window cleaner. Window! Very good. Oh, that was an excellent answer. <laughs> All right, ladies, one and nothing in favor of Sandy at the end of round one. Now this for you. Here we are. Hello and goodbye. Hi. You will come back next time. You promise? I promise. Do not abandon me. All right. One to nothing and around one. Favor the champ. That's the score. Listen, you were all splendid today. Thank you, dear. And you're Good going accent. to be equally as gracious and as amusing and as witty see, and as sophisticated see. and as bright tomorrow. See, see. Oh. <laughs> I got one right. You did get one right, and we're very proud of you, aren't we? Yes, we are. Brisk round of applause for Joyce. Gene <laughs> Reverend here. Join us next time for Match Game 76. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 76. A Mark Woodson, Bill Tottenham production. Stay tuned for Channel Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star, Avery Schreiber. Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Wright, Ethel Merman, Richard Thornton, and Joyce Unifon as we play the star-studded big money match game 76.
And now here's the star of 1976, Gene Rayburn. You're a very colorful, attractive group. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Are you quite ready? Oh, yes. yes. Right. Let's get right to it, shall we? And say hello to Sandy Deekman and Ellen Bell. <laughs> Sandy, well, you've only got $100, but you're the champ. And how do you feel about that? Fantastic. <laughs> Good. Sandy's being challenged by Ellen Bell, and they've both had their first round questions. And uh, the champ here is ahead one to nothing. And immediately after these messages, we will go to round two. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Round two coming up. Ellen Bell, it's your choice, A or B? A. A. Is that what you had last time? Mm-hmm. Okay. The city slicker said to Farmer Brown. Well, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, fat lady. What are you guys doing back there? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you have a lot of authority, state. don't you? Yes. <laughs> City Slicker said to Farmer Brown, I didn't realize that was your milk bucket. I just blinked in it. <laughs> okay. It's a very chic outfit you're wearing. Thank you, Dad. Doesn't she look stunning? Stunning. Stunning. Everybody ready down here? Yeah. Ready up there, let's go. I will walk over to Ellen Bell. And she's ready. The city slicker said to Farmer Brown, I didn't realize that was your milk bucket, I just blinked in it. Tinkle? Tinkle, Bell. Tinkle. Weird bunch. Tinkle, huh? a guy who tinkles in a bucket of milk. What'd you say? How about an onomatopoeia for Tinkle? No. What? <laughs> I went in it. I went. That's okay. that one. <laughs> yes, that is a euphemism. And I told you to go before we left the house. I don't what do you say? I do your, have your hanky. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so glad I don't drink milk. I'm sticking to vodka from now on. <laughs> I see Brian Luke Bell and Tinkle. Brian Luke Bell and Tinkle. That's two for Ellen Bell. Charles? Went. Went. Oh. Careful? Yes. He said, I didn't realize that was your milk bucket. I just tinkled in it. So far, we got uh, two wents and one tinkle. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got two tinkles now. No, three tinkles. Oh, three tinkles. Oh, three tinkles and one went. Are you keeping score, Richard? When I started in this business, I never thought the day would come that I would sit next to a giant of the stage and hear <laughs> say, Tinkle. <laughs> All right, so Ellen has five, and now let's see if she matches Joyce. Well, skiers say don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> I think farmers should say don't drink yellow milk. <laughs> there it is. There's another one. Ready, Sandy? Ready to go to work? Now think hard, listen carefully. Here it is. Bill's color TV set broke, so he kicked it, and now his color TV is black and blank. <laughs> Kicked it, now his color TV is black and blank. You do not play because you match in the first round. Right. For the first time since she's been doing this game. <laughs> okay. Or the second round. Now we come over here to Sandy Deekman. Everybody ready up there? All right. Bill's color TV set broke, so he kicked it. Now his color TV is black and blank. Blue. Black and blue is good. Yeah. She said black and blue. Yeah. Got to match everybody. Uh, well, as Brett said earlier, there are really two good choices here. Yes. You I have had one blown. of them. No, blue. Black and blue. Okay. <laughs> Boy, now six to two. Black and blue. Tripping lightly along with our theme of the show. There's no business like show business. No. Blue. <laughs> That's true for you. Look at all of them. Six to three, Charles. Or as we say in French, bleh, bleh, bleh. 
Score is now six to four, Sandy. You're getting up there. Two more to go. Ethel. Yes. What else? Was I blue? What? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Richard, she's got to tie you to achieve a tie, so the game will end in a tie. Well, she's Brett looking for blue. Said there was two answers, and I quote you the Neil Diamond song. Song, song, blue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say black and white there for a second. Then. But black and white would have been, is the other answer you were thinking about, right? White. Black, black and white was the other one. Okay, so we've got a tie, and that means you've got to start all over again. So let's just wipe the slate clean here. Push the button, reveal one tie-breaking question for each of you ladies. The one who matches the most celebrities will be the winner. Ellen, it's your choice again. Okay, I'll take A. All right, here we go. There's a new disease called banana fever. <laughs> and you know... Well, I gotta hear the whole thing. I gotta hear this whole There's thing. a new disease called banana fever. Yeah. And you know you got it when your skin starts to blank. <laughs> oh, there are two other terrific Yes, yeah, some good choices here. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think that's you think you got it? I think I've got it. By Joe, she's got it. Now we come over here to Ellen Bell and ask for her response to this. This new disease, Ellen, it's called banana fever, and you know you've got it when your skin starts to blank. Peel. Peel is a good one. I think you finally got the hang of the game. You got the hang of the game now, Ellen. It takes a little while to get into the swing of things here. What'd you say? I said peel. Peel is You're going to Ellen. Brett? I'm Chiquita Banana, and I'm here to say peel. <laughs> All right. No, that was not what I heard. What did you say? I don't Squash. understand. You put the card over? Yes. yes. Peel. Peel. Okay. <laughs> you know you've got it when your skin starts to peel, peel. according to Ellen yes. Bell. Give me some skin. Peel. Peel. All right. Richard? I'm so delighted Tiny Tim's not sitting here. <laughs> Peel. 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 Now, perfect. Joyce, she's looking for the answer. Peel. It's the same <coughs> as the potato disease. Peel. Peel. Okay. <laughs> well, it's... Yeah, you got your work cut off for you. You did it once before. We'll find out if she can do it again right after we find out about this. Did you think of that, too? We're in the middle of the tiebreaker. Ellen Bell has had her for a tiebreaking question, has matched all of our celebrities, and that means, Sandy, you got to think hard now and see if you can do the same thing with this question that you did with the last one. Sadie said, I hate the Avon lady. The next time she rings my bell, I'm going to ring her blame. <laughs> Lady said, I hate the Avon lady. The next time she rings my bell, I'm going to ring her blank. <laughs> you really are excellent. All right. I mean, excellent. You play that right there. Charles? Okay. Sandy. Lady said, I hate the Avon lady. The next time she rings my bell, I'm going to ring her blank. Nose. Nose. <laughs> You don't, re you, you don't remember that old expression, I'm going to ring your nose. <laughs> you don't remember that expression. I think she knows it now. Ask her now. I said, yeah. No, we can't take yeah, the answer. Second chance there. It's neck. Yeah. Oh, you would say neck. The second, yeah, second chance. chance there. All together, yeah. the answers don't count. No, they don't. Nose is her official answer, and you she's got to punch match her every... bell. You could punch her bell? No, I could punch her neck. <laughs> oh, you could punch her neck. Well, right. That's what I thought. Punch her neck. Punch her neck. Yeah. So that means uh, Alan wins again. What the record is? Next, 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 next. Come on down, Alan. All right, we wish you the best of luck and ask you to stand on the adhesive tape here. Did you see what everybody had there? There were six necks up there, yeah. I blew my nose. Yes, you blew your Instead nose. It's going to ring my neck. It's going to ring your neck. Well, you got a good sense of humor about it, and you're not going away empty handed because you got $100 coming your way. Pleasure to meet you, Sandy. Goodbye. Yeah. How are you? Fine. Take a deep breath. I've okay. taken many. You've taken many? 
It's very good for you. Now, Ellen, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Mother of blank. So when we tallied it all up, you know, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match that answer. Now, if you match the answer they gave second most frequently, you get $250, and then the third gets you $100. Now, you can get a little help here from our celebrities. One at a time, if you please. Uh, Richard. Mother of Pearl. Mother of Pearl. Right. And Brett. I have one I don't want to say, I don't mean it in any sacrilegi a sacrilegious way, but what about Mother of God? Mother of God, okay, that all right. That be a winner. He might have said that, I mean, who knows? And Charles. <laughs> He's thinking. No, I it will is. go, no, this is not good, darling. I go with this. Mother, uh, it's hard for me to speak English. Yes, but I yes. Mother of us all. Mother of us all. So those are the three. But let's not have a rally. Mother of mud. <laughs> mother of us all. Mother of pearl. <coughs> and mother of God. Now you can choose one of those as the answer you want to go with or give us one of your own. I think I'll choose mother of pearl. You'll choose mother of pearl? Okay. She wants Mother of Pearl. Let's see if Mother of Pearl is up there, and if so, where? Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal a $100 response. Mother of the Bride. <laughs> I okay. had that. You had that? I had that. And nobody asked you. Aw. Uh, Let's see if Mother of Pearl is under the $250 number. Mother of Invention. Necessity. Necessity is the Mother of Invention. Right. Yeah, that was part of that. Okay, last chance for Mother of Pearl. Slide it, Earl. Thank you, Earl the Pearl. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's back there. Okay, now you've won the $500. You got a total of $600, and you're going to play for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But before we can turn over that amount of money to you, you got to match one celebrity exactly. Who? Oh, I have to take um, handsome Richard. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't blame you. I've taken him many times. So you're, <laughs> you're very smart to do that there. Okay. Swing around here. Just stand on the tape. <laughs> Face me. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Worth $5,000. Blank rule. R-U-L-E. Blank rule. All right, Alan Bell. He's finished with his, and now we need a response from you which you think will match his. Blank rule. Golden rule. Golden rule. Did you just think of that? Yeah, I did. Because I saw you were thinking real hard there. You didn't have an answer until you just blurted it out, did you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was a blank. <laughs> Nothing else crossed your mind? No. Well, I hope that's what he wrote. All right, Richard, she says that'll match her for 5,000 big ones. You're studying political science, right? Yes, she's a political science major. Mm -hmm. They have slide rules in your class? No. No? <laughs> they shouldn't, but otherwise they break the golden uh, rule. Uh, $5,600 and she's gonna get it together while we do these messages for you. Now, let's all welcome Gail Taylor. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. No. Now, we all want to know about Gail Taylor, don't we? Yeah. Let's find out about her. Well, I have a wonderful husband named Richard, a beautiful daughter named Elizabeth Taylor, and we raise seeing eye dogs for the blind. No kidding. What do you do that? What do we do it? Where? Well, in two weeks, we do it up north. We're moving to the mountains and building a huge kennel for them. Uh-huh. And my husband's a bed bug hauler. Your husband's a what? Bed bug hauler. A bed bug hauler? What the heck does that mean? 
He hauls furniture, and if you're not awful careful, you haul bed bugs. Oh, yeah. You've got to be very careful. That's right. Oh, that's very... What kind of dogs do you raise, mostly? German Shepherds. German Shepherds. All right. Good luck to Gail Taylor, and let's begin. Gail. A. A it is. Anything you want, my dear. Anything you say. When the first midget came to cannibal country, the cannibals discovered a great new snack food, and they're calling it Midget on a Blink. <laughs> See, they captured this midget. Yes, we're going to get a lot of letters. Yes. Don't write right to me. I didn't write the question. What do I know? Write to the kids. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. When the first midget came to cannibal country, the cannibals discovered a great new snack food, and they're calling it Midget on a Blank. I think I've got it. I bet you have. <laughs> All right. That's nice. Now we come over here to Gail Taylor and get a response from her. When the first midget came to cannibal country, the cannibals discovered a great new snack food, and they're calling it midget on a... Bun? Bun. Yeah. Midget on a bun is okay, Gail. No, no, midget on a bun is not bad. That's one of the good possibilities. Avery? Oh, the size, it depends on the size of your buns. <laughs> and uh, here we have midget on a bun. Midget on a bun, though. <laughs> Look at the buns. <laughs> is Avery on the PA? Sometimes it's hard to hear. Yeah, Hello. Bit. Is everything okay? I am there. Yeah, yeah, now ah. you've better. All right, thank you. Brett? Thank you. Uh, well, that's for this man out there in the audience who booed a bun. Bun. See you again. Look at the way your buns are bouncing up and down on the chair. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look at your buns together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it again, and uh, maybe we should bounce up and down some more, Charles. Well, all right. Well, if you do about, you'll say the bun. <laughs> the bun. <laughs> oh, that's better oh. buns. She didn't say anything now. She's getting self-conscious about it there. Hello, Ethel. Yeah. They're singing. The cannibals discovered a great new snack food. They're calling it midget on a bun. Oh, no. I th they turned him into a popsicle and a midget on a stick. <laughs> midget on a stick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Son of stick. Son of stick. Midget on a stick there. Midget on a stick is good. Oh, and Joyce. I think that's really strange because the vibrations up there all were the same and down here we all thought stick. Very yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, it would be like skewering. I was uh, thinking like an apple on a stick. I see. Stick all right. right. Well, she did pretty well with her. Let's see how you do with yours. Adam said to Eve. Mm. I wish the birds weren't created yet. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> a sparrow blanked my fig leaf. <laughs> I got it. You must have been there, lady. <laughs> oh, it's great when you get a cackler in the group there. And we got one today, then. All right, oh, three, everybody, voice. four. I love that answer. It's sweet. When you're Charles on the road, you get a chance to watch us in the daytime? Oh, yeah. And oh, nighttime, too? All the time. I watch you for the company afternoon. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, we're on 3.30 yep. in New yep. York. Yes, right. right. All right, Ellen Dale. Adam said to Eve, I wish the birds weren't created yet. Yesterday, a sparrow blanked my fig leaf. <laughs> oh, no, I stole my fig leaf. Yesterday, a sparrow stole my fig leaf. What was your second choice? Well, you had another idea. You didn't want to say it. All right. We tell you to trust your first judgment here. Avery, what do you say? Being a lover of ornithology. Yes. <laughs> I found that sparrows have a long beak. He speared. He speared. <laughs> I think we did. I think. But that, that be, wouldn't be like he could spear him without stealing it, couldn't he? Brett? But, sweetheart. Uh, he, she's but looking for stole my fig leaf. No, no, I don't have to. He got in there. He was, they're hateful little birds, you know. He pecked my tongue. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. Okay. Charles, what do you say? Oh, I have a sweet answer. Well, just, it's a darling answer. It's so lovely. Nested in. <laughs> Nested in. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't hurt at all. <laughs> Ethel, what do you say? Well, I sort of cleaned up Charles' house. Right? I said he spotted. He spotted? You know, like uh, pigeon spot you. Yes, of course, I understand. The sparrow spotted No explanation, but it's that cut. Okay. All right. Correct, Richard. Uh, the correct English for that, actually, is that the sparrow doo-dooed my fig leaf. Doo sparrow doo-dooed my fig leaf. What do you say? I just love... <laughs> I just love the way you play Adam. <laughs> you like Adam? Yeah. I said he tweaked. Oh. <laughs> All right, so there's three to nothing and around one, and there it is, and we've got this message for you. We just have a few seconds here, well, 15 seconds to be exact, enough time for me to say that I am deeply in your debt. Oh. And if there's anything I can do for any of you at any time, Forget do not hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
You're it is a big old Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. G. Raven here. Join us next time for Match Game 76. Goodbye. Get ready to match the star, Avery Schreiber, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Wright, Ethel Lerner, Richard Dawson, <laughs> and Joyce Beautiful as we play the star studded Big Bunny Match Game 76. And now here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Rayner! Hello, hello, hello. Is everyone quite all right? Isn't it grand hearing all that applause from that yeah. marvelous, enthusiastic yeah. bunch out there? Yeah, yeah. You're a very friendly group, and we welcome you, don't we? We do. Yeah. Yeah. And anything anyone has to show, show them the Vogue look. The Vogue What's look? The Vogue? What's that? That's it. I used to model in my youth. Don't ask me good news. Okay, we won't. <laughs> Let's say hello to Gail Taylor and Murray Metz over here. Yeah. How are you, Gail? Hi. Good. This lady has uh, won... How many games have you won? You won one game? One. One game. And you have a total of $600 to your credit, right? And uh, that makes you happy. And you're being challenged here by Murray. And this is going to be a, kind of a tight game. It's six to four in her favor. Uh, and we're in the middle of round two. No, we're the beginning of round two. Oh, all right. So we're going to begin with you, and you're going to have your choice of A or B, and you're going to have to match two celebrities to achieve a tie so that we can go to a tiebreaker. If you don't do that, it's goodbye, Murray Metz. I know that. So you know. <laughs> you know everything now. All right. We'll get to this uh, end of this game in a moment or so, but first, we want to get to this for you. Here we go. Bing. Whoop, bing, boing, bing. Round two. Murray, it's up to you, A or B. I'll try A, please. A it is. All right. Two people play. Avery and Charles are the only two who will respond to this. If you would, gentlemen, please. The restaurant owner said, I don't think our kitchen passed the health inspection. Oh, dear. Neither does mine. The health inspector... <laughs> ah. Oh, <laughs> I don't think our kitchen passed the health inspection. The health inspector just blanked. The health inspector just blanked. Well, there are so many alternatives, sweetie. You don't write. But I was just... It's just... Uh, uh, I'm You'll just, go out I'm afterwards ruminant. anyway. Oh, okay. I was but just... But my wife is coming. You promised me. No, my <laughs> wife is coming tonight. You said no, I'd never have to meet that woman. My wife is coming with her. Again. <laughs> <laughs> the restaurant owner said, "I don't think our kitchen passed." It. Oh, you finished. You finished. <laughs> yeah, it was a lousy answer. The health inspector just blamed. No, that was nice. <laughs> Would you stay out of it? Get your own show. I'm running this show. <laughs> she has her own show. The Vogue Look. It's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Murray, the restaurant owner said, I don't think our kitchen passed the health inspection. The health inspector just blanked. I think he just barfed. He just barfed. <laughs> Very good. Oh, my goodness. Did he do that? He barfed, oh, he according does that. to Murray. Well, he did it according to me, too. He, he barfed. He barfed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Charles? Now, Charles, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but as you can plainly see, the score is six to five, and Murray Metz is counting on you very heavily to come up with the same answer he has just uttered, namely, barfed. <laughs> Have you thought of going into news like Walter Cronkite? You were very good, that speech. I would cut it in two. <laughs> Threw up. Threw up and barfed. It's a time. Say. We got a tie. So, uh, six to six, that means we've got to wipe the slate clean here. 
And we have to take our magic finger and push the button and reveal one tie-breaking question for each of you. The one who matches the most celebrities will be the winner. And, Murray, you have your choice, A or B. I'll stay with A, please. A it is, and here we go. Tie-breaking question. Tie-breaking question. Is there a fly in the room? An no, insect of some kind? No, smoking a uh, thing, and I was just trying to get the smoke out. Oh, I see. I'm Who's surrounded here? by them. Are you smoking your pen there? No. Oh, no, no. Right, is there any we... clues as to who it is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you know. Now, this is a tie-breaker. Shall we get on with it? Yeah. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Want us to break your tie? <laughs> old Lady Perkins said... Oh, this is a lot. Hey, keep my husband in a file cabinet. <laughs> I file the old codger under the letter D for blank. I got it! <laughs> I keep my husband in a file cabinet. I file the old codger under the letter D for blank. I got it. You got it. Right. It's all right. All right. Finish, finish, finished. Finish. All right. You, you're finished. I'm finished. I've been finished. Why? Doesn't it light up? Well, I, yes, it did light up. All right. Very good. Charles? You gonna put it in the slot? He's just asking a little two questions. I, I see. Don't I don't like that. in bad it's taste answers, but in I want to match it and leave it in the slot. Right. <laughs> oh dear me! <laughs> Old lady Perkins said, blah, 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 blah. "No, she didn't say she did." I keep my husband in the file cabinet. I file the old codger under the letter D for for Dayed. 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 He Dayed. Hi, Jean. <laughs> I told you that was the I'm lousy turn answer. I'm going to right around. <laughs> They're going to hate me. They're going to hate you? No, Why? no. Well, I, I, I just thought about him, and I, I think he's just depleted. Depleted. <laughs> D for depleted. That is not a match. No. It's, I've never heard that as a euphemism for dead. What do you say? Uh, uh-uh, I've heard it as a euphemism for a lot of other stuff, but not dead. That's what I, I was went. thinking of. I feel the whole point of this game is that we should try and match all the contestants, right? Oh. Right. So that's what I did. You said Dave, okay. <laughs> Charles, where do you? Charles, have you noticed? She's wearing a see-through blouse. <laughs> Don't look now. She's wearing. No, I noticed. You know the Vogue look is sweeping the country. That's right. <laughs> she plays an aging model in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and the Nielsen ratings are coming in on her new show. Yes. Dead. Dead. <laughs> Well, Murray, that's two for you. Two out of three so far, Murray. Now we come to you, Ethel. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Old Lady Perkins said, I keep filing the old codger under the letter D for dead, according to yes. Murray. Well, I guess he was a useless old codger. Yes. So she filed them under D for dead. D for dead. Right. Okay, three for Murray. Richard? Yes, I have to agree with Miss Perkins. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Gone but not forgotten. What do you say? Do you know about what's her name again? Old Lady Perkins? Old Lady Perkins. Yes. Well, the reason she had to file him under D is she said once last night and twice this morning before he died. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that Murray, that's, it's five for you. And that ain't bad either. Ooh. Now... We'll have your tiebreaker in a moment or so, but first, this. I don't All right, now we're in the middle of a tiebreaker. Murray's done pretty well with his. Match five of our celebrities. That means you've got a match five to tie, six to win. Another tiebreaker, and another tiebreaker. We could go on here. Jack said to the man at the pet shop, That's some watchdog you sold me. All he watches is blank. <laughs> Jack said to the pet man at the pet shop, that's some watchdog you sold me. All he watches is blank. Oh, there's so many alternatives. At least two good ones. Yes. 
Well, Charles, do you mind? You make your living here. Would you stay awake? <laughs> he yawned right in your face. I know it. Honestly, honey. Get to be a big Broadway star <laughs> director, and what can you do with him? Are you sure Helen's coming with us tonight? Yes, Helen is going to join us. <laughs> I'm sure. so furious. Yes. I may That's... not even answer this question. Uh, come on now, you've got to do it, or you won't get paid. Oh! Watch that get in the slot. Right. <laughs> okay, he's finished. Charles has an idea. Here we go with Gail Taylor. Jack said to the man at the pet shop, Hey, it's some watchdog you sold me. All he watches is blank. Someone throw water on her. <laughs> now, wait a minute. It's a tense moment for her. It's a tiebreaker, and she's got to think carefully before she responds. Shall I read it again? No. No. Um, I raise dogs, so I have to say all he watches is girl dogs. Girl dogs. All he watches is girl dogs. You think everybody up there is going to say no, girl I dogs? I think yeah. they are. Yeah. You've got a second answer, and just for the heck of it, what was your second choice if you had one? Robbers. All he watches is robbers? Huh? What was your well, third Well, I've heard choice? TV out there, Get so around I'm here. not going to use oh, it. Really <laughs> what was your third choice? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Okay, here we go. She says, all he watches is girl dogs. That's not true. He watches TV. TV. <laughs> Gotta match everybody. Brett? I get so tired of being the villainess. Villanette. I really do. I'm oh, the villainette. <laughs> I said all he watches is me. I'm me so is good, too. <laughs> so Murray wins the game. Come on down, Murray. Congratulations, Murray. Hang around here, we're going to say goodbye to Gail Taylor here. Listen, you shouldn't have been reluctant because, you know, we have no rules about don't use an answer from the audience. We ask them not yeah. to sing out their answers because sometimes it's they're okay. lousy answers. at the. So you've got to use your it's own okay. editorial judgment on uh, whether to use one or not. But Gail, where are you Look going, out! Gail? I'm not, I'm not finished talking to you. Gail, where are you going? What? Gail, come back here, Gail. Anyway, I uh, forgot, didn't point out that Gail won a total of $600, and it was a pleasure doing business with her. Now, will you stand on the adhesive tape there, and we'll do business <laughs> with Murray Metz here. <laughs> All right. Murray. That's Murray Metz. He's a snappy dresser, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. You pick out all your own clothes? No, I'm learning from you. I'm watching. You're learning from me. Oh, best dresser in town. Oh, well, I thank you very much. I wasn't fixing for that, but I thank you. Now, Murray, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Polly blank. Now, the answer that bunch gave most frequently is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the answer they gave second most frequently, it'd be $250 for you, and then the bottom one gets you $100. Now, let's see what kind of help we'll get from our celebrities here. Ethel, please. Oh. Curtain uh, up. Shut up. <laughs> you see, um, she likes to beat around the bush. <laughs> never likes to never come direct. out with it. Never, never direct, direct. Yeah. right. Uh, Polly want a cracker. Polly want a cracker is one. Richard. Polly Parrot. Polly Parrot. Because oh. all parrots are named Polly. Yes. Never boo a bird lover, please. <laughs> and Brett, please. What about Pollyanna? Pollyanna. <laughs> Pollyanna. <laughs> Polly want a cracker and Polly Parrot. Now, you might have had a, an idea, Murray, that appeals to you better than any of those. But it's entirely up to you. My, my idea is in passing now. I'm going to go with Polly want a cracker. Polly want a cracker. Yeah. Okay. Let's find out if that's up there. And if so, where? Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Polly Bergen. How soon they forget. No one mentioned her at all. I haven't had anybody mention her in 10 minutes. What? Well, that's her married name. Her, her maiden name is Parrot. Oh, I see. 
I see. Okay. <laughs> Trying to bring her back. <laughs> We're looking for the answer that Ethel suggested. Polly want a cracker? Let's see if it's under the $250 number. Polly Ann is the answer that Brett gave you. All right, here's the last That's chance for Polly want a cracker for $500. Slide it, Earl. One, three. Congratulations there. Now you got $600. Good. Now, Murray, you're going to play for 10 times the $500 you've just won, which is $5,000. But before that amount can be credited to your account, you've got to match one celebrity exactly. I'm going to go with Richard. Please. Okay, Richard, give me a Of course, I gave him parrot, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stand there and face me. And I'll give it to you both, and if you're all set, here it is. It's worth $5,000. Blank split. S-P-L-I-T. Blank split. Well, he finished very quickly, Murray. Now it's up to you to give us an answer which you think will match his. What do you say to that? Blank split. I'm coming out with one I don't know if Richard will come with, and that's lickety split. Lickety split. I like that. I like that. The only that. idea that came to your head? That's the only idea that came to my head. The only idea that came to your head was lickety split. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's turn to Richard lickety split here and ask him very quickly like what his answer is and hope it matches because it's banana, banana, banana split. <laughs> banana split. Mm. You, what's that? That's a good answer. Yeah. You know, I couldn't think of anything other than banana split, and I'm surprised to hear a lickety split. What else is there? California split. California split. Movie, though, but I, banana's the most common. Banana split would be good. How about let's split? Well, let's I'm split. Gonna, yeah, let's I'm going to split and know that. Well, Murray, you've got your $600. In a little while, you're going to meet somebody else. But right now, we've got to meet this message for America. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> The applaud and the whistling is for the Brandenburg Concerto by Bach, we just heard, with the Vienna String Quartet. They were so oh, they were wonderful. What do you say? We say hello to Kathy Beardsley. <laughs> Kathy Beardsley. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Jean. Tell us about yourself. Well, I live in Montclair, California with my husband, Howard. I work in a department store, and he's on the Los Angeles Police Department. Yay. <laughs> and we like camping and bowling, and I like to take pictures, photography. That sounds very interesting. Some of us like camping here, too. Oh, uh, really? Yes. In Encino? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, we ask you to make a selection. B, please. B it is. Good luck to Kathy Beardsley. <laughs> Farmer Brown said, we just had an election on the farm for king of the animals. From now on, that animal over there, you see the one over there, will be known as your blank ship. <laughs> king of the animals, Farmer Brown said, just had an election on the farm for king of the animals. From now on, I that animal it. over there will be known oh, as I your blank ship. You don't even ship. have to go on with that. I've got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have the what? I bet it's the same. Don't you love it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. You got it. You got it. Every. Okay. <laughs> Kathy Beardsley, are you ready for us? Because we're ready for you. I hope so. Farmer Brown said we just had an election on the farm for king of the animals. From now on, that animal over there will be known as your blank ship. Your king ship? Well, I guess that's one possibility. <laughs> In a moment, you will see the error of your ways. <laughs> All right, Avery. Show you, and tell. Your bullshit. <laughs> okay, Brett. Bullshit. All right. <laughs> now, as a man of the theater, I expect you to enunciate clearly. Bullshit! <laughs> Trippingly on the yes, tongue, I pray darling, you. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be very quiet and say yes. bullshit. Okay. <laughs> That's four, Kathy. 
I'm not taking a chance. Bull. Okay. <laughs> Embarrassed. You're so embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? You're not gonna believe this. You mean you didn't say the uh, the definitive answer? You didn't do it? No, I didn't. You did. What other answer is there? Well, I said your cow ship. Your cow. <laughs> so there it is, and that's the way it goes. Now you've got a question coming, but not right now. Right now, we've got to do a little business with America. Tomorrow there'll be another class in enunciation. And <laughs> the same place here at Match Game 76. Join us then, won't you please? This is Gene Raven. Cheerio. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 76. A Mark Goodson, Bill Putman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next of most of the CBS stations. The program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Robert Hedges, Brent Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Play. As we play the star-studded Big Bunny Match Game 76. And now here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Raymond. Nice to see you again. Welcome. Let's have a brisk round of applause for the new kid on the block. Yes. Robert Hedges of Welcome Back, Potter. Well, thank you. It's your first time around here. Yes, I'm a rookie. I'm yes. a rookie. Now, you're going to have a good time. Oh, a very good time. You have a good time on your show? Always. Good. Always. Now, we, I'm going to ask Brett to do something. Would you well, just yeah. stand up, please, oh, and yeah. do your Bee Lily number oh, before yes. we go on here? I love just this. I haven't seen this. I'm going to have to do it down here, honey. I need space. Oh, you need this. space to do this it. All right. This is tricky, sweetheart. Watch this. Yes. Who says Bee Lily is dead? <laughs> Okay, are the two of you ready? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Ralph Goldsmith here is our current champ. He has won four thousand and fifty dollars. <laughs> now he's being challenged by Patty, who uh, had a couple of good rounds there and tied him in the game. And then we went to the tiebreaker, and she didn't do too good in the tiebreaker. You ain't got nothing showing there, Patty. I know. All right, now Ralph, when we come back from this commercial, your tie-breaking question will come along. And all you have to do is match one of our celebrities to win your fourth game. Come back and see what happens. Okay, here we go. This is the tiebreaker. Ralph, all you have to do is match one to break the tie and win your fourth game. Everybody plays. Hansel said to Gretel, That wicked witch is so ugly, even her blanks have warts. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Stephen. He has his metaphors mixed. He's got his conductor's hat. And his, I mean, his conductor's coat and his captain's hat. Why don't you try that with, instead of pearls, a big noose? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's I... awake today, which is a change. <laughs> Fanny, anytime you're ready. Ralph, Hansel said to Gretel, that wicked witch is so ugly, even her blanks have warts. Oh, boy. Even her boobs. <laughs> That's all I could think of. That's all I could think of. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> really? Maybe hope for Patty yet? Yes. <laughs> what a distressing thought. <sighs> I really didn't expect that answer to come. I thought, well, we'll see. Robert, what'd you say? Even her... Lips. Even her lips have warts. Okay. Okay. Uh, he, remember, he's an underprivileged kid. 
What do you say? But, uh, for one brief moment in time, I thought I had the definitive answer. You may. I said even her warts you have warts. You do war. indeed. That's it. Oh. Even her warts have warts. Even her warts have warts. What? They certainly do. Warts. Yes. Even her warts have warts. That's the definitive answer, Ralph. Even her warts have warts. What? Have you got the definitive yeah, answer? Yeah, she, uh, she was real warty. Yes, warts. even her warts have warts. Yes, yes. All right, Richard, you know... World War II. Oh, there's they another one. You know, we may go to another tie here, unless we get... Unless Fanny... Well, I must admit, I'm so sorry, I was shocked by Brett's display dancing with her jewelry that uh, all I could think of was clothes. Even her clothes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that would be That's the worst you've ever done. <laughs> Well, Patty Bradford got a reprieve. So now we go to a, a, another tie-breaking question for each of you. Patty, it's he your plays. choice again. You want B? Everybody plays. George said, Boy, is Ted's wife strange looking. When I first saw her, I thought she was his blank. When I first saw her, I well, thought she was his so wife. so many choices, sweetheart. George said, boy, is Ted's wife strange looking. When I first saw her, I thought she was his blame. How are you, honey bun? I'm all right. How are you, my oh, dear? Oh, I'm just wonderful, sweetheart. Did you get all over stimuli yes. when I did my pearl dance? That's right, yes. It was very exciting. <laughs> Woo! Ready for the big one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Here we go. <laughs> Put in the slot, Charles, and let's uh, not fiddle around anymore. <laughs> Captain Charles. Now, Patty, George said, boy, is Ted's wife strange looking. When I first saw her, I thought she was his blank. Dog. Dog is good. <laughs> Patty came up with a very good answer. Huh? There's such a nice line. She looked up, she said, Captain and Tennille is not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, you should feel very flattered. Very beautiful all you girl. want, but if this show starts to float, I'll be the only one that knows what to do. <laughs> you got enough in you to float. <laughs> okay. Patty's looking for the answer dog. When I first saw her, I thought she was his dog. Okay. I got a dog. Dog! Very good, Robert. All right, now we're rolling. Now, what, what do you say? What, what, what's another word for for dog? Or canine friend? Or some... or a house pet? Well, no, it could be a parakeet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too attractive, <laughs> Charles. I said his tattooed brother Al. His tattooed brother Al. Is that what you said? Yes, brother. That's a strange-looking wife, all right. When I first saw her, I thought she was his dog. What do you say, Ethel? Well, she was sort of an elderly-looking creature, so I said, thought he was his mother. His mother. Well, Patty, you've got one so far. Let's see if you get one from Richard. Well, I saw his mother, and she also was a dog. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Patty, that's two for you. my car. Yeah. Now, Fanny. Dog. Oh, that's three for you. So... At the last minute, you got a little reprieve there. Now, another one for you, Ralph, in a moment or so, but right now, this message for you. Here we go, Ralph. Ready? Yes. All right. This is your tiebreaker. Three to tie for the... That'll be the third tie. Or four to win, Ralph. Stan said, the food at that restaurant is so bad... Oh, I'll tell you, even the flies are blanking. Oh! <laughs> The food at that restaurant is so bad. Even the flies, flies are, are blanking. Oh, there are two answers. As I write this down, even as I write, that's I okay. Think of that's another good. One. Good. All right. Well, actually, it's, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Nobody under 30 knows oh. how to spell. That's right. <laughs> well, I know how to spell quite well. Okay, we know with Ralph Goldsmith. Huh. Stan said the food at that restaurant is so bad, even the flies are blanking. Dying. <laughs> I don't know if it was that bad, Ralph. <laughs> and this may be your swan song. 
You need three... Uh, a, to win. Three yeah. to win. Uh, 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 go ahead, Robert. It's a little vivid. Uh, puking. <laughs> You say barfing. Right? Barfing, yeah. yeah. Yes. Brett, what do you John, say? Don't get upset, sweetheart. It's a young people's word. Yeah. Oh, it is. You and I say something much more genteel. Yes. Like complaining. Complaining. <laughs> Ralph's looking for somebody who's expiring. I took my answer, Gene, from the sea. Yes. <laughs> Captain. Well, you know, like flounders. When you catch a, a flounder and it bites, it, 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 you say the flounders are what? Does anybody Biting. Running. Good. The flies were running. Flies were running. Oh. Well, right. it is of the sea. Yes. <laughs> Way He's, out at sea. Charles is going down for the third Keep time. It. Don't throw him a life raft. <laughs> Ralph, under any circumstance. You need. You have to match all three people on the bottom tier to uh, stay in the game. Now we're up to you. He's looking for the answer. Dying. Oh well, I cleaned up his puking instead throwing up. Okay, so that means Patty wins the game. What do you have? Good. Well, Ralph, you're going to be leaving here with $4,050. And our best wishes, and it was a pleasure meeting this sixth grade school teacher here, Ralph Goldsmith. So long, Ralph. And on the tape. Now, here we go, Patty. If you're all set, we'll just plow right on ahead and do it. We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Birth blank. Now, the answer they gave most often, remember, is worth $500 to you if you match it. If you match the middle one, you get $250, and then the third gets you $100. And three of our celebrities are permitted to suggest answers here and help you out a little bit. Richard, please. Birthday. Birthday, okay. Danny? Um, <clears throat> birth control. Okay. Brett, please. And Brett. I have two. Uh... That's nice, honey. Uh, I, I'm debating between that one and, and one that came to me out of the, uh, out of the right. I mean the blue. Uh, I, what about birth rate? Birth rate. You have birth day, birth rate, and birth control. You can choose one of those, or if you have a better idea, give us that. Like birthday. You like birthday. That seems like a reasonable good choice to me. We'll find out if it's up there. That's the one Richard gave you. Let's see if it's under... The $100 response. Birth place. Oh, that was a culture. That's a good group. one, too, now that I see it in person there. Let's see if birthday is under the $250 number. Birth control is one Fanny gave you. And here's the last chance for birthday. Hang on now. Here is the $500 number. Yes, you got it. Congratulations. That a girl. Now you got $600. Okay, Patty, you're up to 600. More important, you're going to play for 10 times that 500 showing up there, or $5,000. But to collect that, you've got to match one celebrity exactly. Oh, Richard, please. Okay, now swing around here and face me, and I'll get the $5,000 question, which goes... Are you thinking? Oh, I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Why? Oh, I'm scared. This is exciting. Oh. Okay. Drinking blank. D-R-I-N-K-I-N-G Drinking blank All right, Patty, he made up his mind very quickly Now we ask you to get your ESP going And give us the same answer he's already written on that card What do you say, drinking... Man? Drinking man? I'm a blank <laughs> He drew a blank on that one, yeah She drew a blank on that and said drinking man Because she had to say something, Richard Drinking what do you man? Say? Yes He's a drinking man? Mm. Oh, he was a drinking man, yes. You're a secretary to a congressman, aren't you? <laughs> you are, aren't you? I should have thought you would have said drinking man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was so foolish. I put drinking fountain. Yeah. Drinking fountain. What's another one, John? Drinking glass. Drinking problem? Drinking water. Drinking water, yeah. Oh, yes, of course. All right. Well, now, Patty, you're going to meet another player now. You've got your $600. That's yours. Let's welcome Richard Madden. Patty's certainly the kissingest lady we've had around here for a long time. 
didn't it's kiss. Oh, she did. Listen, you know you didn't kiss him when you won. I the won five hundred dollars. Go over there and kiss him while I talk to Richard. All right. All right. Yes. That's enough. Oh, oh, well, oh, well, really. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. Cut. Me today. In case she loses the next game there. Now, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Richard. Uh, tell us okay. where you're from and any other pertinent details you want to throw in. Okay. Uh, my wife and I live in Northern California, just outside of San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm a member of the world's oldest profession. What is that? Wait a minute. Hold I don't... <laughs> really? Oh, wait a minute. Now, let me just think. Let me just see what that would be. So is Fanny. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. Now, let's hear what Richard. What is let's that, hear what Richard? Richard has to say. I'm a salesman. You are a salesman. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do you? I sell fuses. Electrical, fuses. Electrical fuses. Electrical. Fuses. <laughs> right. Cart- the, cartridge the selling, types. The selling is the oldest profession. Yes, indeed. Yes, all yes. types. Right. Big ones, little ones. Okay. Or small ones. All right. <laughs> okay, Richard. Well, we'll start this game in a moment. We wish you the best of luck in a Thank moment you. or so. We'll start, but right now we've got to do a little business with America. Here it is. We're ready to begin this game. Here we go. A or B, Richard Madden? B, please. B. <clears throat> Here it is. New game. Dumb Dora was so dumb. <laughs> when she didn't have any toothpaste, she brushed her teeth with blank paste. <laughs> well, she didn't have toothpaste, she brushed her teeth with blank paste. Ace. Did you play tennis this morning? Yes, I did. Did you win? No, I lost. But they I probably cheated. No doubt. Otherwise, you would have won. But that seems to be prevalent in the country these days, I doesn't it? I just want you to know that, that I yes. finished first. That's oh, you did finish first. For the first oh, time in three years. years. Are they kissing? I couldn't say. He had to describe what he wanted to write on the card, and so I helped him out. There. Thank you. Okay. Look, Fanny's last. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fanny, you've got to learn how to All spin. right, here we go. Richard Madden. Dumb Dora was so dumb when she didn't have any toothpaste, she brushed her teeth with blank paste. Tomato paste. Tomato paste. That's pretty good, huh? Waste of time me asking you that question. <laughs> uh, Robert, what'd you say? Uh, we're a little off the wall here, but uh, glue paste. Glue paste. Glue paste. You, uh, mean, uh, you mean library glue. paste? Yes, uh, library yes. paste. Glue paste. What do you Please, say? Thank you. Now, that's not bad. If it's, not, it's not bad. It's not glue nor paste. No. There's no such thing as glue paste. No, there isn't. He meant library paste. He didn't say it, though, did he? I know it. Now, if that man had said library, then yes. this man would have been would in have trouble. And, they, and the judge would have gone like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you would have gotten a buzzer. I didn't match you either. Oh, <laughs> after all that? <laughs> yeah. Honey, I used to paper walls, and I said wallpaper paste because it's the same color. Wallpaper paste? Okay. He's looking for tomato paste, Charlie. Wallpaper John. paste. Wallpaper paste. <laughs> Any tomato paste from you, my dear? No, no tomato paste. I said gluing paste. Gluing paste. Yeah. Library paste, I suppose, is what you all had in mind there. Richard? That was the word. Library, Library paste. paste. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too. Oh. The white stuff that the kids oh, white use. White Right. And you? Library. Library. It looks a little like toothpaste. I think that's why they said that. But your answer was terrific, wasn't it? It was. Yes. I hope you'll do as well. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> At the cannibal restaurant, they don't get their meat delivered by a butcher. Instead, their meat is delivered by a blank. <laughs> oh, I have a total At the cannibal answer. restaurant. Crazy about it. What? At the cannibal restaurant, they don't get their meat delivered by a butcher. Instead, their meat is delivered by a blank. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Okay. Oh. All right. Charles isn't even ready. Now, everybody, okay. Everybody finished down here. Charles is writing one answer, so I'll walk over here to Patty. Ready? Oh, dear, he's drawing pictures again. 
At the cannibal restaurant, Patty, they don't get their meat delivered by a butcher. Instead, their meat is delivered by a... Hearse? You know, the... A hearse. That... Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like that answer. I don't like the question. What did you say, Robert? Patty who? What was it like? What was it? Bradford. A hearse. A hearse. Oh, Pat her- uh, Patty said, oh, Patty hearse. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, I got this visualization of cannibals and shrinking this, so I said, uh, a head. Oh, head shrinkers. Yes, but yeah. Yeah. those people out there are laughing. Yeah. It's cool, right? Yeah. I don't think too many of them are laughing, yeah. Robert. What do you say? Do you know that they, I say, they, Richard and Patty look like brother and sister. Look at them. They do. Thank you. Yeah, they do I said, and I don't, I don't write me any letters because I have an awful lot of mail to answer already and it's very hard on me. I said they were delivered by a deranged missionary. <laughs> okay. What'd you say, Charles? I said a busload of unknowing tourists. A busload of unknowing tourists. They didn't know what they were in for, eh? They, um, instead, their meat is delivered by a hearse, according to Patty. What do you say? I'm going with Tennille. I said missionary. Missionary. <laughs> All right. Looking for a hearse here. Right, judges, <laughs> keep an open mind. I said funeral parlor. That would be delivered by a hearse. Thank you. Okay. Now, Fanny, what came to, what came to your mind? I, I don't want to have any arguments with the judges. Please. I want this to match. Really. I promise I'll do anything. <laughs> That's two for you. Okay. There's your round one. Two to nothing in favor of the champ. Round two coming along, but first this. We're ready, but we're not ready. We have to say goodbye to you now. Can you put everything in cold storage until next time? Yes. yes. Good. All right, two to nothing to score, and then round one, we'll pick up with round two when we all get together. Well, how was it, your first trip out? Oh, it was very good. Is it easier or harder than Welcome Back, Cotter? It's uh, a lot easier. It is easier. A lot easier. <laughs> well, I'm crazy delighted. about Not it. Not very demanding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're crazy about him? Sure, he's under Listen, 30. He's yeah. Watch <laughs> Ethel and Family Feud. Oh, yes. She's not in it. It's my show, but I just wanted to mention it. <laughs> oh, all right. Chief yeah. Baby Deer, join us next time on Match Game 76. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Max Game 76, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production. Get ready to match the stars. Robert Hedges, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 76. And now, here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Ryder! Listen, beautiful. thank you. Whatever happened to the Yacht Club that boys? Is beautiful. <laughs> you know that you work for the Hyatt House. No, I don't work for the Hyatt House, and I'm not the bellboy. Are you sure? All right, everybody got all the. With that all your jacket, jacket, I'd like to do oh. my rendition of one of Ethel's songs. Oh, great. Oh, gee. You'll never get away oh, from me. Oh, shut up. You're my tall ass tree. Okay. I wish you'd do it again. Cut. Out of your system. Yes. <laughs> that costs Ethel work every time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hey, please She's don't. She's about to replace me, you know. That. Let's say hello to Patty Bradford and Helen Dillon. <laughs> Patty's our current champ. She has a total of $4,650. Now she's going to be challenged by Helen Dillon, whom we welcome and meet for the first time, and ask her to tell us about herself. Okay, I'm a teacher from San Diego. Yeah. A teacher <laughs> from San Diego. Yes, I uh, teach in San Diego for the San Diego school system. And yeah, what grade do you teach? Uh, kindergarten. Oh. oh, I bet the kids love you. I sure love them. That's good. And uh, are you married? No, single. Hmm. Looking. <laughs> you are looking. Oh, sure. Well, give us, uh, tell us what you have in mind. Maybe we can help out. 
Oh, uh, so tall? Yeah. No, just a working man. Just a working man. All right. Anybody out there with a job? <laughs> <laughs> that lets us out of working. Talk man. to us. Okay. We'll start this game in a moment or so, but right now we want to do a little business with you, America. This is it. We are ready to begin. Now, Helen, it's up to you, A or B? B. B it is. Good luck to you. Here we go. Tanto, say. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Last night, we run out of firewood, but me keep fire going. Me throw blank on fire. Mm. Mm. Me throw blank on fire. There are a couple of really terrific cows. Well, put one terrific one down. Okay, you Gotta say, right last cow. night we ran out of firewood, but me keep fire going. Me throw blank on fire. That's Tonto, right? Tonto is speaking. Sure. sure. Good old Tonto. Okay. All right. Okay. Helen Dillon. Tonto say, come on, Charles. Okay. Tonto say, hmm, last night we run out of firewood, but me keep fire going. Me throw blank on fire. Long Ranger. Good for you. <laughs> Robert, what'd you say? Kimosabe, Long Ranger. Kimosabe oh. is the Long Ranger. Very good. Can I throw a Lone Ranger on the fire? Anybody who would put up with a room full of five-year-olds deserves a winner, the Lone Ranger. There you are. Charles? Lone Ranger. <laughs> oh, Lone Ranger. Oh, you I couldn't think of a thing. Well, once in a while you no, drop blank on this show, so you thing. just said log. That's all. Couldn't okay, be. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You we have, have to, to show it, otherwise they won't believe it. Oh, okay. a legend in we'll a long time. Think of a thing. Yes. That's it's very good. That would it. keep a fire happens going. Happens to me, happens to him, but I don't know. He may have something. Have you got something? I got a Lone Ranger. Ranger. You got a Lone Ranger. I told you, Helen. She's looking for a Lone Ranger, my dear. Yes, I was say? wondering before we land, could you uh, call ahead and get me a rental car? Yes, I oh. will, of course. <laughs> the Lone Ranger? Yeah. <laughs> Actually... You'll want the economy model, won't you? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So, Helen, that's five for you, right? It's a tough act to five. follow. Five. <laughs> it is a tough act to follow, but you have to follow it, Patty, and this is your first round one. Very unusual, Helen. We congratulate you. Dumb Dora is so dumb. Oh, Let me tell you, when she got a job as a stripper, she pasted her pasties on her blanks. That's how dumb Dumb Dora is. Dumb Dora is so dumb. She got a job as a stripper. She pasted her pasties on her blanks. I got it. Don't like that answer, Stephen. All right. Cute. Now, we'll come over here and talk to Patty. Dumb Dora, so dumb. When she got a job as a stripper, she pasted her pasties on her blanks. Eyes. Eyes. Right. Just glued him right to her eyes. What'd you say? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We got two eyes. Oh, yeah. All right. Old one is finally gone. What do you say? Get ready for this one. <laughs> well, now well, there are other choices. It, of course there are. There, I thought she was really dumb. She pasted her pasties on her car. <laughs> now, I said she pasted her pasties on her blanks. Uh, okay. Oh, pardon me. Cars. Oh, of course. <laughs> that makes a winner out of it. What do you say, Charles? The correct answer, of course, Charles. Okay. That's five to two is the score at this moment. Two for Patty. She's uh, so dumb, she pasted her pasties on her... And her boobs. Oh, really? <laughs> I always put that's mine That's the correct there. answer. Well, that's better than logs. Yes, it's <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're improving. <laughs> They're not much better. <laughs> oh. Well, the eyes have it. The eyes have it. see the score. Now, Fanny, we're she up to you. She pasted them on her logs. No, <laughs> her eyes. Pasted on her eyes. Five to four, the score at the end of round one. And now this message for you. Pay attention, dear friend. Here we go. 
Round two coming up. Helen Dillon, it's up to you. A. A. This is only for one person. Are you ready? <laughs> now, get it right this time, honey. <laughs> now, Ethel, here it is. I know. Ernie said, then bring... No, don't say that to me. Oh, no. <laughs> Fred. Can't you change the yes, name? Right. Yeah, Freddie. Fred. Harold said. How's right, that? that's one I missed. Harold said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that she's married to Ernie Borgnine. I, the reason she laughed is because she was married to Ernest Borgnine for 20 minutes one year. <laughs> among others. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. Seemed like 20. Yeah, <laughs> only seemed like 20. It's seemed like right. 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Ernie said. That brain surgeon must have worked in a laundry. During the operation, he blanked my brain. During the operation. He said that brain surgeon must have worked in a laundry. During the operation, he blanked my brain. Think about that, Helen. You don't write, sweetheart. You don't write. It says... Listen, says, I know you're a sweat says, hog and you can't write. read, but it says up there, don't write. Haven't you learned that much? If it said jump, would I jump? Yes. <laughs> okay, you are oh. ready. Helen Dillon, Ernie said that brain surgeon must have worked in a laundry. During the operation, he blanked my brain. Washed. Washed my brain. Brain is a perfectly good answer. She's looking for the word washed to match yes, you. Yes, how about me? I said washed. You said that. Yeah. Let's hear it for the little lady. Bravo, Bravo. Bravo. So, Business. All right. Oh. Are you ready, Patty? I'm ready. Now, you know what you have to do? Mm-hmm. Get two. You got to get two to tie. Mm-hmm. All right. Every, let's see, Brett plays. And you play, just you and Brett. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Frida said, Frida said, my husband is very safety conscious. He even put a seatbelt on our blank. (laughs) My husband is very safety conscious. He even put a seatbelt on our blank. Mm, Ethel is ready already. Oh, okay, I'm ready too. All right. Patty Bradford. Frida said, My husband is very safety conscious. He even put a seatbelt on our blank. Bed. Bed. All right, she's looking for two beds. Well, I'm trying Twin to make beds. up for my last answer. I went right with it and said bed. Okay. Looking for another bed here. See, now, That's... these questions are more in, in the category that I understand. I said bed. Oh. Uh-huh. So we got a tie. You had to match two of them, and you did. All right, so when we get a tie, we've got to go to a tiebreaker, and the first thing we have to do is uh, throw the switch and uh, make all that go to blank. And now we've got one tiebreaker for each of you. The one who matches the most will be the winner. Helen, you go first. B. B, all right. B it is for Helen. Got a little riddle for you. What has feathers and is as big as a whale? The answer, Moby Blank. What has feathers... And is as big as a whale. The answer, Moby Blank. What has feathers? Feather. Feathers. Oh. See, it's a riddle. Oh. It has feathers, and it's as big as a whale. Yeah. And the answer is Moby Blank. See, something with feathers. Feather. Big as a whale. I don't know. Everybody ready? I'm no, I'm not anywhere near ready. You don't have any ideas at all? No. no I not. ordered in Manhattan about a half an hour ago, <laughs> living at this table all the time. Uh, let me see. Feathers okay. and as big as a whale. Feathers and as big as a whale. The answer, Moby Blank. Moby well, he's Blank. He's finished. And he's dumb and he's finished. And you're supposed to be smart, you're not finished. Okay, and I'll just put down <laughs> something, I guess, is the only answer to that. <laughs> All right. All right. Hello there. Okay. I like that question. Too. Nobody likes that question? Nice no. question. You don't like that one either? No. It's a I riddle. Like... It says, what has feathers and as big as a whale? The answer, Moby Blank. Bird. Moby Bird. She didn't like it either. Nobody likes that question. I love that 
question. You do? Robert, I'd what'd like you to say? adopt that well, question. Everyone is in for a surprise. Just keep your cameras ready. <laughs> go ahead. Here we go. Moby Bird. <laughs> Moby Bird. I don't understand it. Brett. Darling, I have no objectivity about my own brilliance, do I? I said bird. Oh. <laughs> okay, child. <laughs> Three birds. I'm not even going to show it. I'm not even going to show it. You have to show it. Those are the rules. Moby Dick. <laughs> Moby Dick. Okay. okay, that was a real it. whale, but he had no feathers. Moby what do you say is as big as a whale has feathers? Moby Chicken. Moby Chicken. Well, that's not a bad That's a bird. It's not a bird, eh? No. What's... Oh, it's probably a... That's a bird. Oh, what probably you Probably a Andy? mammal. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> we and this to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Could I have that for my bedroom yeah. wall, that question? Yes, of course. Bird. Bird. <laughs> Four for her. <laughs> Moby Duck. Was the answer that uh, they had. Moby Duck? Well, I was the closest. Then. Yes, Moby, Moby Chicken. chicken. Closest to Moby Duck. Yeah, um, Big Canary. Oh, Mo- Moby That's Canary. I'm the Dicky Bird. Yeah, right. Gloria said to the new girl, <laughs> "Never get into the elevator. Into the same elevator as Harold, because when Harold sees a girl, he doesn't take off his hat. He takes off his blank." <laughs> Get into the same elevator with Harold because when he sees a girl, he doesn't take off his hat, he takes off his blank. Never say hello to Harold. No, never get into the same elevator as Harold. Right. When Harold sees a girl, he doesn't take off his hat, he takes off his blank. I think my mind's gone. Okay. Already. Already. All right, Brett. <laughs> hello, Patty. Hi. Girl, I said the new girl. Never get into the same elevator as Harold. When Harold sees a girl, he doesn't take off his hat. He takes off his... Clothes. His clothes. Okay. Clothes, she said. Clothes, she said. Pants, the man said. Well, no, that's not a man. Ah, nuts to you. (laughs) What did you say? I said he just took off his toupee. His toupee. Tipped his toupee. There's a... (laughs) Hello there. There's a word to tip your toupee to. <laughs> I won't. Uh, no, I just. It should, I said uh, pants. You said pants. All right. That means Helen Dillon wins the game. What do you have? Pants. Clothes. So we'll get to you after we say goodbye to Patty, who's going to leave here with a bundle of money, a grand total of four thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Patty Bradford. While she's spinning off, we'll have you watch this message. Here we go. This little lady has just won hundred dollars. It's her first game. How do you feel? Nervous. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Take a deep breath. Okay. See how calm you are now? Sure. Uh, Helen. <laughs> I can't con her into it, can I? There. You are feeling calm. Look into my eyes. You are feeling calm. You are relaxed. You are falling asleep. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> oh, all right. Only trying. <laughs> you are awake, Richard. Where are you? Uh, my answer is... No, no, I'll tell you when. Yeah. Oh, we Sorry. pulled a recent studio audience and got their best response to this. Slide it, Earl. Earl. Earl's he went to sleep too. as well. I, he, I, my charm must have worked on him. He's sleeping in there. Earl, are you in there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Well. <laughs> Do your, your thing, Earl. Shower. Thank you. You don't have to get angry with me. It says, love me blank. Love me blank. <laughs> oh. Okay. The answer that bunch gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. <laughs> 250 if you hook up with that middle one and 100 for the bottom answer. Now, Helen, three of our celebrities are permitted to suggest answers. Brett. I have two. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Uh, 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 love, me, uh, love me, love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's her answer. 
in all fairness. That's about the same as long. In all fairness, it is the number one position, and that's hardest. Yes, right. <laughs> Richard. Love me or leave me. Right. Love me or leave me. Wait, Benny. Yes. Okay, honey. Why'd you say that? <laughs> Love me tender. That's when I gave up. Oh, you got love me tender, love me, love my life, love me or leave me. I'll go love me or leave me because that's what I thought about too. Really? Yes. The audience screamed and hollered and hooped when she said love me tender. You think it's going to be tender? Yeah! Okay, you stand on the adhesive tape there and I'll find out what we got going up here. She says love me or leave me is what she wants. Let's see if it's up there under the $100 number. Love me, love me not. That's what you do with daisies. Bing, bing, bing. Crosby, right. Crosby, Crosby. Yes. Uh, let's see if it's under the $250 number. You got it. Congratulations. What do you think's on that big one there? Love me, Tinder. Would you like to change your mind now? Okay. Slide it, Earl, please. Love me, Tinder. Audience is right all along there. Well, listen, Helen, you've got another 250 Gives you a grand total of 350 at this moment, and that's not bad. But more important, you're going to play for 10 times that amount or $2,500. Now, you have to match one of our celebrities exactly in order for us to send you the check. Okay. Which I'll one try. will it be? I'm going to try Robert. You're going to try who? Robert? We don't have a Robert there. Yes, oh, yes, we, we do, do have, have a Robert. Robert. <laughs> well, who do you want? Um, you're pointing... Richard. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> She's... Uh, it surprised me because she, she looked right at Richard and she says, I'll try Robert. Oh, I'm going to change my name. I don't want to embarrass him. Okay. Just call you, me Bob. Yes. Swing around here. You face me if you would, please. <laughs> Listen carefully. It's worth 2500 You ready, Robert? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Are you ready, Robert? Oh, certainly, Richard. Okay. <laughs> here it is. Blank Trout. T-R-O-U-T. Blank Trout All right, now he's finished. We ask you to give us an answer which you think will match his. Have you got your ESP going to I hope Dawson so. over there? I hope so. What do you say, Blank Blue Trout? trout. What is it? What? <laughs> What'd you hear somebody say rainbow? Rainbow trout? Somebody in the audience just hollered that yes. out? Well, you've said your answer, blue trout. I don't think I've ever seen a blue trout. I never <laughs> There is a thing, but... All right, Richard, she says blue trout will match you. <clears throat> I had this for dinner two nights ago, brook trout. Brook <laughs> trout. You know, we are clowning around about uh, Bob and Robert and all that. There's a, a very well-known uh, CBS correspondent yeah. named Bob Trout. Robert Trout. Robert Trout, Robert trout? Yeah. yes. Well, now listen, you got your 350, and you will meet another player in a moment or so, but right now we've got this message for our viewers. Listen, you are all splendid. Thank you. you. And uh, I shall look forward to seeing your beautiful personalities here on our next session. Thank you. And we'll look forward uh, to seeing uh, Bob there on uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. He's uh, one of those uh, beautiful sweat hogs there. That's really a marvelous show. Join us next time for Match Game 76. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 76. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production. Get ready to match the stars. Robert Hedges. Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flag as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Rivers. Johnny Olsen, friends. Got a 
good bunch out there. Huh? No whistling, please. It's going to damage the cameras and my timpani. And oh, it's terrible there. But we welcome you and, uh, and thank you for your enthusiasm. And shall we uh, sell a thousand shares or buy a thousand shares? Yeah, I'm wearing sell. that banker suit here. Certainly this are. is Brett, what's her name? You know all her. And there's Hello, Charles Bob. Nelson Riley, who looks so neat and chic. Those are two regulars. Not from the this waist is, down, he does. <laughs> this is the third regular of the. I'm irregular. Yo, he's one of the triumvirate. There's Fanny, who's wearing a picture of... This is a picture of Brett when she was in her early 40s. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's oh. smile will be on the other side of your face. And this lady, you know, I would have given anything to have seen you do some of the great shows you've done on Broadway. Did you see any of them? Oh, I saw them, some of them, but there's so many more that I want to see. Those early Cold Porter shows. Well, just, then, I'll have, to, I'll have to... Come to my dressing room and sing all I'll, the songs. I'll audition there. for you. Dude. Okay. Yeah. Now, Robert Hedgie's here. Uh, this is... Yes. Uh, yeah, we're yes. delighted to have... No him. longer a rookie. No longer? No, no longer. that's right. He's a veteran here from uh, Welcome Back, Cotter, and we welcome you. Now, let's say hello to our players, Jim Kelly and Sharon Lantyser. Now, we'd like to find out something a little about each of you. We'll begin with you, Sharon. Please tell us where you're from and all that sort of thing. Well, I'm happily married in Selmar, California. I have two children. Can one be happily married in Selmar, California? Very. Okay. <laughs> right. I have two children, a little boy, Dwayne, he'll be five, and a little girl named Melissa. Okay, we welcome you. Wish you the best of luck. And you, sir? Thank you. I'm from Olana, South Carolina. I'm yes. a environmentalist with the State Environmental Quality Control Office, and uh, I'm out here attending USC at the Environmental Management Institute. Well, I admire you for choosing that <laughs> line of work. I mean, that's wonderful. <laughs> Need more guys like Jim Kelly in this world? <laughs> now, here on Match Game PM, we'll give each of you three chances to match as many of our celebrities as you can. And the one who scored the most matches at the end of the third round will be the winner. We'll go on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $10,000. All right, here we go. Sharon, you make a selection here if you would, please. You may have A or B. B, please. All right, we are off and running. Poor Mildred. Oh. Oh. What happened? She sneezed so hard, she blew her blank off. Oh, no! Yes. Isn't that a calamity? Mildred sneezed so hard she blew her blank off. Blew her blank off. Right. Blew her blank off. Okay. Everybody down here ready, and you're still considering. What? Oh, oh. It. okay. Okay. R all right. Sharon, here we go. Poor Mildred, Sharon. Okay. She sneezed so hard she blew her blank off. Nose. Her nose. She blew her nose off. You may get a nose or two here, but uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, what she think? blew so hard, she blew her nose off. Oh, she did. Yes, oh. she did. <laughs> and you were all in her. Holy mackerel. What do you say? I say, I think they're both crazy. I said she blew a little rug off. Her rug off? That's your little toot. You're wearing your going, achoo. Okay. Fanny's happened many times. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Charles. Hello, darling. I'll pay for the nurse. I've told you that before. <laughs> as usual, Jean, do the line with me. As, yes, as usual, usual on the nighttime, nighttime show, show, I, I have, have the correct, correct answer. answer. That's correct. No. Okay. <laughs> Two for Sharon. Poor Mildred sneezed so hard she blew her nose off, is what she says. What do you say? Well, she had an upturned nose, so she blew her hat off. Blew her hat off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What did she blow off, Richard? What happened to poor I'm, Mildred? I had a nasty chill. I matched uh, Brett. Wig. <laughs> Wig, yes. It'll get That's to That's a you. horrible feeling. Yes. All right. mm. So hard she blew her blank off. Now, we're looking for a nose. A kiss. What's this lady's name? Mildred. Mildred, right. This happened to her, and, and a lot of people, she lived in the valley, you know. Oh, she And when did. it happened, a lot of people said it must have been a sonic boom, because she blew her bra off. Oh, yeah. I want that to stop. Shoo! 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 That's how the conga was invented. <laughs> okay, now, Jim Kelly, we got one for you. Don't think we're going to neglect you. Fred said, I'm not putting my money in that bank. On the wall, there's a picture that says, 
our founder, and it's a picture of blank. Wait a minute, sweetheart. I missed the beginning there Fred somewhere. Said, I, went I off am to Bermuda. not putting my money in that bank. On the wall, there's a picture that says our founder, and it's a picture of <gasps> Jeepers Crow. <laughs> oh. Okay. Fred, we're okay. going to start without you. Okay, go ahead. Fred said, I'm not putting my money in that bank. On the wall, there's a picture that says our founder, and it's a picture of Hoover. Hoover, President Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> a picture of our founder, and it's a picture of President. Uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> no, he doesn't mean J. Edgar Hoover. I don't know. A picture of our founder, and it's a picture of blank. Our what do you founder. say? The man who stonewalled it all. Nixon. Yes. The man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Woo! I'm only kidding, Jim. The man who is no longer in the WH, Nixon. Is okay. that a win? No. <laughs> oh, we're looking for Herbert Hoover. Have you seen him? As a matter of fact, I knew him. Did you really? Yes. He used to live at the Waldorf Astoria Towers, and I was the young male boy who delivered his mail. And these memories do come back, but it's true, you can check on it, and I have pictures. I'm crying already. <laughs> well, it was less flamboyant than her answer. Uh, the Nixon Savings Bank of San Clemente. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On the wall is a picture that says our founder, and it's a picture of blank. Oh, which is, it was a Chicago bank, so there was a picture of Al Capone. Al Capone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They really well, shouldn't worry because I heard him say it out loud. He said, uh, I am not a crook. <laughs> Keep the letters coming in, folks. The letters. Send them all to me. Now, Fanny, what do you say? I say, I'm not going to name names. I don't care to get in trouble. I said a convict. A convict. <laughs> So there we are at the end of round one. Score is two to nothing, fair of Sharon. And uh, round two coming up later, but first this. Now we go to round two. I push a button, reveal our round two questions. Sharon, since you're ahead, we'll ask you to go first. Be again, please. Be again. Two people do not play. Robert and Charles do not play. The rest of you, if you would, please. Yes, sir. The Sheik said, the Sheik said, my life is good and it is bad. The good part is I have 100 gorgeous wives. Now, the bad part is every one of them has a blank. <laughs> Life is good Wait a minute bad. now, come here. You sound just like Turan Bay. That's Life a good is good. Question. The good part is I have 100 gorgeous wives. The bad part is every one of them has a blank. You were doing an East Indian thing. Well, they're very close oh, to North, North Africa. Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm? Okay. okay. <laughs> See you on All right. Hmm? Now we come to Sharon. Sheik said, my life is good and it is bad. The good part is I have 100 gorgeous wives. The bad part is every one of them has a... Mother? A mother. <laughs> Everybody has a mother somewhere. What do you say, Brett? Mother. Yeah, I said that every one of them had a chastity belt locked. <laughs> or a locked chastity belt. Either way. <laughs> There'd be none of that. Charles? Charles ain't oh, playing. Yeah, Charles ain't yeah. playing. I don't need Who's the airtime. Yes. That's <laughs> what's up next. Yeah. Every one of them has a... Has a cold. Has a cold. Yeah. A cold, yeah. That would make them unavailable. Sounding like the King family or the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, in one voice they said, Not tonight, dear. I have a headache. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's the answer. Buffalo went up nine points. Right. Uh, what do you say? Do you say that's the answer? Well, that's the definitive answer, isn't no, it? No, no, What is no. the definitive answer? Mother. Oh, mother. <laughs> the definitive answer is not always the winning answer. Oh, I thought it was. Are you ready, Jim? Ready. Okay, listen to this. <laughs> Lola, the stripper, said. Oh. She said, tonight, I could hardly concentrate on my dancing. <laughs> All during my act, this guy in the first row was blanking my feet. Could hardly concentrate on my dancing. This guy in the first row was blanking my feet. 
Okay. Okay. Now, we'll come over here to Jim Kelly. Lola the stripper said, tonight I could hardly concentrate on my dancing. All during my act, this guy in the first row was blanking my feet. Kissing. Yeah. Kissing my feet. <laughs> That would be rather distracting, wouldn't it? Yes. What do you say? How you say, how you say pulling. Pulling my feet. Pulling his right. feet. She was tripping all over the place, isn't there? What do you say? I say, if you want to make it twinkle while you shake it, kiss it. Kiss it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I know it's difficult. No, I right. thought lightning must would go strike twice for him, so I said, Herbert Hoovering. Herbert so Hoovering. I said, well, Jane, do the line, because yes. do the yes. line. Yes, uh, since this is a nighttime show, no I sense. naturally... Just I just on. on. the nighttime show, I give the perfect answer. Kissing. Tickling. Okay. This guy in the first row was tickling my feet. tickling? No, no he kissing. kissing. He said kissing. Oh, well, sometimes the wind when the door is open... <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> and tickling is a very good answer. Probably the best. What do you say? She kept leaning over and kissing. Kissing. Of course, not me to do. What do you think of that? I think it's pretty good. That's kissing. Boy, now three to three. A kiss or a tickle? <laughs> I'm sorry, a tickle. A tickle, yeah, okay. sorry. So we got three to three there. That's the end of round two. We go to round three here. The score is tied since Sharon went first last time. Jim, will ask you to go first this time. Stick A, please. A, okay, here we go. Brett does not play. Richard does not play. Ethel does not play. The rest of you, if you would, please. Susie said, my business is picking up. You see, I'm a blank. <laughs> oh, now you see, I never got the good questions. Uh, help him out. Okay. <laughs> my sure. business is picking up. You see, I'm a blank. Perfect answer. Right, sweetheart, isn't she the cutest old thing? Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, Jim, Susie said, my business is picking up. You see, I'm a blank. I'm a hooker. A hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Is you the hooky or the hooker? I'm the hooker. You're the hooker. <laughs> now we come to you, sir. As usual on the nighttime show, I don't <laughs> get them always right. Hey. <laughs> You're the maid. <laughs> Maid. The maid? Picking up. You see him a maid. The well, maids pick up after you in a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. All right, Fanny, it's your turn. Yes. What do you say? I say we don't say hooker. In what do we sense. say? We say good time girl. Good time girl. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say down south, Jim? We don't speak about it too much. Oh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> He said, we don't speak about it too much. No, we don't, do we, darling? All right. We don't talk about it. Sharon, here we go. When the president went to the first baseball game of the season, instead of throwing out the first ball, he threw out the first blank. Got it. Brett plays. Ethel and Richard. The president went to the first baseball game of the season, instead of throwing out the first ball, he threw out the first blank. I'm finished. Come on, Ethel. Dear. Oh, I know I'm slow. Sharon, when the president went to the first baseball game of the season, instead of throwing out the first ball, he threw out the first blank. Baseball player? The first baseball player. That may get okay. you in a little trouble, Sharon. We'll find out now. <laughs> now, let's see. You play, I yes. Play. You do not. I pass. You pass. You don't play, All I right. play. You're in. Well, honey, he threw out the first lady. The first lady. Good. Good one, right? Wow, that's great. Yeah. I'm going to hide mine again. You're going to hide yours again? Yeah. You're ashamed all of it. No, no. Man, with all the trouble that's going on, Marge, you threw out the first senator. The first senator, <laughs> I see. Okay. Oh, well, that means Jim Kelly wins the game. First bat there. Congratulations. All right, hang around here for a moment or so while we say goodbye to Sharon. We've got some gifts for you together Thank with you. our thanks for being here on Match Game. It's been fun. Sharon Landkaiser. While she's spinning off, we're going to spin these messages for you. Then come back, see how old Jim Kelly does. All right, old Jim, you ready? Ready. Here we go. It's time for the Big Bunny Super Match where you can win over $10,000. Now, to do that, we have two audience matches for you. And whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10, okay? 
Here we go. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Gum blank. Now, the answer that group gave most frequently is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the second most frequently given response, you get $250. Then the third gets you $100. Now, we are permitted to solicit responses from three of the six celebrities, one at a time. Shrub Fanny. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I believe, Jim, I think I'll say uh, gumball. Gumball. All right. Richard? But I always wanted to be a gumshoe. A gumshoe, right. Okay. Charles? There's a saying which, it, it's a very rare saying, but in the third place it might come in handy. Uh... <laughs> Gummed to death. Charles! Charles! Charles, tell us you're only kidding. Oh, With yes. that perfectly dreadful response. Of course he's only kidding. Aren't you, sweetheart? Oh, really, Charles? You're kidding, All you right, Charles? I'll drop another answer. Gum, what's the matter? Gum drop. That was my... <laughs> uh, okay. Gumdrop, gumshoe, and gumball. You want one of those? You may have a better idea. Let's go with gumball. Yeah! You want gumball? Yeah. Gumball. All right, let's find out if we got a gumball up there. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Gumshoe. That's a detective that Richard tried to day. foist off on you. All right, sweetheart. Now let's see if we got a gumdrop, uh, a gumball under the $250 response. Yes, we do indeed got a gumdrop, but we are looking for a gumball. <laughs> I slither and slide around there pretty good sometimes there. All right, you think it's going to be up there? Yeah! Okay, Earl, slide it. Yeah! I'll give you $500. Congratulations, Jim. That's $500. I mean, the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. Now, we're going to see how much more you can win with our second audience match. Slide it, Earl. Blank. Downs. Now, remember the three numbers apply, and let's see what responses we get from our celebrities. Fanny again. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm going to try to go with a person. <laughs> Other than the things I've been going with. No, uh... -huh. Uh, <laughs> Q Downs. Okay. All right. Richard? Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs. Product. U Downs. Are we, uh, Fanny said we that. We already did that. We, we already did it. that one? Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, well since you must have another one because you. Oh! Yes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Something yes. just came to you, did it, Robert? They're the basic ups and downs. Ups and downs. <laughs> we got ups and downs, Churchill Downs, and Hugh Downs. That's the choice. Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs. <laughs> Churchill Downs. <laughs> well, let's see. Now he may fool you. He may fool you. He's, he's got me fooled, I'll tell you that. Let's see if we got a Churchill Downs out of the $100 number. Hugh Downs is down at the bottom. But that's where he's always been. I'm only kidding, Hugh. <laughs> I love you, Hugh. Let's see, we got Churchill Downs under the $250 number. Yes, we do. Congratulations, Hugh. Another $250. All right, just for the heck of it, let's slide the top one and find it. What's that? Ups and... That was Robert. That was Robert's answer, wasn't it? Ups and downs. You want another $250? Multiply by that 10, makes $2,500. Add it to the previous $5,000, give you $7,500. Now, to collect the $7,500, you've got to match one celebrity, and this has to be an exact match. Fanny. Fanny. Mm. All right, get ready, my dear. You stay, swing around, stand on the adhesive tape and face me. And this is it, worth $7,500. Cover blank. C O V E R blank cover blank. Okay, Fanny's ready. Now we ask you to get your ESP going over to her and come up with the same answer which she's written on that card. Cover. 
Cover sheet. Cover sheet. All right. Herbert Hoover always yes. wore one. <laughs> All right, Fanny. He says cover sheet will match you for seven thousand five hundred dollars. What do you say? I said cover up. Cover up. You had something like that in mind, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Cover okay. up. Cover girl. What are some of the others? Like cover girl is a good one. Cover okay. Yeah. You've got a total of Jim of, of seven thousand. I don't know what you got. You got $750, Jim, and that ain't bad. Now you hurry right back after this message. Join us next week when we'll have a lot more fun with my new mouth on Match Game PM. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive a Timex Computer Fork, one of the most practical times to be sat and back and put on the switch, the brand of a computer, the convenience of man. And press to his Bonds to critical services, reducing friction and wear in your car's engine. Fargo, run with us. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM. A Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. Get ready to match the stars. Robert Hedges, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Play as we play the star studded Big Bunny Match Game 76. And now, here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Rager. Thank you very much, Johnny Wilson and friends. Okay, uh, you get your adrenaline going. Everybody all ready? We're ready. Okay. Right. Wait Thank a minute, you. I'll have to what? check it. Yes. <laughs> Let's uh, say hello to our two players here, Helen Dillon and Richard Madden. How are you feeling? The $350 that Helen has won has put a little smile on her face. Yes. And you've got plans for that money? I sure do. Okay. Well, I'm glad you won some. Now, if Richard Madden's face looks a little familiar to you, it's because it is familiar to you. He was here once before, recently, and there was a little something goofy that happened that might have been unfair to him, so we asked him back, and we welcome you back. Thank you. And we'll start this game right after we do these messages just for you. We are ready. Let's go. A or B, Richard Madden, it's your choice. A, please. All right. This is it. Nanookla the Eskimo girl said, Nanook is really a fast worker. On our first date, he rubbed my nose. On our second date, he blanked it. <laughs> He's a fast worker. Nanookla. Nanookla the, the Eskimo the girl female. said, Oh. Nanook is really a fast worker. On our first date, he rubbed my nose. On our second date, he blanked it. There it is. I got it. For your verification, sir. Rub my nose. On the second, thank you. Yes, all right. Okay. <laughs> Canceled. I don't know why I always go for that, but I do. <laughs> Just put it on the card, lay it in the slot, and away we go. He's still thinking. He hasn't started the right yet. Let's try it with five next week. Yeah, okay. 
to see if it works out. If it works <laughs> out, okay. Nanook, like the Eskimo girl said, Nanook. Hey, we're all looking back. There's a funny noise going on back. What's going on back there? Somebody fall down? You guys? What happened? Cool it. Oh, that's Earl. Earl's falling. Earl, did you fall down in there? Are you all right, Earl? He's okay, yes. Dear me. Nanook, what the Eskimo girl said, Nanook is really a fast worker. On our first date, he rubbed my nose. On our second date, he blanked it. Kissed it. Kissed it. Okay. He said kissed. What do you say? He kissed it with his two lips right there. Right there is one for him. On our second date, he kissed it. Do you suppose there's a dash of Carlton the doorman in Earl? It <laughs> Wait. could be, yes. <laughs> I thought, I didn't think the Eskimos uh, uh, kissed. I thought on the second date you'd pinch he pinched it. pinched it. Just rub it first. No pinching, please. <laughs> what do you say? You can't win them all. I said squeeze, Gene. You said squeeze. <laughs> so he rubbed my nose and on the second date he squeezed it. I don't think that's working so fast, do you? What do you say? Oh, he was a hot little Eskimo. He bit it. He bit it. That's uh, certainly an indication I of passion. I come up with them, don't I? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Log what and all that stuff. <laughs> kiss. Two for Richard. Ooh. He's looking for a kiss, my oh, dear. Oh, I'll give him a kiss. You do, indeed. Okay. He did fairly well with his first rounder. Remember, they're a little harder, Helen. You've been through this. Chain Gang Chet said. He says, I just came back from the prison sporting goods store. Now I'm the only guy in a chain gang who has a blank for his ball. Oh! Oh, I think I've got the definitive answer for that. Chain on his ankle with a big black ball on the end of it. He said, I just came back from the prison sporting goods store. Now I'm the only guy in a chain gang who has a blank for his ball. Has a blank for his ball. He got it. He's smarter than you. Came back from the sporting goods store. Came back from the sporting goods store. Now I'm the only guy on the chain gang <laughs> who has a blank for his ball. Well, I got the papers. Yeah. You're getting the papers. <laughs> All right. Okay, Helen Dillon. Chain Gang Chet said, I just came back from the sporting goods store, and now I'm the only guy in a chain gang who has a blank for his ball. A key. Uh, a key for his ball? That's right. To really? open it. To open it and escape. Well, I don't think, I don't know. That may happen, but I doubt it. What do you no say? No doubt about it. The fellow was an athletic supporter. I see. <laughs> and then he has a drop for his ball. Yes. What do you say? You told me he was smarter than I was. I was wrong. You lied to me. <laughs> I lied to you. That's right. Well, I went for bowling. I said he had a bag. That's for his ball. a very good answer. Oh, it is. A bowling ball bag. What do you say, Charles? I said a shot put. <laughs> they were very happy together, right? <laughs> but no, he got. He wanted a matching pair, is what he wanted, and so he said shot put. I'm the only guy in the chain gang who has a blank. She said key for his ball. What do you say? funny. I said key, too. You did. (laughs) Yes. Life is full of little surprises. Little keys, yes. Yes. Okay, that's one. Amazing, really. Fantastic. Oh, real thinking, yeah. (laughs) I said bat. A bat for his ball is another good answer. Bag and bat were kind of the two definitive answers. What do you say? I say bravo, Ethel. Bang. Bang. Yeah. So there we go. Three to one the score. Favor of Richard at the end of round one. Round two coming up later, but first this. Round two coming up. There it is. A or B, Richard? A, please. A? Now, let's see. You match three people in the first round. You match Robert, Richard, and Fanny. So the rest of you, if you would, please. Norma said, I'm going to fire my new housekeeper. Some housekeepers sweep under the rug. This one blanks under the rug. You don't play. Sweep. Some housekeepers sweep under the rug. This one blanks under the rug. I have the definitive answer. There's no question about it. Right. All right. 
Everybody ready? Here we go. Richard Norman said, I'm going to fire my new housekeeper. Some housekeepers sweep under the rug. This one blanks under the rug. Tinkles. Wouldn't it show through? Yeah. That's why I'm firing <laughs> Well, what do you say? I say I figured she'd do that in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she, I, she sleeps you got under it. the rug. Oh. <laughs> Some housekeepers sweep under the rug. This one sleeps under the rug. That seems to be the answer, Charles. What do you mean that seems to be the well, answer? Well, I think that's a marvelous... One person by luck comes up with something that's <laughs> clever and that seems to be the answer? Yeah, that's uh, the definitive answer you know in my Herbert mind. You know what Herbert Hoover would say about you? <laughs> I said she makes love with the bottled water man. With the bottled water man under the rug. That must make a very lumpy living room. <laughs> Read the now, question. The rhythm. Norma said, I'm going to fire my new housekeeper. Some housekeepers sweep under the rug. This one blanks under the rug. Well, one this gets one, rid of it and puts it under the rug. This one puts it under the rug. Yeah, she sweeps and she puts it under the rug and, and hides, hides it. it there, hides right, it, yeah. okay. So well, it's three to one in our own round time. Two. Now, <laughs> Helen, you've got to match two to tie and three to win. One person does not play, and that's Ethel. Here we go. At the doctor's office, Peter, the practical joker, said... I just can't wait until the doctor gives me my physical. I've got a fake eye hidden in my blank. Got, got that one, huh? Got a fake eye hidden in my blank. All right. You think that's the definitive answer? That's very you know? good. Okay. Okay. Now we'll come over here. I guess everybody's all set. Robert, put it in the slot, and away we go. No coloring in the pictures. No, right. right. Helen, at the doctor's office, Peter the practical joker said, I just can't wait until the doctor gives me my physical. You see, I've got a fake eye hidden in my blank. Navel. Yeah. Navel. <laughs> Two belly buttons to tie, three to win. Yes. Naval jokes are funny. That's right. That's right. There's one. Three to two to score now. One more to tie. One more to tie. Run. One more to tie. Curtain oh, up. Oh. That's tie score. Three to three. <laughs> now we come to Charles. He said, I can't wait. I got a fake eye it. hidden in my <laughs> mouth. Okay. Well, we don't want to see it, Charles. Three to three. Tie score now. One more navel will win the game for her. Richard, we call on you. Where are you from? From San Diego, aren't you? San Diego, yes. Isn't that a naval base? Yes. yes it is. Okay. All right. Now, you uh, stand around over there and I'll get back to you. Richard, it was a pleasure seeing you again. Thank you. It's and my pleasure. I'm glad you had another shot at it, and thank you for being with us on Match Game 76. Richard Madden, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How'd it feel? Great. Good. <laughs> See, she's won a little more money. She's up to $450 now, and she's feeling better already. <laughs> Now, Helen, well, uh, you've been here before, so we'll just get right to it. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Get blank. Oh. Now, the answer that group gave most often is worth $500, uh -huh. if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250, and then the bottom one gets you $100. Which three of the six celebrities do you call on for a little assistance? Fanny. Let's see. Get going. Get going. <laughs> <laughs> you really come up with the duds. Oh. Charles. Get well soon. <laughs> Get well soon. Uh, Brett. How do I get it then? Well, I kept, there were so many. Uh, what about get lost? Get lost. <laughs> God, I, I can think about three or four others, but you may want one of those or you might think of one yourself. What do you say? I'll go with get well. Get well soon. All right. We'll find out if get well soon is up there. That's the one that Charles gave me. I hope it is up there. Let's begin at the bottom and reveal a $100 response. 
Get down. Okay. I had all that. Like You've heard of that? Up. Yes, I have. Okay. Let's see if get well soon is under the two hundred and fifty dollar number. Get lost is the one that Brett gave you. How about the old show that Don Adams used to do? Get smart. Yeah. Get smart. Oh. No, I don't think those old people remembered him. I certainly don't. <laughs> I've tried to forget him. Let's slide it, Earl. Ha-ha! Uh -huh. Get smart. Yeah. Did you think of that, audience? Oh, yeah. oh, now, after I show you, you say yes. Yeah. Okay, Helen, you've still got your 450. Now, remember that. And you're going to meet another player. Now, you ready for that? Yes. Let's welcome Jenna Kemp. Here we go. Lady. Nice to have you with us. It's nice to be here. Thank you. We're uh, anxious to find out a little bit about you. Well, I'm from the San Fernando Valley, and my husband and I are the proud parents of a six-month-old baby boy. That's marvelous. Well, we wish you well in raising that child, and oh, wish you well here, thank Jenna. You. Thank you. Now, we'll ask you to... Ask you to fix a machine is what we'll ask you. What? Oh, you oh, don't panic now. You want to do a commercial now? Okay, we'll fix a machine during the commercial. Let's go. Let's go, shall we? Bing, there it is. And now A or B for Jana. I'll go for B, please. All righty. Here it is. Because of the economy, NBC is cutting back. They fired their peacock and replaced it with a blank. Got it. Uh, they fired because of the, you know, economy and shortage of funds and all that. NBC is cutting back, and they fired their peacock and replaced it with a blank. That's nice, dear. Yes. Okay, here we go. Jana, <laughs> you remember me. I do remember you. Because of the economy, NBC is cutting back. They fired their peacock and replaced it with a blank. Feather. With a feather. That would really be economical, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Hmm. You know, she really gave kind of a pretty good inside answer there. What do you say? I said a bald eagle. A bald eagle? You can put a tube on it if yeah, you like. Right. Yeah, right. Wear a toupee, right. Flexible. Okay. I thought they just came down in stature and they just got themselves a little chicken. A small bird, yes. And you? Guess we got this one. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Chicken, naturally. Yeah, well, that would be less uh, expensive than the peacock now, wouldn't it? They fired the peacock and replaced it with a... Little canary. A canary. A canary. Feather is good, you know. Yeah, this sounds like one of those routines that Johnny Carson would do on The Tonight Show. Yep. They fired the peacock and replaced it with a blank. Man. What For do you all say? those who did love canary, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. Fanny? And for those chicken folks... There it is. Okay. All right. Don't worry about it, Jenna. The first round questions are tough. Some of them you can hardly understand. Nervous Norman, the bomb expert, said. The bomb expert, he said. Defusing time bombs all day makes me edgy. Every morning when my alarm clock rings, I blink. <laughs> That's what Nervous Norman said. Did you say keep fusing? Uh, 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 keep fusing time bombs all day makes me edgy. Every morning when my alarm clock rings, I blank. Oh, def Oh, see, now I didn't realize what... Defusing is the operative word, I think. You not only can't see, you can't hear. Everything's gone, honey, except my legs. <laughs> <laughs> She's fading fast. Oh, my dear. Yes. Sing out, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> she you will, do jazz. That was one of her I lines. shouldn't encourage you, should I? In Gypsy. I did Gypsy. Sing out, Louise. I did Gypsy. Oh, did Gypsy. there she goes. Yes. Put the <laughs> nickel right, in. Ready? Here we Put go. Put the nickel in, my dear. Helen, nervous Norman the bomb expert said, defusing time bombs all day makes me edgy. Every morning when my alarm clock rings, I blank. Jump. Jump is good. That's what I would have said if I were playing the game. 
I would jump too. Bing! Yes, that's what makes people different. I scream. You scream, that's another good one. Yep. Screaming and jumping are pretty good, yep. Oh, honey, I got so confused about the bombs and the war and, and the Watergate and all that stuff. I mean, I said, I blow up. <laughs> Is that a bad answer? Tell the truth. Quite. You are impossible in two words. What do you say? Another correct answer, Gene. Hi, audience. I jump. Well, there's one for Helen. Every morning when my alarm clock rings, I jump. I fall out of bed. Fall out of bed is yes. another good one. That'd be good, that's yes. Good. That's what I, I wrote. No, you wrote I, jump. And I threw it away. You I threw know. it away. You got a better one? Well, I just saw the old heart going. Yes? Faint. Faint. The noise. Yeah. All right. The noise is just frightening. Oh, dear. You Poor fainter devil. or are you a jumper? No, I have always just started running. Start running. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there we are at the end of round one, one to nothing, and now we go to round two and ask Janet to uh, cool it while we do a little commercial business here. Well, we can't do round two. Because we just wouldn't have time to do one question, so we'll look forward to seeing both of your smiling faces okay. here next time. Yeah. Ladies, listen, you started during a little while ago, you were telling me about this Christmas special that you and some of the guys and Welcome Back, Cotter, the All Sweat Hogs? Right. Larry, John, myself, and Ron are going to be doing a uh, com combination fable Christmas story. It's going to be an hour-long feature. It's going to be around Christmas time. It's a combination of Wizard of Oz. Are you guys going to sing in it, Nola? We, uh, I have no idea. It hasn't it hasn't been finalized yet. The yeah. script hasn't finished yet. All right. But, uh, when it is, it's going to well, be. That'll be a lot time. of fun. Yes, it will. Was be. Grand having you with us? Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you sometime soon. I we'll hope watch so. you on Welcome Back, Cotter. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, my dear. Nice to be back. Gee, I don't know. Some of you might have seen the marvelous thing that Ethel did with uh, the Boston Pops and Robert Fiedler. Yeah. Yeah, Arthur that, Fiedler. Arthur Fiedler, mm, see? Well. Uh, I'm fading fast, too. <laughs> Brett and I are going downhill slowly. <laughs> together. <laughs> Down life's path together. Anybody else got anything I'm to plug? Doing, I got... told you this week uh, in, uh, in well, Newport, Rhode Island. La, La Traviata. Traviata. Right, with Robert Merrill and Roberta Peters, conducted by the new and young and wonderful Robert Fiedler. <laughs> Arthur Fiedler. How many times do I have to tell you? It's Arthur Fiedler. What? Richard and I will be appearing on Brett's Halloween special. Okay. How many you are? Right. Next time we get together, these are the bodies who will be on this stage. Soupy Sales, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Madeline Rue, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. That's the best we can do. Tune in anyway. Gene Rayburn here. Join us next time for Match Game 76. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 76. The Mark Woodson Bill Tubman production. Get ready to match the stars. Star pitcher for the LA Dodgers, Don Sutton. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley. Ethel Merman. Richard Dawson and Fanny Black as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Rivers! joining us. Come over here and see all of these beautiful people. We welcome you one and all and hope you're all well. Everybody okay here? Sure. Right. It's nice to see a living legend Ethel Merman back and it's nice to... Nice to do that. Thank you, my dear. As the guy sitting upstairs of you here, Don Sutton, he's not a living legend yet, but unless he pulls a muscle, he will be. 
He really is. How have you been, Dan? Great. Just great. Good. Shall we begin by saying hello to Lilia Glowen and Bob Long? How are you, Lilia? Hi. How much money do you want? I forgot. $8,000. $8,000? This is a stick-up. Oh. What are you going to do with that loot? Oh, get a house, I hope. Get a house. All right. right. She's tired of sleeping out in the open. So <laughs> <is there. laughs> How are you, Bob? Very good. We didn't start this game, did we? No, we just got introduced. That's right. Just uh, Bob Long just told us a Bob Long story. You right. want to repeat that, because some people might have tuned in today who weren't with us yesterday. Well, okay, I'm... Let's uh, see, now, you're 21 years old. A little older. Oh, all right, yes. You're single? No. Oh, yes, yes. Now, wait a minute. You remembered it all, yeah, though, no, at least. Uh, you got three kids. Just one. Oh, one kid. At least you remembered the whole thing. Gene. All right. Your name is Bob Long, right? From Prescott, Arizona. That's it, and you're here visiting, visiting relatives during got the it. holidays. Got it. Right. What are you doing around town for laughs? This is it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll start this game in a moment or so, but right now we want you to watch this. Pay attention now. We're ready if you are. I'll push a button here, reveal our first round questions, ask Bob Long to make a selection. I'll take B. You sure? I think so. Okay, Bob. Here we go. Horrible Hank. About time. Horrible Hank is the only soldier to win a medal for surrendering. Because as soon as he raised his arms, an entire enemy division blanked. <laughs> that wasn't horrible, Hank. That was Charles Nelson Riley. Uh, as soon as he raised his arms, an entire enemy division blanked. Oh, I like this one. Isn't that cute? This is a goodie. I want to see something cute like this go, ah, Yeah. Oh, look at that. We can't forget that. It's done in needle point on one side. You got a shot of that? Let me see. Yeah, that's done in needle point. And on the other side, it's just black. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that's beautiful. I do needle point. Let me see what it is. That's really very handsome. Someone designed that. Yeah. That pretty. The doctor won't let her have anything with a sharp edge on it. All right. Oh, okay. may I have the question back again? I filled it out. Thank Would you. Would you put one in your, in your <laughs> slot there? Just put oh. it right in the slot. You remember how the game goes, don't you? Really? Bob, are you ready? I think Horrible so. Hank is the only soldier to win a medal for surrendering because as soon as he raised his arms, an entire enemy division blanked. Passed out. Passed out. <laughs> Okay, what do you say, Don Sutton? Is passed out the same as fainted? Yes, honey. Yes. Well, I put passed out. You should... Oh, <laughs> you did it then. <laughs> now. Is fainted the same as passed out? Right. Yes. I put fainted. Okay. That's two for you, Bob. We're going to get an out. Who uh, is asphyxiated the same as that? Asphyxiated, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. So I, in case it out. wasn't, I also put passed out. All right. <laughs> Asphyxiated. Very good. I don't know why I said that. Asphyxiated. Mr. Webster will be very happy to see your spelling on that. And uh, hello, Ethel. Hello. Uh, it's, it's, it's a win a medal for surrendering because as soon as he raised his arms, an entire enemy division passed out. Oh no. 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 I said they dropped dead. They dropped dead. I like that. Well, that's one oh, way sure. to win the war. Well, maybe with B.O. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> what did you say? Al Fainted. Fainted. Or the Bob. Many people have fallen all over the place. And, and drop dead is not the same as passed out. Not quite. Oh, good. What about fainted? Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Look at him. You have a formidable opponent in Bob Long here. Now, let's see how you do with yours. Lorraine said to her mother, I finally met a man who stole my heart. Unfortunately, he also stole my blank. I got, oh, what you said to her mother? Lorraine said to her mother, I finally met a man who stole my heart. Unfortunately, he also stole my blank. Boy, oh boy. Why mothers go gray? All right. Perfect. Is that good? 
Lillian, you ready? Here we go. Lorraine said to her mother, I finally met a man who stole my heart. Unfortunately, he also stole my blank. Money. Money. <laughs> she said money. Is that... We may uh, run into some problems here. Pay attention now. Is Let's that the definitive have. answer? Well, I suppose so. I'm not sure, Don. Is that the same as innocence or <laughs> virtue? Virtue. No. No, as a matter of fact, I think he's got the definitive answer. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> say, if you've got it, spread it around. Virtue. <laughs> Really? Now, I'm no. going to make history because I didn't write a word on this card, but it's going to get a match. What? You talking to me? I Chuck? didn't write a word on this card. Yes, you did. You've I got didn't it. write a word. The rules are... But I got a match. Oh, you did. Oh. <laughs> Five to one to score. <laughs> Finally met a man who stole my heart. Unfortunately, he also stole my money. Yeah. He wanted to be paid for it. Money. Money. Oh. <laughs> Really? <laughs> what do you think of that? I think it's very good. Judges, keep an open mind. Purse. Thank you. Purse. Purse. Money. Oh, that's right. Bill purse Holmes. in the old medieval English oh, sense of he stole my purse, which uh, meant money in those days. Shillings. Yes. No. Uh, we have an old medieval yeah. English judge. Meant a lot of trouble in high school, too. Right. Uh, I said that uh, she didn't care about her virtue. She just cared about her money. Uh huh. So the score is five to four. There's round one, and now this for you. Are you ready for round two? Now this is the final round coming up here. Now we've got two good players here. We've got a score of five to four in favor of the challenger, and we'll ask him to make a selection. I'll stick with B. All right. Now there's one person who plays. Miss Ethel, honey, you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. Oh, I love that color. That's beautiful. Hey, did you hear about Colonel Sanders and the cuckoo clock? No. Would, like, would you like to hear about it? I'd love to. Well, when the cuckoo came out, the colonel blanked it. <laughs> All right, Bob Long. Did you hear about Colonel Sanders in the cuckoo clock? Let me tell you about it. When the cuckoo came out, the colonel blanked it. Cooked it. Cooked it. Fried it. Cooked it. Cooked it. Cooked it. Cooked it. Cooked it. Now, wait a minute. Now, what's wrong? What would you say? Fry. Fry. Yeah. Hold on. If you would, all of you weirdos who are saying fried, would you raise your hand? Just fry. <laughs> Well, fried seems to be the popular answer. Okay, let's find out what Ethel Merman says right now. He says cooked, she says... I said cooked. Cooked, all right. <laughs> now, you booed cook, didn't you? <laughs> Apologize to this man. Apologize to him. Okay. Now, Lilia, do you want A or B? A. A, okay. At the nudist colony, Fred said, we had a contest today for the best physical feature. Everyone picked my blank. <laughs> oh, my gracious sake. Don and on Fred are the only two players. All right, now, we'd like to see that. Please, dear. All right, motion. there we go. It's awfully lonesome colony up here. said, we had a contest today for the best physical feature. Everyone picked my gotcha. Understand. Okay. Lilia, you've got to match both celebrities whom you have not matched in order to achieve a tie. The best you can do is tie this game, and we'll find out what happens here in a moment. As soon as Don puts it in, there we go. At the nudist colony, Fred said, we had a contest today for the best physical feature. Everyone picked my blank. Fanny. Fanny. <laughs> well, certainly, that sounds logical to me. Are we Fred had a cute blank. Are we, are we dealing with a very open-minded judge today? Well, I don't know, but uh, she must match both you and Brett in order oh. to achieve a tie. Let's see if what you've got. If I were got. the judge, then I'd bet my fanny this is a match. Cheeks. 
No. It's in descending order, not ascending. He wrote it going downhill. He said it's in descending, not ascending. And, uh, <laughs> he said that. You know how these ball players are. They're, Hello there, Brett. Now you got to match Brett uh, there, Lillian, to stay in the game. You look She's awfully, looking for Fanny. Awfully handsome today, and I like your red tie and your gray stripes. <laughs> You're too. changing the subject. And, and, and your white teeth. <laughs> yes. How much money has she won? She's won $8,000. Well, I said she chose her friend. Her friend? So that means Bob Long wins the game. Okay. And say goodbye to this lady, Lilia. Yes, indeed. Good luck to Lilia there. She wanted a goodbye kiss. $8,000 for Lydia Floyd. Ho, ho, ho. You ready? I think so. <laughs> Boy, this has turned out to be some vacation for you, huh? Yeah. Really? You've only won $100, but you could win over $5,000 here now. I'm set. <laughs> you are, okay. You got rooters in the audience. Yeah. Who's here? My wife and a couple friends. Yeah, where are they? Right down there? Right in the front. Oh, I see. Okay, here we go. Bob Long. We polled a bunch of uh, people who came to the studio audience recently. You said, write down your best response to this. Pace blank. Now, the answer they gave us most frequently, their most popular answer, will get you $500 if you match it. Then we give you $250 for matching their second most popular response and 100 for the third. And three of the six celebrities are going to help you now. They're going to help you. They're here to help you there, Bob Law. <laughs> Fanny. Fanny's oh, going to help you. I'm going to help him. Um, well, a pace of pie, that's not right. No. I say um, <laughs> uh, pace maker. Pace maker. Um, <laughs> I'll take Richard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark Breslow, did you see what happened? Yeah, I, I went like this to say, who else do you want? And he started to point, he says, I'll take Richard, and it opened up. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Now, Much better. now, who do you want now, Bob? I'll take Rich. You'll take Richard? Yes, yeah. I'm a pace setter. Pace setter, okay. Hi. One more. Charles. You want Charles, okay. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. Ah, <laughs> Badu. <laughs> well, really. Now you got pace yourself, pace setter, and pacemaker. You can choose one or throw them all out and give us one out of your own skull. First one I thought of, Gene, was pacemaker. Pacemaker. That's Fanny's answer. Let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? We'll begin down at the bottom and we will reveal the $100 response. Pace back and forth. Oh. Hey, what do you think of that? That's you pace know. yourself. I didn't. That's pace yourself. Yeah. Now, let's see if we got the pacemaker tick-tock under the $250 response. Pace setter. Okay, there's Richard's answer. Last chance Good for pacemaker. Let's have it. Earl. Yeah! Oh, boy, you got it. All right. Now. I guess we got to stop here and do a little business with America, Bob Long, so don't go too far away. We're going to do uh, these messages and then come back to you. Here we go. Bob Long's first trip up here. He's uh, won the $500. He has a total of $600 right now. And it means he's going to play for 10 times the amount he just won, or $5,000. And we'll be glad to give him the money if he'll match one celebrity with an exact match. Now... Uh, your ESP was good with Fanny when you came up with Pacemaker with her. What do you want to do now? You have to choose one celebrity. I'm going to go with Fanny again. i got to go with the winner. Okay, Fanny, you're a winner, he says. Here we go. Stand on the blue dot. Here we go. 
worth $5,000 to Bob Long. No help, if you please. Here it is. Good luck to you, Bob. Bye-bye blank. Bye-bye blank. You want me to give the answer? Not yet. We've got, we've got to wait for Fanny to write her answer, and she puts it in a slot, you see. And then when she's finished, then you give us the answer, which you think will match hers. And if it does, you get the money. Okay, Gene, I'm waiting on me then. No, no. You got yours already, right? Oh, yeah. All right, hold on now. Now, we'll wait for Fanny. Okay, Fanny's ready. She took a long time to make up her mind. She finally came up with an answer. You give us the answer she's made up and put in that card. We give you the $5,000. Bye-bye. Birdie. Birdie. You know... I couldn't play this round because there are two of us on this stage who are in the Broadway company of that show, and it's the first answer that I thought of, but there, I thought, well, I suppose an average person might say bye-bye something else. There are several others. What'd you say, Fanny? Black birdie. <laughs> there's a... No, no, wait a minute. There's bye-bye blues, bye-bye blues, and there's... Uh, Pack up all my pair of cares and wall. Here I go singing low. Bye bye, Blackbird. Another very, very Thanks. famous song. And uh, did you think of Bye Bye Birdie? You didn't. No, I thought of Bye Bye Blues and Bye Bye Blackbird. I see. Sorry. Okay. Well, Bob, you got the six hundred dollars. You're going to meet another challenger here right now. Let's welcome Tina Van Gorder. Bob, you know Tina. All right, Tina, we welcome you and ask you to tell us the story of your life in eight seconds. <laughs> I'm a single parent of a great two-year-old named Mandy. Hello, Mandy. <laughs> I didn't say it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm an artist that works out of my home, and I like to design and make clothes for Mandy and myself. And I'm a volunteer at a hospital in my local area, and also I direct a children's choir and just have fun being alive. Lots You're of fun a things. busy, attractive yeah. lady. Thank and you. Good luck to you here, Tina. You may have A or B. I think I'll choose A. A it is for Tina Van Gorder. The Godfather said to Tony... <laughs> Tony, if you double-cross me tonight, tomorrow when you wake up, your head will be in blank. <laughs> Godfather said to Tony, Tony, if you double-cross me tonight, tomorrow when you wake up, your head will be in blank. Gotcha. Godfather is speaking to Tony. Gotcha. All right, everybody's got an idea, so I'll make my way back to Tina Van Gort. <laughs> who probably designed and made this very outfit she's wearing. Right. Right. Yeah, ready. Godfather said to Tony, Tony, if you double-cross me tonight, tomorrow when you wake up, your head will be in... One more time. <laughs> Tony, if you double-cross me tonight, tomorrow when you wake up, your head will be in blank. A uh, suitcase? In a suitcase. <laughs> All right. Don, what do you say? I said the same thing you would say if you were a pitcher and you had an Italian manager. In a block of cement. That's a traditional thing, Tina. It happens in that world. What do you say? I said the same thing if you weren't a bricklayer. Cement. Cement. Chuck? I quoted that popular song, your head will be in the river, but your body will be on the shore. <laughs> By Cole Porter, right? Yeah, yeah, right. What do you say? I said cement. Cement is the answer so far. Yeah, there it is. A little cement from Richard. In a meatball. In a meatball. <laughs> you are a weirdo. So there we are. See how it goes, Tina? You're getting the idea now. now. Yeah. You'll get better as you go along. Right now, this message for you. You come back here next time for Match Game 77. Gene Rayburn here, Tally. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 77, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Star
pitcher for the L.A. Dodgers, Don Sutton. Brent Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Ethel Merman. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flagg. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Rivers. Thank you, friends, for joining us. You're very kind. You're going to have a great day because we have six very uh, talented and amusing people here. I want to thank... Where? Where? <laughs> right here. Listen, I just want to say a word of thanks to all of you lovely people who write in. Uh, the fan mail is really marvelous that we get on this show. Many appreciative people arise. I just read one in the dressing room and said, Dear Mr. Rayburn, I think you're the, the, the top MC. You give us a lot of fun and a lot of joy. Can you get me a picture of Alan Ludden? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's exactly it. And I really appreciate your letters like that, Kevin. Yeah. What do you say we greet Bob Long and Tina Van Gorder? Yeah. How do you feel, Bob? Good. Bob is a perfect example of positive thought there. He uh, had a chance at the big money, and it didn't work out for him, but he's still got a smile on his face, and he's very happy. He's got $600. That's pretty good. And this lady, a uh, little Miss Dressmaker from <laughs> this area, uh -huh. Tina Van Gorder, she had her first round question, didn't do too well with it, but you see, she's still smiling and happy. Because even if she loses, she gets a lot of gifts, you know, like an 800-year supply of pantyhose and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, we're going to begin in the middle of round one here in a moment or so, but right now we've got this for you. Now we are ready to carry on here. Middle of round one is where we left off. And Bob, this is your question. Here we go. Dirty Dave never washes his hands. Why? And in his profession, that's horrible because Dirty Dave is a blank. <laughs> Dirty Dave never washes his hands. And in his profession, that's horrible because Dirty Dave is a blank. Now, come here a minute. <laughs> because I don't want it. <laughs> All right. Is that all right? <laughs> Is that bad, do you think? Think that's in bad taste? No, it's fine. Fine. Anything you say, Brett, which is your decision, <laughs> leave me out of it. Chicken. Chicken. Yes. Very Ethel says you look glamorous. You do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the hot pearls. <laughs> I was going to wear my hot pearls today, but I, I think they got stolen. I can't find them. You misplaced Okay. Bob? Dirty Dave never washes his hands, and in his profession that's horrible because Dirty Dave is a blank. Well, I've got two good answers. Um, I'll say surgeon. Surgeon. <laughs> he said, he said surgeon is what he said. Don? My initial thought I didn't think would get passed, so I changed it instead of saying a specific type of doctor that I had in mind to a doctor. A doctor. Now, Courtney. A surgeon's not a doctor. A surgeon? What now, is a surgeon? A barber? Hold on just a second. Now, there are many surgeon's doctors. Surgeon's not a bartender. That's true. <laughs> But right, there are many then. doctors who are not surgeons, Dr. folks. Kissinger for one. Dr. Kissinger's not a surgeon. He'll operate on the Should anyway, but he is not a surgeon. <laughs> He's certainly done a good job on the country. That's right. Operating. What do you say? <laughs> well, what do you think I said? What did you say? I said doctor, but you I said, mean I said... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Chuck. Doc. Three doctors. Were you thinking of Dr. Bob? Did you think well, of Dr. Bob? Sure. <laughs> oh, that was your other idea, and you rejected it. No, I was thinking that. of cook or uh, doctor or surgeon. Cook or doctor and surgeon, yeah. Okay. Uh, Dirty Dave never washes his hands in his profession. That's horrible because Dirty Dave is a surgeon. Well, sometimes, a lot of times, a doctor doesn't have to have clean hands. So I said surgeon. Oh. oh. Yeah. You're okay, Admiral. You're okay, baby. I get downhill from here. Right. <laughs> 
was excellent. That was excellent, yeah, because Very surgeons, you, you associate them with scrubbing all the time, right. washing their hands and scrubbing, so. Surgeon. Surgeon. <laughs> Speaking of dirty hands. <laughs> Doesn't she look so pretty? Yes. Miss Magnolia Flower, what do you got for us? Sugar. Well, you all, I have, I'm sorry, I have a doctor. You have a doctor for us. No I surgeons. Okay. Well, you got two surgeons out of that bunch, and that ain't bad for starters, no. is it? Here we I go. Round two coming up. Well. Tina, you may have A or B again. Well, A was so lucky, I think I'll take A. <laughs> <laughs> a again. I She's sticking with it. A again. Hey, listen, they won't let Harry into Florida anymore because on his last trip he got drunk, rented a plane, and blanked all over Miami. Uh, now it doesn't say all over. I added that. Got, he got drunk, rented a plane, and blanked over Miami. That's what it says. Well, you know what? I don't like that question because I think it's about my father. Now my mean. father's name was Harry. He oh, was really? a terrible drunk. Your father was a terrible drunk. I don't want to hear your trouble. Just write an answer there. Read that again. They won't let Harry into Florida anymore because on his last trip he got drunk, rented a plane, and blanked over Miami. You know, you talking about fan mail? Yes. I got one once. You got a piece of fan mail once? A long time ago. Oh. Of course, it wasn't addressed to me. In particular, it Who? was to the panel. Yeah. And it had oh, Betty White's name on it, but it got to me. It did. Yeah. Betty White will get to you every time. <laughs> okay, Tina, if you're ready. Don't ask me. Ready, John? Yes. Okay, put it in. Come on. Tina, now. they won't let Harry into Florida anymore because on his last Wait trip. Wait a minute, he hasn't had it in yet. Don! Go ahead. You're going back to the minor leagues, Go Don! Ahead. Gonna back to celebrity sweepstakes and all those other things that are... Is that minor league? That's it. <laughs> hey, now listen, Tina. They won't let Harry into Florida anymore because on his last trip he got drunk, rented a plane, and blanked over Miami. Threw up. Yeah! Great. <laughs> Encouraging. The euphemism we use around here is barfed. <laughs> what did you say? I didn't say that. What I said was an answer that uh, came out of desperation. Right. And really doesn't merit... The pressure was on you. It really huh? doesn't merit being sent anywhere except really? out. What? I just put he dropped things all over Miami. He dropped things all over Miami. That is okay. dumb, isn't it? Yes. How dumb <laughs> is it? Listen, it's so dumb they're not even booing you. That's how dumb it is. <laughs> they're, they're in shock. What do you say? I say, Barf! 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 That's one for Tina. Yes, sir? Up Chuck. Okay. Okay. Score is now tied two to two. Ethel, we're up to you. Yeah. On his last trip, he got drunk, ran in a plane, and blanked over Miami. Yeah, he got very sick and dizzy, so he threw up. Ooh. Richard? Yes, sir. What do you say? I have the definitive answer. Richard has the definitive answer. Please read the question. They won't let Harry into Florida anymore because on his last trip, he got drunk, rented a plane, and blanked over Miami. Moon. <laughs> Moon. <laughs> Richard, as promised, Moon gave you Miami. Mooned Over Miami. That's right. From the song of the same name. Now, straight, play, play straight with it. How many of you know what throwing a moon is? Everybody. How many of you have thrown a moon? How many of you have thrown a moon? <laughs> Mrs. Miller's hand. Mrs. Miller, you've never mooned. Stop that. Don't kid me. You've never mooned there. All right. Hey, so, speaking of moons, <laughs> we now come Only to Fanny. Fanny. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you have nothing to do, nobody to talk to, how your mind wanders. I used to uh, date him crop duster named Earl Corsi that got a little drunk once and dusted downtown Cincinnati. So my mind just went to that and I said he dusted crops over Miami. Rented a plane and he dusted crops over Miami. So that's, that fan mail really got to you. So here we are in the middle of round two. The score is three to two in favor of Tina. And we'll finish this game right after we do a little business with you. Here we go. You know what you have to do? Two to win, one to tie. No, one to tie, two to win. 
Uh, I got it all mixed up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay, Bob. Good luck to you. Here we go. When the bionic woman falls down, she bounces right up because she has bionic springs built into her bionic blanks. <laughs> you don't play? I know. You don't play. The rest of you do. Okay. What ball All right. All set, Bob. Something with. When the bionic woman falls down, she bounces right up because she has bionic springs built into her bionic blanks. Bionic Fanny. Bionic Fanny. All right. Johnny said, Bionic Fanny. What do you say? He's obviously an intelligent man. I think it's a great answer. I put Bionic Buns. Buns and Fanny in the match. Score is tied. Any sound you can't catch. Right. Three to three it is now. Another pair of Buns. Another or pair of Buns. One single Fanny will win the game for him. How about a couple of fanny flags? Booze. No. <laughs> that doesn't win for him. Come on. <laughs> what do you offer, Charles? Bun! There it is. That wins the game. Fanny had booze. All right. Go to your place. Go to your room. <laughs> Tina, it was a pleasure to meet you. You too, thank you. As I said before, we'll have some gifts for you. Thank and you. Uh, the best of luck to Tina Van Gorder, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Here it is again, Bob. You know how it goes, so we'll get right to it here. We polled a bunch of people who came into the studio one day, and we said, put down your best answer to this. Blank-eyed, E-Y-E-D, blank-eyed. Remember, it's $500 if you match their most popular answer. For their second most popular, you get $250, and then $100 for their third. And three of our six celebrities are going to help you right now. Richard? Cross-eyed. Cross-eyed. Charles? Cock-eyed. Cock-eyed. Brett? Let me see what we've got over here. She's thinking. What else? Oh! Well, I have all those. I'm trying well, to get something What are you looking really... around well, for? Well, I'm trying to get something really terrific. I Do think four-eyed is better. Four-eyed, okay. Oh. It's me. So it's four-eyed, uh, cross-eyed, and cock-eyed are the two that you've been given now. Bob, you can choose one of those. Remember your option to reject them or choose one or give us one of your own. I'll go with cross-eyed. Cross-eyed is the one that Richard gave you. Let's find out if it's up there and if so where. We'll begin at the bottom, and we will reveal the $100 response. Starry eyes. Oh, that's oh, Fanny. That's a beautiful answer, isn't it? Now, let's see if we get cross-eyed under the $250 number. Blue eye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last chance for cross-eyed. Here we go. Yeah. That a boy. You got 1200 bucks now. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. $1,200 for this fella, and he's going to play for another $5,000 yeah. now. Now, you know what you have to do to get that money, don't you? You bet. What do you have to do? Match Richard this time. <laughs> match Richard. <laughs> huh? He says no offense, Fanny. He still loves her. She tried her best. I was she in did. the war. Yes. <laughs> All right, face me if you would, please. And here we go. Good luck to Bob Long. It's worth $5,000 to him. And it goes as follows. Atlantic blank. Atlantic blank. Okay, Bob Long, give us the answer. Richard is written on that card, and we give you $5,000. Atlantic ocean. Richard, he says Atlantic Ocean will match you for 5000 What do you say? We were thinking of the boardwalk and the uh, beauty. Atlantic place. City. No, Ocean. Ah! 
getting it together here. We're going to get these messages together for you. Come back. And I'm all... Now we're ready to go on here and meet a new player. So let's all welcome Maureen Gorman. Hello, Maureen. Hi. Now let's find out a little bit about her, shall we? Okay. I'm a secretary for a real estate company. I'm single and I live in Marina Del Rey. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you get eight offers in the parking lot after the show, I can tell you that then. You work in real estate. I'm a secretary in real yeah. estate. Is that somewhere in Los Angeles? Yes, Brentwood. In Brentwood? Mm -hmm. Find me a place. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good luck to you, Maureen. You ready Thank to play? You. Sure am. Right. Here we go. You may have A or B. B. Right. Right, right, right. Dumb Dora is so dumb. Oh, is she? When they said the switchboard was flooded, she brought a blank to the office. That's how dumb she was. Dumb Dora is so dumb when they said the switchboard was flooded, she brought a blank oh, there I to the it. office. Okay. Maureen, if you work in a real estate office, how come you, when you get a chance to see this program during the day, you never see the daytime. No. You see the nighttime show. Right. Okay, here we go, Maureen. Dumb Dora, so dumb when they said the switchboard was flooded, she brought a blank to the office. A bucket. A bucket. She said bucket, Don. Let's see if she picks up any matches with that. No, I said life preserver. A life preserver. Easy. All right. Easy with him. Remember, he's Delicate, a young fellow. sensitive person. That's right. Frail, too. Sometimes. <laughs> what do you say, Brett? I say remember better that he's a very tough jock and he'll beat you up in the parking lot. <laughs> no, sweetheart, I figured she was going to save everybody. It was a real flood, right? I, I just said she brought a raft. A raft. Okay, Chuck? All right, Ch uh, Chuck said a bathing suit. <laughs> a bathing suit. <laughs> Took a dive right off the switchboard into the... Eight feet of water that was in yeah. there. Ethel, say when they said the switchboard was flooded, Dumb Dora brought a blank to the office. Well, she wanted to get up all the water, so she brought a bucket. Oh, there you go, Maureen. Very good. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, she's yeah. Oh, think. All right. <laughs> now we're up to Richard. I said a pump. A pump to get the water out. Yeah, right. I thought it was bigger Everybody flush. bail. All right. <clears throat> this is, yes. I want to sit next to Ethel. I unfortunately said inner tube. An inner tube, yeah. <laughs> Floated around there for a while. Now let's see what we've got for Bob Long in the way of a first rounder here. 102 year old Mr. Perry Winkle said. Oh. Not 102. It says, I gotta get me some denture grip. Last night I went out with Stephanie and my denture slipped out of my mouth and into her blank. <laughs> now, see how nice Mr. Periwinkle is? And he's not cranky or anything. When you do Mrs. Periwinkle, she's so cranky. Don't uh, call us, we'll call uh, you. You want some film footage, huh? Okay. <laughs> I guess everybody got the idea, Bob. <laughs> I'll read it slowly while they're finishing up. 102-year-old Mr. Periwinkle said, I've got to get me some denture grip. Last night I went out with Stephanie, and my dentures slipped out of my mouth and into her blank. I've got a couple answers again. I'm going to go with cleavage. Cleavage is what he said. All right, John, show us your cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> That's on you. Yeah. Come, Come on, Donna. I said the front of her dress, because that's usually where you put cleavage, isn't it? Front of her dress? There's one for him. To begin with. You've got it, but I don't want to see it. That's, uh, that's enough, my lad. Come on now. No, uh, no. <laughs> cleavage. There's two for him, Charles. I took it a step further. Yes. I said cleavage, but when they got there, they held on. Oh. <laughs> okay, Ethel. Yeah. Slipped out of my mouth and into her. Well, this is the same as cleavage. Boobs. Is that it? Okay. 
Right. What do you say, Rick? Cleavage. Speaking of cleavage. I like him. Uh, bra, cleavage, same well, Bra? Same. Okay. Got them all. So there we are. Number the end of round one, six to one the score. And you have to go to work after this message or two. All right, do a fast bye-bye. 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 This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 77, a Mark Hudson, Bill Tuttman production. Get ready to match the star. Star pitcher for the L.A. Dodgers, Don Sutton, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Batty Flagg. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Rivers! How are you today? Good. Are you all right today? All right, come with me, and we'll say hello to them. Over here. Here they are. They're all, I'm surrounded by them now, as you can see. There's one here, one here, one there, and three up there. There. And three up there. And uh, they're beautiful people, and they're gifted. Come back. I'm going to come back to the five and dine. Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Oh, that's a play you just did. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that yeah, anymore? A sausage yeah. company. Fantastic. And I read her. Yeah. yeah. Really? She's really an actress. She's not just another oh, pretty face. You, they said she'd done she real good in face. grammar. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I want to turn the fan back. It's screaming. Yeah. All right. <laughs> they said Let's she was. Hello to Bob Long over here. Bob Long, our current champion. Hello, Bob Long. Good health is another. Listen. Dawson has a little laryngitis, so turn this fan on. Not mine, just his over here. We don't this want him to here. die on the air, folks. No, right. This That's one right here. Don't say that. Okay, thank you very much. B-54. B-54. Turn that one. Flip that switch there. <laughs> but leave mine on, because it's very hot this stage. Now, this cat here has won $11,900. How about that? Holy mackerel. This looks like a little point right here. And as the time expired last time, um, he had won another game, and he's going to have another shot at over $5,000 additional. Are you ready for that? You bet. You bet, huh? <laughs> he thinks very positively. We'll see how it works out right after we see about this. If here we are. If it does, if it does, oh, with old Bobby Long here. <laughs> how are you feeling? Fine, fine. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Isn't he cute? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he, his wife <laughs> thinks he's cute. <laughs> Anyway, he's up here for the fourth time. He's got 11900 and he could win a lot more here. Let's find out what he does. Bob, we had a bunch of people in this uh, studio audience one day not too long ago, and we said, fill out this card and give us your best answer to something like this. Acid blank. And they did that. Now, we took and collated all of those cards, you see, and the most popular answer is up there on top under the $500 number, and that means you get $500 if you guess what their most popular answer was. You get $250 for their second most popular answer, and $100 for their third, and three of the loonies are allowed to help. Richard? Acid test. Acid test. Fanny? <laughs> 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 Golly. Um, you see, see, I feel anything coming your way? There's an airplane. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, sweetheart. Something you might may happen something. to him. Something. Well, she can't see that far, you yes, dummy. Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, she can. No, really. She no, you know, no, really. She it's has just, a way with words, doesn't she, darling? <laughs> you know, I do that to make them feel better. Actually, it's it. acid rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they hate it, Brett. They hate it. <laughs> Acid rock. Okay, that's two. You got one more. Ethel. Acid drop. Acid drop. What's that? No, she means trick. Yeah. <laughs> acid drop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but when you belch, you think uh, yeah. acid drop. Oh, all right. Anything you say. <laughs> we don't do that here. Acid sure. drop, acid test, acid rock. Now, think about it, Bob. 
and give us an answer. One of those three or one out of your own imagination. The first thing I thought of was acid taste, and I know no one said that, and I'm going to go with acid taste. Acid taste. <laughs> well, Bob, Bob. Someone in the audience just uh, oh, said God. something that... You and I have been going along so well. Right. Yeah. You've now abandoned me. Is your wife, you is your wife here today? I'm afraid so. <laughs> what did she tell you? <laughs> Stick with Richard, yeah. Well, all right, maybe Chase hey, is up there. Be bad Otherwise, for that, you... <laughs> she's going to leave you for me. That's right. What about acid well, indigestion? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you what we do, yeah. Bob. Acid taste that. is your choice, have we? But if it comes up acid indigestion, you pay me the 500 bucks. Okay. Here we go. He wants acid taste. Acid <laughs> Let's rock. find out what's under the $100 number. Ha, acid rock. Ha ha. ha, 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 she said. Ha, 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 ha. Acid rock. Okay. Now, let's see if your acid taste is under the $250 number. Yes, it is. Oh, ah, yeah. ah. Acid you owe me 250 Okay. He says he owes me 250 <laughs> Well, I'm curious now. What is up there? Test. Test. Acid test. Acid After test. all this time we Acid test. No. no, Dawson is probably right. It's acid test. Okay, Earl, slide it. Yes, it is. All right. Who said You learned a lesson. Who said test? Dickie. Now, he did We're it. Through, no, he Bob. said it. He's always right. Yeah. We're through. You're through. Right. Hey, don't leave me yet. Don't leave me yet. Now, Bob, you're up to 11,900. Remember, you're going to meet another player now and see what happens. Let's welcome Judy Corden. Hello, Judy. How are you? Fine. Good. We welcome you. Thank you. You want to tell us where you're from? I'm from Canoga Park. Canoga Park. And I'm a part-time dental assistant in Panorama City, and I'm married. Uh-huh. Okay. That's it, huh? <laughs> That's it. Part-time dental assistant, eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Your teeth are okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Not on camera. I'll wait until they turn the cameras off. Now, in the meantime, while she's getting it together, we want you to watch this message. July 1st. Oh, hello there. What are you... What is, listen, is there somebody down there who's... She's tickling his fancy. Oh, I see. Tickling his fancy. Well, naturally. I don't want to get involved in that. Judy, you may have A or B. B, please. You want B? Huh? All right. I don't care, Judy. What did he say? <laughs> George said... What did he say? My first wife spent most of her life behind bars. Oops. She's not a criminal. She's a blank. <laughs> That's a cute question, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Just put it right in the slot there. And I'll come over here and I'll talk to Judy Corden. As soon as they're ready, Judy, you think about it now. I'll read it to you one more time. George said, my first wife spent most of her life behind bars. She's not a criminal. She's a blank. Barmaid? Barmaid. Okay. She said she's a barmaid. Don, what do you say to that? It's not funny, but it's a match. Bartender. Bartender. Okay. There's one. I like easy questions. She's a bartender, and I know her well. <laughs> Naturally. What do you I say? I don't relate to alcoholic questions. Ha! You don't? <laughs> you win. I chose a cashier in an Encino movie house. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, okay. Why? I got it because there were, I see there were bars on the window so that no one could break and enter and hold up the cash. Okay. Yeah. Ethel, what do you say? She's not a criminal. She's a She's a bartender. Bartender. There you go. <laughs> Show us your bartender, Richard. Yes. Here she is. She's okay. You play this game so well. Yes. yes. So far. Bartender. Bartender. Yes. Four for Judy. Boy, she's really rolling a number one. Unusual. 
I beg your pardon? It's unusual to get this many matches on the first round question. Oh, okay. All right, right. that makes it fine. And we thought we'd get animals, cats, dogs, and stuff like that on that. It just didn't happen. Everybody went for the same thing. What do you say, Bob? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Diane is so dull. Oh. How dull is Diane? Let me tell you, people treat her like a wall. That's how dull she is. Yesterday, a complete stranger walked up to Diane and blanked her. <laughs> treat her like a wall. A W-A-L-L wall. Oh, I have two of the greatest answers. Oh. Yeah, they're two it's good, good really terrific answers. Well, neither of Treat her like a wall. Yesterday, a total stranger walked up to her and blanked her. Thank you. There are a couple of Good. other ones. Yeah. Are... Does Charles look pale to you? Charles has a very attractive dimple in the middle of his chin, doesn't he? Cary Crant, no. Crant, Cary Crant. Cary Crant. I hear him. Crant. That's your friend. I wouldn't try. Gary Crant. <laughs> you ready, Bob? I think so. I think they're about sad, aren't they? Fanny, did you write something? I meant. No, she's writing something. All right. She's right. I'm I'll writing on it. Right. Diane is so dull, Bob. People treat her like a wall. Yesterday, a complete stranger walked up to Diane and blanked her. Papered? Papered is a good answer. Papered? Papered's a good answer. Treat her like a wall. That's what you do to a wall, right? What do you say? Some of them. She was built like a brick. <laughs> Well, they painted her. They painted her. Now, that would be the other good answer. Those are two good answers that I could think of. Did you think of something else? Think of something else what? These are the only glasses I could find. I can't see through them. I don't know where I am yes, or who I paper. am. Hold you up your card. It says paper. Oh, it says paper. Papered, okay. <laughs> what do you say, little boy? I said bumped into her. You're standing in the way of the camera. What's that? I said you're standing in the way of the camera. Can't Bumped hear a thing you say. <laughs> Bumped into her, he said. <laughs> okay. Ethel, a complete stranger walked up to Diane, treated her like a wall, and blanked her. Well, first I was going to say knocked her down, but I didn't. What did I you said, do to a wall? Painted her. Painted her. Well, he said paper. He, said Those paper, are the, yeah. he gave one of the two good answers. Yeah, and great, uh, sure. What do you say to this? There's another thing they do to Wall. What? They graffitied her. Graffitied her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to be there. When they <laughs> I'll let you yeah. out the eye. Okay. Yeah. Come. What are you saying, uh, uh, madam, there? Well, I got confused, and I said it, they put a nail in her. Nail in her. Well, you hang pictures on the wall? What yes. Do I know? Oh, that would smart something fierce. Uh, here we go with round two. Judy. Mm, B again. B. B again. Judy, Judy, Judy wants B again. Who plays? One person. Hello, Chuck. You ready? Big Chuck. Okay, Dimples, here we go. At the restaurant, Harry said, Waiter, is the steak aged? And the waiter said, Of course. Can't you see it has blank? I won't look. I'll let it be a surprise to me. And you stay out of it, too. You can't see without your glasses anyway, so what are you looking at? Oh, that's true. I'm Gene Rayburn. You remember me. Well, I will once we get to Encina. No! <laughs> now, Judy, at the restaurant, Harry said, Waiter, is a steak aged? And the waiter said, Of course. Can't you see? It has blank. It's burned. What? Burned. <laughs> See, do you know about aged meat? Some people do and some don't. I guess I don't. No, well, <laughs> they age beef. They let it hang at a certain temperature, which is not enough to preserve it and keep it from... Well, aged beef is putrefied flesh, is what it is. So next time you walk into a restaurant and ask for an aged steak, I just want you to know what you're asking for there. No, but they hang beef and age it to make it uh, tender. And, and uh, I don't like the taste of it all. I can't stand aged beef. Charles, what Thank do you, you say? Thank you for walking way over here. I chose wrinkles. Wrinkles. 
That's a good answer. Wrinkles, uh, you know, something old gets wrinkled there, Bob. Now, when we come back from this commercial, four to tie, five to win. You watch this and hurry back, see how it ends up. Ready, here we go. Now, Bob, it's up to you. Four to tie, five to win. Brett does not play. Everyone Why? else does. Nobody Weird Willie is an unusual dresser. He puts his socks on over his blank. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Good. Some good possibilities here. That's a nice answer, man. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. That's nice. Lay it in the slot, and away we go. Right. Now, Bob Law. Weird Willie is an unusual dresser. He puts his socks on over his blank. Shoes. Well, let's see what other imaginative answers we can get out of our celebrities. Shoes is such a simple answer. Simple. Direct, right straight to it. I guess it. simple people would think of shoes. <laughs> okay, Don. Score is now five to two. And Chuck, we're up to you. Shoes. <laughs> I've never seen yellow shoes before, have you? They look like a I yellow think submarine. I think Does anybody have any smelling salt? <laughs> oh, we got it down here, too. Yes, yeah. Ethel. Weird Willie's an unusual dresser. He puts his socks on over his shoes. There's only one answer. Shoes it is. <laughs> and now the score is five to four. Another pair of shoes here, and we got a tie score. Five to four. It's five to four. No, it's Time to leave. It yeah, so long. <laughs> but show us your answer before you go. Just, just that one. Shoes. All right. Fanny has a glazed look in her eye. She may be pretending that she doesn't have the correct answer. You see, she may be just funning us for a moment here, or she may have a weird answer. <laughs> I don't choose to tell you. But, <laughs> no, you know, I let that sweet man down one time. And I'm about to do it again. No, I'm just kidding. Shoes. Wow. Here's the game. God. <laughs> what do you want to do? You want to sit there? Or do you want to come down here and play the game? Okay. Remember, remember how it goes. It's only fifth time now. You come down here, now you stand on the blue fuzz on the carpet there. That's it there. And we say goodbye to this lady, Judy Corden. It was a pleasure to meet you, my dear. You. Judy Corden, ladies and gentlemen. Many gifts for you. Goodbye. Now, there it is, Bob. It's all yours. We polled the studio audience not too long ago, and we got their best response to this. Dorothy Blank. Remember, it's $500 for matching the most popular, $250 for the second, and $100 for the third. And whom do you call on? Richard Hamill. Dorothy Hamill? Fanny? Dorothy! <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy! L'Amour! <laughs> no. I was going to say that. Well, say it. Dorothy L'Amour. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. I was going to say Dorothy Shea, but then I thought I'd say Dorothy L'Amour. Who's Dorothy Hamill? It's a friend. <laughs> She's a tap dancer. Oh, I get it. One more. Okay. I'll oh. try Charles. All right, Chuck, have you got one? There were two Charles. Now, he's thinking. He always thinks as I, I write little poems. Can you pull the panel? Who's that one? Is that one? It's not bad. Ready? It's hard to talk when your sock is over your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. You Dorothy. should have taken the tongue out first. <laughs> Dorothy. Oh. I'm glad you're listening anyway. Come on, Chuck. Dorothy Collins. Okay, Dorothy Collins, Dorothy Lamour, and Dorothy oh, Hamill. Oh, I've got to go with Dorothy Hamill. Yeah. Okay. Let's find out if we got a Dorothy Hamill up there, especially on the higher numbers. But first, let's reveal the lower number, the $100 spot. Dorothy Malone. Yeah. Now let's see what's under the $250 number. Dorothy Hamill, congratulations. You got it by Joe. Now, what do we got under the $500? Lamour. 
Oh, oh shut up. Now you're going to play for ten times of money you just won, or $2,500. Whom do you call on? I'll go with Richard. Okay, here we go. It's worth $2,500. Good luck to you, Bob Long. Thank you. It reads as follows. School blank. School blank. All right, Richard's finished. Bob, give us an answer that matches his. We give you the money. School books. Books. Oh. <laughs> well, the moaners are after you. Days or books, and I school days books. or school books. Huh? So you said books. And the audience said school days, probably. That's why they're moaning, right, Richard? I said school bus. Ah. School bus. All right. Listen, Bob, you've got a total of $12,250. Congratulations to you. And now we've got this for you. Please join us next time around for Match Game 77. I'm Gene What's-His-Name. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 77, a Mark Hudson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the star, Snipsy Russell, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Rabbit, Ethel Merman. Richard Dawson and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene Rayburn! Johnny O, thank you, friends. Nice to have you with us. How are you, my dear? Fine. How are you, my dear? I am all right. Everybody okay? Oh, yes, we're all You may here. kiss my hand. Indeed, no, I I'll shall. kiss your Indeed. hand. <laughs> Don't let Anita Bryant hear about this. What are you doing? Didn't we say goodbye to you? Yes, but I thought you did it so well, I thought I'd come back. So we can say goodbye again. <laughs> she's back from Broadway already. <laughs> no, oh, she's no. not. You know Broadway, yet, though. Uh, the schedule no. has changed a little bit, and uh, we're happy to see you back again. And we again wish you bon voyage. I wish you'd go. <laughs> <laughs> First day. So I don't open until April the 8th. Oh, well, this show was taped in January. It's now April 10th. What's the date of the show? March 31st. I'm in rehearsal. Oh, I see. You are in rehearsal. Have a good time. Work hard. <laughs> Say hello to Patty Courier and Betty Willis. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> now, Patty's the current champion. She has $6,200. I know. Can't believe Isn't it. Isn't that wonderful? Fantastic. You've won a lot of money. Quite a bit. <laughs> and now you're being challenged here by Betty. We're going to go with the beginning of round two. You got to get on your horse and get going I there. I definitely do. Four to nothing is the score. You ready to play? I'm ready. All right, we'll be ready in one minute and five seconds. Makes me nervous. Harry, don't talk so loud. It makes me nervous. Just give me a simple, quiet ten and everything's going to be all ah. right there. All right, here we go. Second and final round. Betty, you may have A or B. I decided to stick with B. B it is. Yeah. All right. Everyone will participate since she did not match anyone in the first round. Nanook said, It is an old Eskimo custom that on their wedding night, the happy couple share their bed with a blank. <laughs> an old Eskimo custom. What? An old es An old Eskimo custom. On their wedding night, the happy couple share their bed with a blank. The Eskimo couple. It's an old custom on their wedding night. Share their bed with a blank. <laughs> Is your book out? No, it's coming out um, at the end of April. The end of April? Yes. And it's called Merman. Isn't that an interesting title for yeah. a lady named Merman? Why Edward do you want me to call it, Shirley? <laughs> <laughs> what should I call it? No. no. I'm looking forward to seeing that. You tell all? Uh, everything that I want to tell is in it. All, All the right. important things, yeah. <laughs> you talk a lot about Cole Porter, that wonderful person? Yes, George Eels wrote it. Good. All right, Betty, are you ready? Yes. Nanook said, is it, old, it is an old Eskimo custom that on their wedding night, the happy couple share their bed with a blank. With a polar bear? With a polar bear. <laughs> polar bear. 
That would be warm, but <laughs> dangerous, wouldn't it? Yeah, an Eskimo sleeps in a polar bear skin, so I have been told. Last night I slept in my bear skin, caught a heck of a cold. Naturally. <laughs> I said, I'll see you. They got a lot of those up there. I got a group with me. Yeah. I said seal, too. Two seals so I far. Know. Now, here's the way it is, Betty. You must match your four remaining celebrities to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Charles? I said dead fish. A dead fish? Yeah. What the rest of you have? Patty Curry, come right down here. Walrus seal sled dog. Betty, I'm going to shake your hand. Thank you. Nifty lady, and we're going to send you some gifts for Match Game 78. Betty Willis, okay. ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. Third time around, eh? You know how this goes. Shall we begin? Okay. We polled the studio audience not too long ago, Patty. We said, write down your best answer to this. R blank. Uh, you know how it goes. If you match the answer they gave most often, you get $500 for matching the second most popular answer, $250, and $100 for matching the third. And whom do you call on? Richard, please. Well, like Mayberry RFD. Oh. Mayberry RFD. Yeah, not oh, yes. Mayberry, but Rural free yeah. delivery, yeah. Okay, Fanny? Red, R-E-D. Red. Oh, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> R, uh, like a... Nurse, R-N? R-N. Yeah. Okay, okay. She's Charles? got... Oh, sorry. <laughs> R-X. R-X for a prescription. So those are the choices. Now think it over carefully, Patty. Got R-X, R-N, and R-F-D. I'll have Again. to go to Richard, please, because I can't think of anything at all. You can't? Uh-uh. He said R-F-D. Mary, okay. Mary, 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 yeah. Mary. Well, the Mayberry is, uh, doesn't have to be in there. R-F-D is what he said. We want RFD. May we see the $100 number? RSVP, if you please. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. May we see the $250 number? R&R, &R, rest and recreation. That's uh, yeah. kind of discouraging to see two up there that none of us thought about there. Uh, I bet it's going to be up there, though, the big one there. RFD, slide it. Uh, yeah. I was sure it was going to be there. I can't believe it. What a bunch of weirdos were here that day. <laughs> I'm glad you're here today, in case they pulled you. Well, listen, I'm Patty. I'm sorry you didn't win any money. You picked up another hundred dollars. You got a total of six thousand three hundred dollars, and you're going to meet another player. Here comes Laurel Grimaya. Hello there. Now, hello, Laurel. Hello. You know this lady? Yes. Hi. Laurel Grimaya. 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 How are you? Fine, how are, Where are you? Where are you from? I'm all right, thank you for asking. I'm from the Valley, and I'm a student yeah. studying fashion design at UCLA. Fashion design? Mm -hmm. Did you design that little number you're wearing? Yes. You did? <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck anyway, Laurel. <laughs> you have a choice here of A or B. A. You want A? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you mean, good luck anyway? That's a very pretty it's dress. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, very beautiful. What did beautiful. you mean by your remark? Well, by I meant by my remark, it's very distracting to me. It's hard for me to work oh, when somebody wears something. Like <laughs> well, good luck anyway. <laughs> Here it is, Laura. Listen carefully now. Muggsy said, "I grew up in a neighborhood that was so tough." It was so rough, instead of flipping coins, we used to stand in the park and flip blanks. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. But rough and tough. Yeah, the same very good Grew up in a neighborhood that was so rough, instead of flipping coins, we used to stand in the park and flip blanks. I can't hear him. Can you repeat that for me? <laughs> oh, he will once he gets over there. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to miss me when I'm gone. I'm going to miss you when you're gone. I didn't hear the question. Yeah, so you didn't hear the question? No. Oh, well, we Laurel, we've got to hear the question. Hair. Here it is. Muggsy said, I grew up in a neighborhood that was so rough, instead of flipping coins, we used to stand in the park and flip blanks. That's a tough, rough neighborhood. Yes. And you, know, the, you know how they flip coins. Well, these guys used to stand around and flip blanks. Cars. Cars. Well, that might have happened. Nipsey, what did you say? 
But now you're talking about a really tough neighborhood. Yes. It's got to be so tough, they used to flip the cops. That's it. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. All right. I figured they studied a little karate. They just flipped indiscriminately bodies. Bodies. Cops, anybody they had in mind there. Charles? What I did on Sullivan Street, Gene, when what I was, was a kid. It's not easy for me to try to talk this low. <laughs> I used to flip hubcaps. Hubcaps! Well, that would be a, a large <laughs> coin, wouldn't it? A hubcap. <laughs> Ethel? Yeah, we used to stand in the park and flip. Well, if they're real tough, they probably had guns, so I said they flip bullets. They would flip bullets. Yeah. Toss them around. Round one questions, you can go almost anywhere with them. Richard? I was going to say Flip Wilson, but I thought that's. <laughs> <laughs> statues. Statues in, in the park. park. That's right. Get the pigeons off and flip the statue. <laughs> what do you say? Well, they were really mean. I said they used to flip nuns. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. Oh. Well, that's a rough neighborhood. Oh, I, I didn't know it was that rough. Yeah, that's pretty rough. I think you're leaving in the nick of time there. <laughs> After you've gone, all right. So, we'll have a question for you in a moment or so, Patty. Right now, we've got this just for you. If you'd like to come to the studio out here in Hollywood and see Max Game 78 in person, we'd love to meet you. Write to us. And close the self address stamp envelope and mail to tickets. Max Game 78 at CBS Television City, 7800 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90036. Now we are ready to do the other round one question for Patty Courier, which says. Any quotes? I had to send for my jacket. I was so cold up here. Is it cold? Yeah. Well, the lights will well, warm up the studio right in a few Don't moments. It's going to be all right. Poor Roger's been running back and forth. <laughs> Harry said, ever since I started working at the helium factory, strange things are happening. On my way to work this morning, my blank started rising. Ever since I started working at the Helium Factory, strange things are happening. On my way to work this morning, my blank started rising. This is a, a difficult question. <laughs> it definitely is. Good. All right. Oh, interesting. All right. Okay. Hello, Patty. Hi there. Here it is. Harry said, ever since I started working at the helium factory, strange things are happening. On my way to work this morning, my blank started rising. Are you familiar with the gas helium? Yeah. Yes, you know, it's lighter than air. Oh, jeez. Um, let's see. The only thing I can think of is voice, you, you know, it my rises voice. when you inhale the air. It makes your voice oh, that's talk right. high. Makes it sound like we Mickey Mouse. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. Yes. You're, when you swallow some of that, or when you inhale some of that helium and you yeah. start to talk, you sound like Mickey Mouse. So she yeah. said, my voice started rising. Well, when you're working, you get paid, so my expectations started rising. Expectations. I see. <laughs> What'd you say there? I said my hair Hair started going right up there. Charles, we need one from you. Hair rises every morning. <laughs> That's why I put that on a hat. My hat started rising. So we have three different answers up there. Patty's looking for the answer, voice. Ethel? Yeah. Well, sometimes they say, like, if a, if a girl is well-built, they say uh, she looks like she's blown up with helium. Yes. So I said that it might be that his stomach started to rise. His stomach? My stomach started well, rising. Well, inhaling the stuff. Yes. Was, it, yes. was that a natural reaction? I think so. Wow. We're playing yes. a great game, aren't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we four different answers so far here. You make it five. I'm going to take my hat off to you. That was an excellent... Explanation. All right, I've got two of those so far. What do you say there, Fan? Well, I said the body, the whole body. The whole body yeah. started rising. Well. I wasn't too thrilled with that question, but you can't win them all, can you? Here we go to round two now. Laurel, you may have A or B. Try A this time. You had B last time. Yes. Now you want A. Okay. I think. The princess said. Oh. Did I? The princess said the frog was wrong. He said if I kissed him, he'd turn into a prince. Well, I kissed him, but all he did was blank. <laughs> Wonderful. Got it. Got it. Now 
Now watch us make some mileage. Right. All right, Laurel, now think about this. The princess said the frog was wrong. He said if I kissed him, he'd turn into a prince. Well, I kissed him, but all he did was... Smile? Oh. I'm really bombing out, aren't I? <laughs> now you're gonna hear some good answers over here. Okay. Maybe, maybe all six of our celebrities yeah. will say the same thing now. Hold on here. Oh. Nipsey? Well, we human beings die but once, but a frog croaks every day. Croaks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Keep on smiling, keep on croaking. All right, that's two of those. Charles? I wouldn't sing when Ethel Merman's on the show. <laughs> she wasn't singing, she I was wouldn't croaking. even sing if Betty White was on the show. <laughs> They're just fun enough there. I know. They... She's my good friend. I love her. Uh, oh, I said, oink, oink, croak, croak. Got four of those so far? Ribbit. Show us your ribbit. Ribbit. There it is. <laughs> Five. Fanny? Well, I said he jumped. He jumped. Fanny croaked. Well, I uh, kissed him, but all he did was jump. Well, that could have been a possibility. Laurel, I'm really <laughs> sorry for you, my dear. We'll uh, put uh, this lady's right in the catbird seat. All she had to do is match one, and she will have won her fourth game. Let's see what happens right after you see about this. Today's consolation prizes are first the Hoover Celebrity 2 with more carpet cleaning power and the other make canister. Another good reason why America trusts Hoover. And Prince Gardner, matching leather accessories, smartly styled for fashion conscious men or women, a perfect gift to find named Prince Gardner. And cook Juicy Burgers fast with a completely immersible Toastmaster Sizzler electric hamburger maker. Cooking surface is coated with the real McCoy of non-stick finishes, Teflon 2. And Pilot Razor Point and Fine Liner Marker Pens, extra fine and fine line pens with the sturdiness to write two carbons you'll never write so fine. Once again, here's Gene Rayburn. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Here we go. This is the last question of the last round. Patty, remember what you have to do? Okay. All you need is one to win. Only one. Dumb Donald is really dumb. He's so dumb. <laughs> when he bought a pair of saddle shoes, he was upset because they didn't come with blank. <laughs> That's how dumb Dumb Donald is. All right. Okay. You are all right. Okay. We Here we go with Patty Courier. Dumb Donald is really dumb, Patty. He's so dumb when he bought a pair of saddle shoes, he was upset because they didn't come with blank. Okay, isn't stirrups what you put your feet in? Yes. Yeah. Stirrups and Stirrups what okay. you put your feet in. Okay. One a pair of stirrups will win the game for Patty. Well, I'm afraid I'm dumber than Donald. I said it didn't come with a horse. A horse? They like that one. What did you say? I said it didn't come with spurs. Spurs? <laughs> it's looking good, Laurel. Charles? A horsey. A horsey. Yes. Well, Patty, I, told you. I, I thought you'd certainly have a win by now with stirrups. Oh, I wouldn't have seen it. And, and uh, Charles, I said a horse. Horses seem to be the popular favorite so far. Richard, show us your horse. I'm against Snipsy and Charles, but I also <laughs> said horse. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hold everything. Go. Horse. A horse. Sorry. Everybody oh. said horse. That really I didn't even so think of that. <laughs> so you would have said horse too yes. if you'd been playing. <laughs> well, we're all weird on this day. Okay. Now we've got to erase this big score that they piled up. <laughs> and uh, push the button here and go to one tie-breaking question for each. The one who's matched the most celebrities will be the winner. Laurel, again, you may have A or B. 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 Mm -hmm. You're feeling relaxed now. Now you're really going to go, right? Uh. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Fred said, I'm suing the rotten construction company that built my house because instead of mortar, the bricks were held together with blank. <laughs> instead of mortar, the bricks were held together with blank. Very good. It is easy for you. 
That is the biggest wristwatch I've ever seen. That's wonderful. Yeah, I got that in, in, in London. Look at this. Isn't that nice? Well, huh, that... You can't miss the time there, can you? Isn't that something? Looks like Big Ben. Yeah. Or Little Ben, I don't know. All right. Now, Laura, Fred said I'm suing the rotten construction company that built my house because instead of mortar, the bricks were held together with blank. Glue. Glue. Yay! I couldn't think of anything else. Could you? Yes, I did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you said a bad construction company. The bricks were held together with jello. Oh. Jello. Well, well, all right. Want to pass quickly? Yes. <laughs> we'll get off of you. Well, you've heard of spit and polish. They're held together with spit and glue. Spit and glue. All right, there's one for you, Laurel. The word glue appeared in the answer. Charles? Silly putty. Silly putty. <laughs> you thought I was bad, huh? <laughs> okay, so far, Laurel has one. Ethel? I said glue. Glue it is. Now she has two. Glue for me. And glue for two. And glue for two. Fanny chose your glue. I wish I could. I said polydent. Polydent. <laughs> now, Patty, three to tie, okay. four to win. This is it. The patient said, I never should have had my operation on Thanksgiving. That rotten surgeon filled my incision with blank. <laughs> All right. Put them in the slot as soon as you're finished. The patient said, I never should have had my operation on Thanksgiving. That rotten surgeon filled my incision with... Stuffing. Stuffing. Okay, Nipsey. Quick decision. Turkey dressing. Turkey dressing. Same thing. Okay, there's one. What are you stuffing? Stuffing. <laughs> one more tie to Chestnut score. Dressing. Chestnut dressing. Oh. Tie score. One more stuffing will win the game, Patty. Well, only thing to stuff her with stuffing. 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 <laughs> stuffing. Okay, here we go. Laurel, good luck to you in your career in fashion designing. We're going to send Thank some you. gifts to you from Match Game 78. Thank Laurel you. Grimaglia, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to spit a commercial message or two for you, then hurry back. Well, it's been a pleasure being with you and you two, dear friends. Hope you'll join us tomorrow for Match Game 78. I'm Gene Rayburn. Goodbye. Speaking for match game 78. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Get ready to match the stars. Nipsey Russell. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley. Ethel Merman. Richard Dawson and Fanny Flay as we play the star-studded big money match game 78. And now, here's the star of match game 78, Gene Rayburn. Thank you, John. Friends. Got a lively bunch here today. Thank you. You feel lively today? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'll be approached. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Anything you say. Is everybody all right? Hi, sweetie. Patio porch. Yes. Eh? Uh -huh. Yes. It's a play that we'll be opening uh, either April 8th. April 8th. The Cornet Theater in New York. That's next week. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You know what Richard did? What did he do? He it's told actually, me we th went to Mexico. Week. This show goes yes, to Mexico? Yes, and I said, hello, Mexico. And then he told me, we don't even go to Mexico. <laughs> it so, so hello, happens, Tennessee. Ollie, that we do I go know to we Mexico. Do. Yes, we, we do, do go we do. to Mexico. On cable, I've seen it. Yeah. Mexico City, yes. But I don't even speak Spanish. How do we go to Mexico? 
Well, they put a see sign us up. speaking Spanish. <laughs> no, I know. I saw us in Mexico City. <laughs> you did? Really? Yep. Yeah. How was it? Well, we were canceled instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't understand us. Listen, in English, and perhaps translated into Spanish too, in a Mexican publication, will be Ethel Merman's book coming out very soon yes. called Merman. And it's about her life and show that I Mermano in Mexico. Right. Hello, yeah. Patty Curry and Larry Lord. Patty's current champ, she has $9,350. Ho, ho, ho. Larry? Three. Larry's had two shots out of the here. He's matched three of our celebrities. And that means uh, you have one question to go. You need three to tie and four to win. Okay. Think you're going to do it again? I hope so. It'll be the sixth game. You'll go over $10,000 if that happens. The I'll 11th faint. tiebreaker. <laughs> What's that? Sixth game and the 11th tiebreaker. That's right. She's had more Larry. tiebreakers than anybody we've ever had here. Well, Eleven tune in ulcers. in a minute and five seconds. See what goes on here. Here we go. Now, Patty... Your shot, three to tie, four to win. Marcia said, it's tough being married to an Englishman. He even yells tally-ho when he blinks. Is that your answer? Bon voyage. Bon voyage. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you finished? Okay. Now, Patty, Marcia said, it's tough being married to an Englishman. He even yells tally ho when he blinks. Makes love. Makes love. Okay. <laughs> Nipsey, what'd you say? Tally ho mean day go. Makes love. I like your artwork. Riding horseback. Oh, no, that's not right, because that's when you... That's what they do there, Certainly. yes, of course. course. Da, 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 da. Making whoopee. That's two for her. Little whoopee here? Yeah, well, it could be. It depends on how you look at it. I say it's when he goes to the laboratory. Oh, I see. <laughs> Charles. I'm drinking, I'm drinking skim milk. You are drinking skim milk. That's to line his stomach for the bourbon later on. I see. <laughs> Score is three to two. It's tough being married to an Englishman. He even yells tally-ho when he... Makes love. Makes love. Three to three. One more lovemaking session will win the sixth game for Patty Courier. It will be the death of me, I'll tell you. <laughs> Tally ho! Tally ho! Larry, good luck in your teaching career. I know the kids are going to love a nifty guy like you. Larry Thank Lord, you. we're going to send you some gifts and all kinds of stuff. Larry Lord. Excuse me. It's all right. Now, here we go one more time. One more time. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Steve Blank. You got $500 for matching their most popular answer, $250 for the second most popular, and $100 for the third. Okay, Richard, please. Richard, what do you say to this? My son Gary's godfather, Steve Allen. Steve Allen, right. Nipsey? Steve McQueen. Right. Steve McQueen. You got two now. Oh, boy. Um, Charles. I know, I know. Sure, because you look over there. I didn't here. look over there. Sure. Have another glass My of personal milk. friend, Steve Lawrence. Steve Lawrence. All right. You got Lawrence, Allen, and McQueen. You want one of those? Yep. McQueen. Which one? Steve Allen. That's what I thought of. I thought of Steve Allen. Imagine it'd be McQueen. But All right. I thought of Allen. <laughs> you think it'll be McQueen, but you thought of Allen. Yeah. All right. Okay. She, she wants Steve Allen, but don't we all want Steve Allen? Oh, yes. yes. We don't want it much, but we want it. Oh, yeah, let's get down there to the bottom and see what's under the $100 number. Steve Lawrence. There's one answer that Charles gave you. May we see the $250 number? Steve McQueen. What did I tell you? Right on. Stick with the kid. What do you think? Steve Allen? 
You're almost over the $10,000 mark. You got $9,950. Now, you can go over that mark because you're now going to play for $5,000. And remember what you have to do. Okay, my best friend, Richard, please. All right. Uh -huh. Here we go. Six times she's had to go at the $5,000. Here we go. Good luck to you. Blank reckoning. Blank reckoning. It's easy for me. What about for you? Blank reckoning. I can't think of anything. Honestly. Well, now you must say something. Okay, um. Blank reckoning. Does it sound familiar to you at yeah, all? Yeah, it does, but I can't remember the word of it. Um, okay, let's just say new reckoning. I don't, I can't, there's a word I can't yeah. think of. <laughs> yeah. No, it was my husband. Oh, so your husband is giving you the Bronx <laughs> yes, cheer out was. there. <laughs> Get out. I'd throw him uh, right out. He should new She said new reckoning just because she couldn't think of it. I thought there were two. One in navigation, which is uh, dead, dead reckoning, dead right? reckoning, or the day of reckoning. Yeah. Is that what you were trying to think of? Well, I couldn't give you any help. I knew you had it on the tip of your tongue, but I was just hoping oh, well, we'd give you enough time please. to say it, and we gave you as much time as we could, Appreciate and you didn't. It. But anyway, Patty, you've got $9,950, and I wouldn't give any of it to him if he gives you a Bronx cheer with almost 10000 Right. Here, watch this message, and then hurry back. If you'd like to come to the studio out here in Hollywood and see Mass Game 78 in person, we'd love to meet you. Write to us and close the self-addressed stamped envelope and mail to tickets. Mass Game 78 is CBS Television City, 7800 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90036. Now let's all welcome a new player here is Sarah Coart. Hello, Sarah. Thank you. Before we begin, we'd like to find out a little bit about you, where you're from, and what you do with your life and all that sort of thing. What do you want to tell us? Would you believe Oceanside, California? Oceanside, California. It's a nice place. Yes, it's just beautiful. We came here to play a lot. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. We retired to play. We retired early so we could play more. What kind of games do you play? Oh, we just run up and down the coast, and of course I'm playing right now, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> And we just do all kind of fun things. Are we having fun? Oh, wonderful. Good. Okay, Sarah. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Would you like uh, A or B? I think B for beautiful. B for beautiful. That's a lovely thought. Here it is, Sarah. Jill said, It's strange being married to a jeweler. For our golden anniversary, he gave me a solid gold replica of his blank. <laughs> It's like this. Isn't it a challenge? It is a challenge. I took this job because I thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never liked work. <laughs> well, this is as close. Well, Charles says always that it's a social event. It's really not a job because we all have such a good time, and he's right. While you're telling what these people are going to do right. in their future weeks, would you point out that I am currently this day, this night, appearing in Las Vegas? At the Sands Hotel. Indeed I am. I'm sorry, Nipsey, we can't mention oh, the you Sands can't, Hotel in Las Vegas. And I promised Vegas. Sergio Frankie I would tell his friends. Man, I can't mention there. Sergio can't Frankie. It. Those will oh, right. break the cameras if you say next that word. Next time we'll yeah, try. Yeah, next time we'll try and do it. Okay, Sarah. Oh, not finished. Well, I can't think of a thing. I, I mean, I can think of one thing. Is Chuck finished? Yeah. Yo, Gene. Oh. Jill said it's strange being married to a jeweler. For our golden anniversary, he gave me a solid gold replica of his blank. Mother. Mother. Very good answer. A wife wouldn't be too thrilled with that, now would she? It would be a strange gift to give a solid gold replica of his mother. No, when she said jeweler, I thought of other things that have to do with that. He gave me a solid gold replica of his diamond cutter. Of his diamond cutter. Yes. <laughs> okay, Brett. 
I wasn't crazy about that question. I suppose it's because I didn't come up with much. I said it's all a gold replica of his mouth. That's okay. okay. All right, that's all right. It's not a terrific question, but, you know, that's not bad. What do you say? It's a terrific question, Gene, because some people get the perfect answers. Oh, mother! There it is. That's one for Sarah. Solid gold replica of his... Of his dog. Of his dog. That would be weird. Dog, yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's and what do you say to this? I say mother. Mother! To <laughs> Sarah. Mom. Uh, where are you from? Originally. I thought... <laughs> well, um, Colorado Springs, Colorado for 20 years. Where were you born? Mississippi. I knew yes, it. Yes, that's right. That's wow. right. Three for mother. It's difficult to conceal, Sarah, the fact uh, that you were raised in the South here. Nerdo Crumbesia is such a strange place. It's the only country in the world where the freeway signs are written in blank. <laughs> yeah, that's our mythical, rotten, sleazy, no good country. Tacky. Freeway signs are written in blank. Are you thinking about this one? Very much. <laughs> that town. <laughs> you don't like Nerdo Convivio? Mm -mm. We're not too fond of it either. Here we go. Nerdo Convivio is such a strange place. It's the only country in the world where the freeway signs are written in blank. In Braille? Braille? Yeah. Oh, well. I don't know. Braille is one possibility. What do you say? You're not going to give me that vicious look of disapproval that you sneak on us when we have bad answers, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Braille. Oh, look at that. Look at Gene smiling. Carl, <laughs> uh, what do you got there? Every time you see a sign, you have to get out of your car and go like that. Braille. Oh, yeah. It would make it very difficult, wouldn't it, to drive a Nerdo Crumbesia? These are Nerdo Crumbesia. What's the name of the Nerdo Crumbesia. These are the street signs. They look blank to me, Charles. That's clever, because they're written in invisible ink. Invisible ink. Is... That's a good answer, isn't it? Uh -huh, I like that one. Three to two right now. It's so hard to pronounce. I said Braille. Braille. Okay, three to three to score. Doing I okay have been that. to uh, Nerdo. You don't have to get out the car, Brett. What, you don't have to get out the car. You don't want to. No, no, you just hit the sign. Oh, <laughs> I see. Or and that'll, then you can tell where you are. Right. Bing. What you got there? I said they were written in crayons. Crayons is good. Very good. Well, we got a pretty tight game going here. Four to three in your favor, Patty. More to come after this. Today's consolation prizes are first. From Kinney Shoes, the great American shoe store, and up to the minute selection of fashion footwear, Kinney Shoes not only fit your feet, they fit your life. And Foster Grant sunglasses with polarized mirror and gradient lenses. Isn't that you behind those Foster Grants? And a tote bag, and a supply of Hawaiian tropics. From across the Pacific comes Hawaiian tropic natural tanning lotions and oils, Hawaiian tropic, the scent of the coconut, the town of the islands, Hawaiian tropic. And a warming tray, and a supply of new Baroni Parmesan with five minute side dish from Golden Green, tender thin rare cheeses, it'll bold Italy. And now back to Mr. Unpredictable, Gene Reggie. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Here we go with round two. This is the final round, Sarah. You want A or B? I won't B, please. You won't B? Okay, Sarah. Three people play. Nipsey, Brett, and Ethel. Good. Right. Robinson Crusoe uh, said to Friday, see that coconut over there? I don't want you coming within 15 feet of it. That coconut is my blank. <laughs> Just a minute, hon. Come there over it is. here. Robinson Crusoe said to Friday, See that coconut over there? I don't want you coming within 15 feet of it. That coconut is my blank. Thank you. Well, I thought of that. Okay. Finished? Now, Sarah, Robinson Crusoe said to Friday, see that coconut over there? 
I don't want you coming within 15 feet of it. That coconut is my blank. Dinner tonight. That's coconut is my dinner tonight. Tonight. Okay. Oh. That coconut is my dinner tonight. Oh. What do you say to that, Nipsey? Well, you see, they'd been on this island quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> Just Robinson. Right. And Friday. Yeah. And Robinson Crusoe was a religious man. Yes. <laughs> he never worked on Friday. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. 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 That coconut is my wife. Really? What do you say? There were no ministers on the other. There's only girl, uh, Friday and Robinson Crusoe, my girlfriend. That coconut is my girlfriend. Now, you must match Ethel to stay in the game, Sarah. Yeah. Here it is. Oh, I guess when you're on an island that long, anything looks good. I suppose right. so. So I said wife. You said wife. <laughs> so that means Patty wins her seventh game. You're not ready to go. There you go. Well, Sarah, Match Game 78 is going to send you a whole pack of gifts. Oh, thank you, It's a pleasure to meet you, Sarah. Oh, it's wonderful being here. Thank good. you so much. Sarah Cohen, ladies and gentlemen. There she goes. Well, now, Patty, you're over ten thousand. You got ten thousand and fifty dollars, and you're gonna have another shot at it. If you you could go over fifteen thousand if you do well here. Let's see how it goes. We polled this studio audience not too long ago. Shh. What the heck is going on next door? A rock group is playing next door. The Dinah Shore Show. I see. Cool it, Dinah. All right. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank Tom. Remember, $500 for matching the most popular, $250 the second, and $100 for the third. Whom do you call her? Richard, please. Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. Yeah, that's what they got going next door there. Uncle Tom. All right. Got Charles. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Charles. Right. Think of my homeland. I think we did that already. No. Tom Tom, Uncle yeah. Tom. Oh, you got that. We got Tom Tom. 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 Must pay Tom. attention, Nipsey. Yes. Blank Tom. Tom Tom. Bot Tom. What? Bot Tom. Bot Tom. <laughs> B O T T O M. Oh. All right. Bot Tom. We well, we got two for you. A choice of two. Uncle Tom. Or Tom Tom. You want one of those? You may have a better. You may have a better one. Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom, it is. All right, that's Fanny's answer. Let's find out if Uncle Tom is up there. May we see the hundred-dollar number? You got it right off the bat. Let's see the two-fifty number. Peeping Tom. Oh, wonderful. Now you know what's going to be on top, don't you? Tom, Tom. Yes. Mm -hmm. A little too late, though, Patty. All right, slide it, Ori. There it is. Tom, Tom. Well, listen, you've got $100 more. You're over, you got $10,150. You're going to play for 1000 right now. And uh, I guess we know who you want to call on. Richard. Please. Here we go again. Good luck to you, Patty. Worth $1,000, and this is what it says. Used blank. U-S-E-D blank. Used blank. Okay. <laughs> Now, give us the answer that Richard has written on the card, Patty. We give you another thousand dollars. You'll have eleven thousand one hundred and fifty if you match Richard now. I said use this card because I'm going to get a new one. You're going to get a new one with the money you got, right? Okay, Richard. She said used cars will match you for a thousand dollars. I thought you meant the the wheels. Used cars. Cars. There you go. Congratulations, Patty Courier. Now we've got a message or two just for you. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. So say goodbye. 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 Are we all say goodbye? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not the Coronet Theater. Fanny's not going to be at the Coronet. It's the Century Theater. 
Are you sure? Place. Yeah. You, are you May kidding? I give a word of advice to America? In the wrong place. Yes. Before they go either to the Coronet Theater to see Patio Porch or to the Century, look in your New York Times. <laughs> late for late when it opens. Teen Raver here. Join us next time for Match Game 78. Good luck with Patio Porch, Fanny. Bye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 78, a Mark Gibson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the stars, Nipsey Russell, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, from Family Feud, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Roberts! Thank you, John. Thank you, friend. Nice of you to join us here on Match Game PM. We're going to have a good time. A Hello, celebrity. Hello. Hello. Would you join me in greeting our two players, Becky Roddy Why and Bob not? Bixler? Yeah. Now, before we begin, we'd like to find out a little bit about each of you. Bob, will begin with you. Tell us anything you care to about your life, oh, your right aspirations, on. your hopes, your dreams. <laughs> I'm from Fountain Valley, and I have a wife and three children, and I'm five foot twenty-two. <laughs> and a what? Uh, uh, Breaks six down ten. to 6'10 6'10 ten. Six ten. Oh. Are you 6'10? Are you really? 6'10 Really? Stand up for a second, Bob You are 6'10 oh. <laughs> Wow <laughs> Boy, when I ask him, do you want A or B? He can have anything he wants I mean. <laughs> And both Ask him to fix that line. Wow How tall are you, Becky? Uh, so I don't, you don't know how tall you are? Five, five and a half. How about that? Really? Yeah, I think. Right okay. now it's un uncertain. Where do you live? <laughs> Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus Christi. Yeah. Right down there at the tip of Texas. Way down at the bottom of the state. Yeah. You Forever vacationing away. here? Well, let's say that. I don't have a job, so I thought I'd come out here and seek my fortune. All right. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thanks. Uh, may I point out to each of you here that on Match Game PM, each of you will have three opportunities to match as many of our beautiful people as you possibly can. The one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner. And that person will go on to play the Big Money Super Match, which pays off over $10,000. Good luck to both of you. Bob, A or B? I'll try B. Bob Bixler wants B. The passenger said to the stewardess, Yuck, bleh. this airline food is terrible. And the stewardess said, we haven't served any food yet, sir. You're eating the blank. <laughs> the passenger said to the steward, yuck, this airline food is terrible. And the stewardess said, we haven't served any food yet, sir. You're eating the blank. How about that little courtesy bag they give you? The courtesy bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? He said the little courtesy bag they give you. He's cute. Yeah, he's that's tall, a but polite he's cute. way to put it. He is cute. Yeah. And he's big. Yeah. Well, cute and is I not the right word. And I want you to know word. if anything starts any trouble, I'm on your side, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't served any food yet. No. You're eating the seat cushion. Good answer. <laughs> seat cushion is a possibility. Well, his wasn't bad. Seat cushion is good too. It's a wonderful answer. He's a wonderful man. I wouldn't dream of not uh, matching, matching him. him. The bag you will later use to get rid of the food. <laughs> There's one. All right. The seat in front of you. <laughs> the seat in front of you. I was a little late with the cue. I, little... I see. It's all right. Okay. Bob Bixler is looking for the courtesy bag, a marvelous euphemism. The pillow. The pillow. Another good answer. Anything that you'd find around your seat, I suppose, would be good, yes. right, Richard? Well, I'm sorry, I, I copied the pillow. Hello. The pillow. It was a night flight. You copied from her. Yep. I really. Did. <laughs> <It's a> standoff. <laughs> Fanny, what have you got there? 
He was very delicate and said the courtesy bag. I think it's That's uh, lovely. very well put. In the South, and if you're, particularly if you're afraid of flying, you say, the throw up! <laughs> <laughs> Becky, you ready? As this is it. Here it is. Bernie is the world's greatest salesman. He once sold a bra to blank. <laughs> Remember uh, first round Got questions? <laughs> there are a lot of good answers for first round questions. Becky. Bernie is the world's greatest salesman. He once sold a bra to blank. Twiggy. Twiggy. She says Twiggy. <laughs> Twiggy, you remember who? The greatest Twi salesman, as you know, was my Uncle George. What about Uncle George? He worked in a department store. A woman came in to buy a suit to bury her dead husband. He sold her a suit with two pairs of pants. <laughs> <laughs> Twiggy. Some salesman, all right. One for Becky. A two pant suit. Well, Twiggy always wore a minus A cup, but I said it really <laughs> terrific salesman if he could sell a bride to Joe Namath. That would be a salesman. <laughs> yeah. Twiggy. Twiggy it is. I wonder if she's still that way. I haven't seen a yeah. picture she put of her. Wait, I but was she... with her quite recently. Oh. Really? Oh. She looks marvelous. She's uh everything's just turning out fine. No kidding. <laughs> No, honestly. She did put on yeah. Very shady. She did put on, yeah, she did put on some weight. How wonderful but, for all concerned. But she yeah. was flat chested when I said Twiggy. You said Twiggy. Yeah. All right, now you got three, three, two score. But she's a very nice girl. She is, yes. Sweet, sweet lady. lady. Twiggy. There it is. Four for her. Uh oh. Hi, precious. Yes, darling. No, Twiggy gained a little weight. She wasn't happy. Thin people are not happy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bad for them. Well, look at this. We've only done one round already. It's five to two. You're both very good there. You'll have plenty of time to catch up. Now we've got this for you. This is not a serving tray for food. <laughs> this is the box containing the home version of the match game, which each and every one of you will receive whether you want it or not. There it is. Okay, now we go to round two. And Becky, since you're ahead, we're going to ask you to go first. All right, how about B? B? All right. Who plays? Brett plays. Brett is the only one. Oh. That's true. Flora has gained so much weight, she now needs a giant shoehorn to wedge herself into her blank. <laughs> hi, hi. Hello, darling. Needs a giant shoehorn to wedge herself into her blank. Dear, you did it. Bye, Joe, she did Finished. it, Becky. Flora has gained so much weight, she now needs a giant shoehorn to wedge herself into her blank. Girdle. Girdle. <laughs> Lady, you still wear those? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she said girdle. No, no, this was, oh, uh, she was really fat. I mean, you can get girdles in any size, but oh. you can't stretch a car. Oh, a car. <laughs> That's true. You cannot stretch a car, Becky. Okay, that leaves you... Bob with A. Is that all right I'll, with you? I'll take A. You sure? <laughs> Positive. Because we can give you B if we you want, you know. But... I didn't like that one. All right. Mary said, mm -hmm. I'm not saying my boyfriend is a thief, but after he kisses me, I count my blanks. I don't play because I'm at... Ryan, you and Fanny do not play. Big Bob. After he kisses me, I count my blanks. <sighs> There's a lot more than kissing and hugging going on. They've been going steady for three and a half years, but this is not a lecture tour. Bob, Mary said, I'm not saying my boyfriend is a thief, but after he kisses me, I count my blanks. Uh, BB, big boobs. Oh. <laughs> really? Well, he's... Uh, <laughs> That's another euphemism. First he said BBs, and oh. then it stands for big boobs there. You what see, you... I thought it was one of the look ma, no hands kind of kissing. Uh, I said, yeah, I count my teeth. Teeth. Okay. Make up your mind. <laughs> what do you got oh, there? Teeth. Teeth. See? Did that cross your mind at all, Bob? No, not at all. You didn't think of teeth there. 
What have you got there, Ethel? Well, I thought that he may want to go further, so she counts her blessings. Oh. That's, <clears throat> That's nice. Sweet thought, isn't it? it? Certainly is. I said lips. Lips. Count your lips. <laughs> He'd be there. Okay. There it is. The score remains unchanged. Five to two. Becky, you're still ahead, so we're going to ask you to go first. I think I'll go with A. I. A. I. A. <laughs> I. Now, Becky and all of the attendants, here's what to do when the party's over. One, thank the host or hostess. Two, take the lampshade off your head. Three, get your blank out of the punch bowl. All right, she's just about ready. And I'll read it slowly while she's writing. Here's what to do when the party's over, Becky. One, thank the host or hostess. Two, take the lampshade off your head. Three, get your blank out of the punch bowl. <laughs> uh, my original thought was head. Head. I mean, no, oh, come on. <laughs> get your head out of the punch bowl. Oh. The... She said. Stop. Some of you are, and some of you aren't in favor of the whole idea. What do no, you say? No, they're not schizophrenic. They're just plain old fickle. <laughs> fickle. I said hobby, or bow, or lover, or paramour of the moment. Okay. A whole nother body, according to her, was in that. Here we go. Bob, now here's what you have to do. You have to match three to tie and four to win. Everybody plays again except Brett and Fanny. Brenda said, my new husband, the cowboy, the cowboy, isn't very genteel. On our wedding night, he came to bed with his blanks on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, this is it, Bob. Brenda said, my new husband, the cowboy, isn't very genteel. On our wedding night, he came to bed with his blanks on. Spurs, I hope. Yeah. Spurs. <laughs> Spurs it is, Nipsey. Well, you know, a cowboy is a man of action. When he says, giddy up, he means, let's see some movement. Spurs. Spurs. Five to three. Charles. I said boots. Boots. Okay. Now, Bob, you got to match everyone else to stay in the game and achieve a tie. I, I meant to say spurs, and I said stirrups. Oh, I'm sorry. It says stirrups there, so that means Becky wins the game. Richard had spurs. So well, here we go. Becky coming down. Right there, if you would, please. We'll say goodbye to Bob. Uh, Dixler, it was a pleasure, pleasure to have you on our program. We're going to send lots of gifts to you. Well, some so. Adler elevator shoes. I need them. We've got some <laughs> wonderful things like that. Stand up one more time, would you? <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> Always wanted to meet a man I could look up to. Thank you, Bob Dixler. Right home. There he goes. Man Mountain Dean. Now I got a message or two for you. Come back and see how much money she wins. The whole thing? Right. Oh boy. Here we are with Becky Roddy, who's going to try for the big money now. Now, at this moment, uh, she has a chance to win $11,000. Yeah. That's it. She could win $11,000. If she goes all the way here, she could. Well, well I don't know about that. <laughs> what I mean is... She doesn't look well, like I don't that know what I mean. Girl. She completes the process. <laughs> How can she win 11? I thought you could only well, win no, 10. Well, no, we got two audience... Well, here, let me explain it okay. to you now. Here's I want the way to chip goes. in a couple of dollars if <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank it you. goes all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, Richard. No, that's not what we had in mind. I mean in the game here. Well, that's see. what I'm talking no. about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, all right. Life's a game, old boy. Well, life, it is. A game. Now, let me explain to you, Fanny. Here's the way it is. We see we have two audience matches here. Right. You see? Yeah. And then whatever she wins in that audience match is multiplied by 10. Right. 
and then that will be the final dollar amount that you will be playing for in the head-to-head. -head. 500, 500 on the first one. You right, that's five. That by 10. That's 5,000. Yeah. Now the next time, May you I want another 500. Things? Right, that's another 5,000. So she would be playing for 10. Yeah, but then, you see, she gets to keep the 500. 500 she wins five, each time, times two. Sales. That's $11,000. Fanny has to go to a funeral. She's What's, wearing black. Oh, yes. <laughs> What I'd like to know if I could be a contestant. Yeah. <laughs> no, you cannot be a contestant. No, no. It's against the rules here. Here we go now. We polled the studio audience. I'd like to thank you from the bottom. As well you should. We polled the studio audience. We said, write down your best answer to this. <laughs> Blank the bed. Now. If you match the answer they get, well, I explained all that. $500 for their top answer, $250 for matching the second most popular answer they wrote down, and $100 for matching the third. Now, three of these six people gonna help you, as they say in Corpus Christi, Roddy. <laughs> hep. Gonna help uh, you. Fanny. 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 Okay, good Texas girl. <laughs> Make the bed. Right. Make the bed. Yeah, many times. Richard. Ricardo. If you spill a drink. You, you wet the bed. Oh. <laughs> it's just still a good sure. yeah. oh. You always drink in bed, Richard. Yeah, well, I, I have to. Well, warm milk and things like that. Well, whatever's fair, yeah. What the traffic will allow. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Charles. The, the princess and the bed. What? <laughs> no, that isn't even an what? answer. What? Uh, it's a play. That's the princess and, and the, the pee. And the pee. Whoops. Well... <laughs> I think the uh, about wetting the bed. Uh, well, Charles, uh, you, you really want to say that? James. That wasn't the accurate James title the of bed it. James the bed stinks. Was that the accurate title? I thought it was a one. The All Princess right. and the Bed. It's an adorable story. It's sure. coming out in, in soft you know, That wasn't that bed. made into Once Upon a Mattress, uh, I think. All right. <laughs> Those are the three. Princess and the Bed, Wet the Bed, and Make the Bed. Are the three at this time? You have the option of choosing one of those or giving us one of your own. I originally thought of make the bed. Mike, 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 yeah. Mike the bed. Okay, Mike the bed. They don't agree with you. We'll go over here and find out if it's up there, and if so, where. We'll begin at the bottom and reveal a one hundred dollar response. Get into the bed. Uh -huh. I'd like to chip in a couple of dollars. No, thank you. I'm sorry. no, no, I'm sorry. Huh. No. <laughs> Ever had one of those days when everything goes wrong? Everything is going wrong. Right? I wish You've I never had heard that phrase. That's why you didn't choose that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next one, please. <laughs> Wet the bed. Make oh. The bed's up there. You think, what's make, that? Make the beds up there. That's it is it. up there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Is it, it up there? Hey, boo, Jim. Make the bed. Do you believe it's up there? Yeah. You really believe it's up there? Y'all are very fickle out there. You booed me before. I won't That's stand right. for it. They booed, they booed you. Now, anyway, you've won the $500. They booed you. Now, that means the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. At this time, Becky, we're going to see how much more you win with our second audience match. Go. The Flying Blank. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brett. Uh, I would like to say that as she gets more excited, she gets more Texan. Have you noticed? Yes, that's right. But thank Sorry. heavens it hasn't affected my speech. <laughs> I say, what about the flying nun? Yeah. Yeah. Noon? <laughs> what kind of accent is that? Flying noon. <laughs> Nipsey. I meant N O O N. Uh, mm. Nipsey. I have two thoughts. Shall we try the flying Dutchman? The flying Dutchman. Mm -hmm. They're fleeing to Hollander. Uh, Richard. Oh, oh, flying tigers. The flying tigers. So those are the three, Dutchman, nun, and tigers. What do you say now? The nun, flying nun. You want the flying nun? Okay, they're with you. Yeah, Let's go over there and look for that flying nun. May we see the $100 number? The flying trapeze. That's the Floats daring young the man on the flying For the greatest trap. of ease. Yes, $250 if you please. Saucer? Kind of a goofy. Where are celebrities' answers? Oh, all the Star Wars and Third Encounters, and we still never thought of it. Well, this is really a surprise. I hope it's going to be up there for you. Brett Spencer, the flying nun. Okay, go. Now, Becky, 
You've won another $500 multiplied by 10. Another $5,000 added to the previous fives gives you a pot of $10,000 to shoot for. And you know what you have to do to collect? Yeah, Richard. I got, got to. Got to match got Richard. To. Now, this has to be an exact match. You understand that, okay? Good luck to you. It's worth $10,000 to this little lady. And this is what it says. Made in blank. Made in blank. All right, he's finished. Now, Becky, give us the answer that Richard has written on the card. If you do it, you get $10,000. It's got to be made in Japan. Yeah. Made in Japan. <laughs> Richard, she says made in Japan. I was thinking of pretty babies. Made, made in, in heaven. Is... Nope, Japan. <laughs> Japan. Y'all were grand. Thank you. Just grand. Uh -uh. Thank we we'll look you. forward to seeing Ethel Merman's book called Merman. And you had something, uh, a mission that you had to do here? What was yes, that? I can't go back to Corpus Christi unless I get four kisses from Richard. Who? My mother, my sister, myself, and a sales girl when I told her I was coming here. Hell, I deliver. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's enough. Stop that. You rascal. You do your job. <laughs> Join us next time for Match Game PM. We'll have another bunch of wonderful people like these and a ton of money to give away here. I'm Gene Rayburn. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. to match the stars, Nipsey Russell, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly. as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene Raver. Thank you for joining us. You turn a little too soon now. Get up. You turn around one more time. See? You don't turn until your name is heard. Now say his name again, John. <laughs> Nipsey Russell. Indeed. Okay, now we got the shot. Okay, everybody uh, all right? Everybody's okay. Well, I'm very oh, upset. Yeah, I know you're upset. We're all upset. Because Fanny's going to New York, you know, and she's going to be doing a play. It's called Patio Porch. It's right. going to be at the Century Theater, we think. It opens <laughs> on April 8th. April 8th. Well, that's very soon, wonderful. isn't it? Yes. It's that's two next days. two days yeah. from now. Today's the six. Two Good days. luck, old Thank Bean. You, Good luck. Hurry. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. She's walking you. Right. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> no, not yeah, yet. I'll, I'll tell you when. Runs as long oh, as the clock. <laughs> now, would you all greet Patty Courier and our new player, Ed Curling? Now, this lady has won a bundle of money. She has $11,150 to her credit, and she's very happy about that. She said she's going to buy a new car with right. that. I sure am. Give some to my church. Give some to your church. Yeah, and put some in savings for my little boys. That's a good idea. Yeah, now, so. we're meeting you, sir, for the first time, and we greet you and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would. Well, I'm from Akron, Ohio, originally. I've been out here eight years. Exactly. And... Uh, 
I must tell you this, my parents celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary last month. No and kidding. They're very good fans of you. They love you. They you love your show. How do they feel about old man Periwinkle? They like him, too. <laughs> Very much. They Good. Like all right. Well, we're delighted to have you with us, Ed. And say hello to your parents on all behalf right. of all of us here Thank on Match Game 78. We'll start this game in a moment or so right after we do this for you. Here we go. <laughs> Round one. Ed, you may have A or B. Okay, I'll take B. B it is. This is a new game. Lawrence Welk's wife said. It's really strange being married to Lawrence. Every night he brings his blank to bed. <laughs> right. Okay, put him right in the slot there, and away we go to Ed Curling here. Lawrence Welk's wife said, It's really strange being married to Lawrence. Every night, he brings his blank to bed. Wow, well, I've got two thoughts. Um, champagne bubbles. The bubbles, yes, okay. The bubbles. Yeah, he's got that gadget that makes yeah. the bubbles there. Yeah, but I thought yeah. of the fact that he's a band leader, and every night he brings his baton to bed. Right? He loved his baton, didn't he? Yes. Crazy about his baton. What do you say? Most people are. Yes. They grow less than enthusiastic about Ed's answer, right? Right. Don't worry, Ed. We're in this together. Bubble. Bubble. Okay. Well, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> oh, they should retire him. He's yeah, a mess. I know. It. He's pathetic that we have to deal with this each day. <laughs> Accordion. Accordion. Accordion is a nifty answer, because he does play the accordion, or did, I guess he still does, Ethel? Well, I was going to say he's a one and a two. Yeah, <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Ethel... <laughs> really? What his, bat I love her. his baton. <laughs> Have two of those so far and one bubble. Thank you, and I'm sure you'll agree that Ethel's are really coming along swell. <laughs> <laughs> All a bubble machine. A bubble machine. <laughs> hey. Fanny? Yes. Ed Curling wants to see your bubbles. I understand. <laughs> no, you know, I thought he brought his champagne lady to bed. Yes, champagne right. lady. Every night he brings his champagne lady to bed. That makes an interesting trio, doesn't it? One and a two. He's a one and a two, uh... <laughs> Harry said, that restaurant I just ate at is so awful, there are three shakers on the table. Salt, pepper, and blank. <laughs> Salt, pepper, and blank. That? The restaurant is a just awful restaurant. So awful, there are three shakers on the table. Salt, pepper, and blank. I don't begin to understand that question. It's a terrible restaurant. Yeah, go ahead, hon. An awful restaurant. Is it ethnic? No. Okay. Not necessarily, no. And it's so bad they have three uh, uh, shakers on the table. One has salt, the other one has pepper, the other has blank. Give her a little help, Chuck. I got it. Okay. You do? <laughs> Give it to you. <laughs> Harry said that restaurant I just ate at is so awful there are three shakers on the table. Salt, pepper, and blank. Bromo seltzer for like an upset tummy, Very you know. Very good. She got it instantly, because uh, Bromo Seltzer comes, I, uh, isn't that the stuff that comes yeah, in the I powder form? I thought you form? said the restaurant was so bad, and I thought of it like bad cooking, you know? Yeah. That's the way it is in my aunt's house. One day I was over there, I saw a cockroach eating a tongue. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's a salt shaker, a pepper shaker, and Raid. And Raid. Oh. <laughs> Well, no, this, uh... No, I've given this award for almost five years now. The pathetic answer... And I want to say that this is the most pathetic answer in the history of games. She didn't understand the question at didn't all. Didn't understand it. I Wait wish... till you see the answer. It is pathetic. I wish to stay in front that for the first time... In four and a half years, Charles is right on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Milk shaker. Milk. 
Okay, that is pathetic. I agree with you, I and I concur. I Maybe. hope you come up with a wonderful answer. No, but I hope it's a match. Bicarbonate of soda. Yeah. Bicarbonate of soda. Yeah. <laughs> I think chemically they're the same things, aren't they? So, yes, what do well, you say? One was filled with salt, one was filled with pepper, and one was empty. It was a throw up shaker. Oh! <laughs> Yes, of course it was well, bad. I, I didn't know it was that bad, though. I you won. got me there. I do. Yes. <laughs> Salt. Pepper. Pepper. And sawdust. Sawdust. Oh, oh of course, yeah. Oh, that's after my throw-up shake. Right, Mar sure. Yeah. Marcel Marceau joke for the day. Okay. Okay, Fanny, you're on. Well, now, I thought about this very carefully. If you yeah. put it in a shaker, it would have to come out of the little holes. Right. Correct? Right, right. All right. So now think about this. Powdered Tums. Powdered Tums. That's the same thing. They're all the same formula. So, there we are at the end of round one. We got a tie score, two to two, and now we've got this for you. Ricky to do. Yes. Now, here we go to round two. This is the final round, Ed. We've got a tie score here. You may have A or B again. I'll stay with B. B it is. Uh, Brett, you do not play. Richard, you do not play. The rest of you, please. Dumb Dora is so dumb! She thinks a taxidermist is a man who works for blank. Dumb Dora is so dumb, she thinks a taxidermist is a man who works for blank. Right. I will accept either. Yes. Excellent. Nervioso. I don't know. Taxidermist is a man who works for... She's so dumb, she thinks a taxidermist is a man who works for... No mumbling. All right, uh, Chuck, put it in the slot there, please. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Ed, dumb door is so dumb, she thinks a taxidermist is a man who works for blank. Cab company. Cab company. Okay. Cab company. Got what he says. Yeah, I knew it was something about that man I liked. Cab company. Cab company. All right, Ed, you got three. Charles? I said a cab driver from Yellow Cab. Okay. Now he's up to four. All right, Ethel, it's squarely up to you. I said taxi company. A taxi company. That gives him one more. Now, Ed. I'm proud of you. <laughs> what was the exact answer he gave? Cab company. A cab company. A cab well, company. Those were the three words you he see, said. In the theater, we try to do the exact words. Let's see. A, A cab company. company. <laughs> Very good. Well, you have met your match. However, you can, you can tie it. Now, the best you can do is tie. And that means you've got to match the four remaining celebrities you have not matched. Wilma is the world's weirdest cheerleader. <laughs> Thank you for your co kind cooperation. You knew her well, too, didn't you? Then? Here it is. Instead of twirling her baton, Wilma twirls her blanks. Do I play? Yes, you play. Charles does not play, and Fanny does not play. Yes. Well, that would be good if you were playing. <laughs> All right, here we go with Patty Courier. Wilma is the world's weirdest, weirdest cheerleader. Instead of twirling her baton, Wilma twirls her blank. Her boobs. Her boobs. <laughs> Now, I don't know if anybody over here has thought of that, Patty, but no, we'll find... We're thinking about women being in all sports now. You can imagine what it's going to mean when you say, I'd like to sack the quarterback, won't it? Yes. No. I thought of pom-poms, but I threw it out and I said boobs. Boobs. Okay, scores now six to three. Brett? Fanny just shouted out, sex is big. <laughs> <laughs>
I love her. She's the most perfect person in the whole world. I was thinking more of pom poms. So I said buns. Buns. Oh, so that means that Curly wins the game. What do we got there? Congratulations. Blue spot of your blue. Well, Patty, put her there, Pat. Thank you, thank you. God, this is the best show. You people are fantastic. I love y'all, really. Thank you very much. Very She's much. leaving here with eleven thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Goodbye, Patty. So you have dethroned the champion. You are now the champ. And uh, Ed, you could win a lot of money here, as she did. We'll begin right now by pointing out to you that not too long ago in this very room, we polled a bunch of people and we said, you write down your best answer to this. Blank wonderful, blank wonderful. Now if you match the answer they gave us most frequently, you get $500. For matching the second most popular answer, you get $250. And then if you team up with the third, you get $100. Three of our six celebrities are permitted to help. Okay, I'll try Richard. Show Mr. Sammy Davis starred in Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. That's one show. One answer. Uh, Brett. That wonderful song by Cole Porter. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. marvelous. Yes. I don't know. The, you know the rest of it, don't you? It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nipsey. Nipsey, have you got one? Yeah, I guess what every romantic person says, love is wonderful. Love is wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And Mr. Wonderful are the three that they have given you. At this time, you have the option of choosing one of those, Ed, or giving us one of your own. What would you like to do? Try Mr. Wonderful. Yeah! Mr. Wonderful? You think it's up there? All right, let's find out if Mr. Wonderful is up there. May we see the $100 number? It's Wonderful is Brett's ah! answer. Okay, we're looking for Mr. Wonderful. May we see the next one, please? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Your friends. By Johnny yeah. Mathis. Tim Gettle's really coming along so well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're looking for Mr. Wonderful. Slide it, Ori. Yeah! Oh, boy! Nice work, Ed. Now, you're going to play for ten times that amount, or $5,000. And you got to match once a Now, this is time. It has to be an exact match. Mm -hmm. Richard. Okay. There we go. You're in position. We wish you the very best of luck, Ed. And this is it. It's worth $5,000, and this is what it says. Be kind to blank. Be kind to blank. Okay, Ed, now you give us the answer that Richard has written on the card, and we'll give you the $5,000. It's that simple. Be kind to... It's got to be animals. Animals. Be kind to animals. That's a lovely thought. All right, let's find out what Richard has written. Be kind to animals is what he said, Richard. It's a lovely thought, and I share it with you. Yeah! <laughs> He's very happy for you, and so are we. Ed Curling will be back right after these messages. Today's consolation prizes are first. From Kenny Shoes, the great American shoe store, and up to the minute selection of fashion footwear, Kenny Shoes not only fit your feet, they fit your life. And Foster Grant sunglasses with polarized mirror and gradient lenses. Isn't that you behind those Foster Grants? And a warming tray. And a supply of Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's the Colonel's original recipe that has so many folks saying, I like my chicken finger licking good. And a wall clock. And a supply of Golden Grain Macaroni and Cheddar Dinners with enriched elbow macaroni and creamier cheddar cheese from Golden Grain. Moving right along now, here's Gene Raven. Thank you, Johnny Olson. That's all welcome, Kathy Rule. Hello, Kathy. Now, we welcome you. Thank you. And we want to find out a little bit about you, please. Well, I'm a semi-retired legal secretary, and I'm married. I have two children, a little girl three and a half, an old boy two. 
Okay, Kathy, welcome to you and Thank good you. luck to you. Here we go. You may begin by choosing A or B. I'll take B. B is what she wants and B is what she gets. The Washington, D.C. cab driver said, that's the Nerdo Crumbesian embassy over there. You can tell because it's the only embassy in town that looks like a blank. <laughs> You've heard our questions about Nerdo Crumbesia, the sleazy, dumb, <laughs> rotten country? Yep. Okay. Nerdo Crumbesia, it's a mythical country we made up. And this cab driver in Washington, D.C. said, that's the Nerdo Crumbesian embassy over there. You can tell because it's the only embassy in town that looks like a blank. Mm. Yeah. You see, the embassy probably would, well, I, right. You like that, huh? That's okay. You're going to have a better time later on. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Nerdo Crumbisha. Nerdo Crumbisha. Here we go. I remember first round ones are a little tougher, Kathy, but think carefully now. And I'm sure you're going to team up with somebody over there. The Washington, D.C. cab driver said, That's the Nerdo Crumbesian embassy over there. You can tell because it's the only embassy in town that looks like a blank. A rock pile? A rock pile. <laughs> that really would be a devastated area, wouldn't it? I don't know if we want to go that far. <laughs> Mind you, this is Nerdo Crumbesia, a terrible country. Right. This is the only embassy that looks like an outhouse. Yes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Our comfort station, yes. If you will, a ghetto. A ghetto would be good, yeah, all beat up there. I said a McDonald's. <laughs> a McDonald's. <laughs> okay. Now we come to you, Miss Merman. I know. It, it, it sort of looked like nothing. I said it looked like a bus stop. Looked like a bus stop. <laughs> that would be a dumb looking place, wouldn't it? Yeah. She's looking for a rock pile. <laughs> well, well, this is between stop. this and a rock pile. Toy day. A toy day, okay. <laughs> They're both hard to find, aren't they? <laughs> Hello, Fanny. Hi. I wrote the same thing that the man that sits above me, you know, the one that leans over, wrote McDonald's stand. A McDonald's stand. <laughs> the one who, yes, I understand the implication of your answer there. So, Kathy, that's how it goes. Now, you hang around here. We got one for you, too, but right now we got this for you. Yes. Don't get in the shot over there. <laughs> Listen, we don't have time to do another question, but I look forward to seeing both of you next time, okay? Right. Thank you. Look forward to seeing all of you yes. sometime. Yes. Now, watch for Ethel's book. It's called Merman. It'll be out soon. And on April 18th, she's going to be doing a concert. I've forgotten what town. It's in Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. Yes. Those of you there, all of you sailors in the Norfolk Naval Base can go see Ethel Merman there. And of course... You have an announcement? Yes. Another In the one? past five years, I have collected all the discarded cards from this panel, and I plan to publish a book. <laughs> <laughs> we want to wish you well. Thank Give you a little kiss. Thank you. Because she's off to Broadway now to Open do a play. On the 8th. On the 8th, two days from now, Patio Porch it is. And At we the all Theater. wish you very well. It's going to be dynamite. You're going to be wonderful. I'm Gene Raber. Next time we're together, these are the people you'll see. Tom Dreesen, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Deborah Lee Scott, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulevant. That's game 78 here. Yeah, goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 78. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.